go. <clears throat> Hopefully this looks good, sounds good, feels good. Looks good, sounds good, feels good. Maybe mute my own stream so that that doesn't echo. <laughs> <laughs> gonna see if this looks good on my own channel. Yeah, it's gonna, this is gonna be a lot of moving parts here. Yeah. <clears throat> but that's how it'd be. Is this on YouTube Live or on Twitch? Uh, both. Ooh, fancy. Yeah, um... Well, the funny thing, um, I don't know if I ever told you this, but the reason for that is because I'm actually going to see if I can pull this out separately uh, so I can look at this simultaneously. Hell yeah, there we go. So now we have the, uh, now we have the, uh, tw the YouTube chat here, we have the Twitch chat here, and we got the game looking over here so we can keep an eye on everything. Yeah. I, I am a good streamer, I swear. The power of a two-monitor setup. <laughs> well, the funny thing is, is that normally I should have a two-monitor setup, but this screen is purely for the Switch and, like, console gaming. Yeah. So that I can, like, keep an eye on things here. It doesn't really work as well with PC games. I kind of have to, like, oh, fidget okay. everything with, like, PC games on here. Which works for the most part, but I'll admit it is a little bit rudimentary. Yeah, I've never seen you. I've never been over here while you're PC streaming. Mm-hmm. That's how it be. So, how's it going, everybody? We got uh, Husky Boy um, is in here. CMJ Knight, Silver Claude, uh, you. Oh, yeah. What's up? I saw a was up, so I had to return <laughs> the was up. Uh, is, like, are are you and I thinking the same thing with that, with the Annoying Orange? No, I'm just thinking there was, like... Oh, no, that, 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 the Annoying Orange spoofed something else for that. Yeah, I think it was originally a commercial in I the think 90s. So. Yeah, 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 that's right. Uh, frick, it was, like, a Super Bowl beer commercial, I think. Yeah. Someone in the, someone Get in the comments, here! um, confirmed that for me. Uh... Matt Daddy SNES, thank you for the subscription. Two months, man. Who I always think of the office with the was up. Ah, okay. Uh, what else we got? We got Crimson Flame in here. We got Clockwork Pretzels, Cleffa Lover, Action Production. How's it going, guys? We got Danny665008. Uh, who do we got on YouTube here? We got uh, uh, Queen Day and Night. We got Scars McLovin. Good to see you, man. Uh, Mary. Uh, Tickler, tic, uh, tich, tichel, tichelar? Tichelar? Sorry. Uh, Patrick, uh, Patrick Keneally. Uh, we got Colby! How's it going, man? Good to see you. Um, fifth guy, Marshmallow, Adam Zilk, I think. Uh, Wonder Soul, Lee Aspinall. Nice to see you all. Thank you for coming in. I think I'm gonna set up my laptop, <laughs> actually. Just. Yeah, no, take your time. It'll be easier for me to read. Yeah, it, it's a it's a lot to keep track of. I, I knew this would take a second for me to decide what I want to do. Uh huh. So yeah, everybody, how's it going? We are here celebrating. Just just to clarify, by the way, it's not my birthday yet, but this is the best day for me to stream a birthday stream. It's go like my birthday's actually on the twenty seventh. I'm gonna be turning thirty three this year. Good lord. It's not my birthday. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, uh, yes, Thiff Guy. We are streaming both on Twitch and on YouTube. So, um, whoever, whichever you guys prefer, uh, in regards to the avenue of streaming, um, you are free to, uh, go with it, go with it however you wish. Hopefully, um... I don't uh, deal with too much scuff today, cause um, for as much as I enjoy, th as much as I would like to consider myself a good streamer, scuff happens a lot. What kind of scuff? Um, have you ever heard that term? No. Um, so when a stream is starts malfunctioning for whatever reason, be it like internet connection or software issues or something like that, it's considered scuff. Okay. It's like, oh man, something's going, something's wrong. Something's going wrong with the stream. Like scuff is happening. Okay. Um, admittedly, I actually got that. I, I, I that term got popularized for me personally with Amelie for anyone who, uh, who watches her streams. 
Would you mind putting in your uh, your password? For oh you? yeah, sure. Uh, Scorpion Lair. There we go. <laughs> Would you mind uh, saying what your network key is live on stream? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you you don't have them lock on. Okay, so give me a second. There you go. All right, that should work. I'm in. <laughs> The hack has been completed. Josh, how's it going, man? Good to see you, Doug. Oh, hey, Josh. Uh, thank you, oh. thank you for all the birthday wishes, guys. Thank you so much. Uh, Zabes, hey, Comic Foil and Green Scorpion, happy birthday. Uh, since you guys finished Bug Fables and finished Sacred Stones, what will your next Let's Plays be for both channels? Uh, hold on to that. We are going to be, uh, I'm go we're going to be discussing that during the credits of um, Sacred Stones. So. Um, and yeah, we actually did finish, uh, Sacred Stones, kinda, sorta. It's a, it's an interesting, uh, situation there. Yeah, we have a solid plan for my channel. Um, mm -hmm. it's more of a loose plan right now for Oscars. I am looking forward to it, though, because yeah. I do want to give that game a, like, a, a good run-through. Um, Danny, thank you for the subscription. Oh, shoot, uh, Matt Daddy just gave us five gift subs. Thank you so much, man. So, um, Get over here! Yeah, that's going to happen. Yeah, the funny thing, by the way, uh, whenever people do gift subs, um, I have this, I have it set up so that it does get over here for every subscription. We had a situation this one time get where someone, here. someone gifted 50 gift subs. Okay. Which is a lot, by the way. That is a lot. And we had to sit through 50 <laughs> get over <laughs> here during the stream. <laughs> Scorpion spamming. <laughs> Pretty much. Get over here! Uh, thank you so much, Josh. Uh, thank you for coming in. Yeah, always good to see you, my dude. Um... Get over here! So, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and get started in a couple minutes. This is just going to be a basic, um, playthrough of, uh, well, not basic, per se. Uh, we're basically gonna be, uh, playing through Kirby 64, The Crystal Shards. We're going to attempt 100% it today. Um, the game's not a long game. And John and I both have played this game a lot. Come Gino! Five bucks! Hi, Gino. Happy birthday, Oscar. Expect a lot of these from me today. Scuff is the least of your worries. Oh, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> you benevolent bastard. Uh, thank you for coming in, Gino. Always happy to have you, man. <laughs> Um, but yeah, um, John and I are gonna basically play through this game, and we have a little something special going on today. You guys might see a sort of, a little bit of an inebriated me, because Amber has, uh, Kirby-themed mixed drinks today. Yeah, I'm excited for that. So we're gonna be doing that today. And, uh, yeah, we're, we're not, we're not gonna do anything, like, super, like, crazy or specific or anything. We are basically just gonna play through the game, have fun, hopefully we can get through the entire game today. I would like to. This is what we get up to on a on a Saturday is some crazy <laughs> Kirby 64 action. Hell yeah, brother! Hell <laughs> yeah! Yeah, I'm actually gonna let this uh, intro play through so that people can understand what we are dealing with here. Yeah, the the, the very complex plot of Kirby 64: <laughs> The Crystal Shards. Speaking of which, guys, um, oh, Magus, just gonna say right now, we're not getting all the cards. No. We're not going to get all the cards. We'll get all the shards and we'll we're gonna the get the final we're, boss. Yeah, we're ju we're going for true ending completion, not pure 100% completion. Screw getting all the cards, As man. As a kid, I did get all the cards once. I actually did, too. Um, I, I actually did 100% fully Kirby 64 uh, in the past. Um, but n not for a stream, brother. Not for a stream by any stretch. Um, will we play the minigames? Probably not. Um, but maybe we'll show them off, like, a little bit. We'll see. Um, yes, we do have water on standby, as a matter of fact. Let me pull this over here. Because Kirby does not have the water ability in this game, so we have to bring our own. Yep. Mixed drinks like mixed Kirby powers. I'm realizing how fitting that is. How about that? Some shock on the rocks. I'm... Yep. And this is why I brought this he, man here. You invited me. <laughs> Oh dear. Oh dear. So, uh, let's go ahead and get started. Yeah, disclaimer, 
Love this game. I absolutely adore this game a lot. Um, speaking of which, guys, um, let us know if uh, things sound, look okay. Like, if the sound balancing is fine. Like, the, do you want the game to be louder? Do you want the... Uh, uh, do you want, uh, like, the mic to be louder or anything yeah. like that? Uh, please, uh, let us know. We got a hype train going already. We haven't even started the game! Cur Kirby hype train, man. Hot damn! Kirby brings in views. He sucks them up. Uh, do you know how to use Kirby's copy ability? Yep. We are good there. Get over here! Alright, thank you. And Quarter Guy, uh, thank you for the 39 months, brother. Hey, Quarter Guy. Thank you so much, dude. Thank you. So this is, um, horribly underutilized Kirby character, Ribbon. Dude, Rip, like, I wish they used the characters in this game more. It's pretty much the only time we see her, except then she's a uh, guest star in Star Kirby Allies. Star Allies. Yep, just gonna move the mic a bit here. And Kirby's like, hey, you got trouble? Let me help. I've done, like, this is old hat to me. I got this. Little do you know the horrors that are going to... Uh, that you are going to face today, Kirby. So we got, uh, I think six worlds, and each world is separated into, um, into, like, three to five stages. Yep. Um, and each stage, besides beating them, there's also collectible crystal shards you can get as a little bonus. Speaking of which, um, like, this is, like, probably the most, like, meme-worthy song, or one of the most meme-worthy songs in Kirby, isn't it? Yeah. Like, Anyone who's played Kirby knows what this is. Um, if you look up this song, um, Kirby 64 with all TF2 characters. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I've seen that. It, it's this one. Da -dum -da -dum -dum cough. Da -da -dum 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 cough. Yep. Um, thankfully, to make this easier and to and to assure that we'll be able to get all the shards um, in a single like playthrough, um, John has a guide to help get us uh, get through all of it. Yeah, so I'm ho I'm hoping we won't have to redo any stages just to keep things moving. And hey, look, first crystal shard already. I'm good at this game. Uh, Gloveboy96, thank you for the sub. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, John, I'm going to have to ask you to, like, um, just... If you see anything interesting in the uh, in the chats, like, one uh, way I'll, or the I'll, other... I'll try and keep one eye yeah, on it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, by, I'll do a... Uh, by all means, go for it. Um, how often are you guys going to uh, change powers? Um, as often as, like... We feel like it, honestly. There's yeah. no real rule here. So the toughest thing for 100% in this game is that sometimes you'll come across a barrier that a crystal shard is behind, um, and it is behind a colored barrier, meaning you need that power or that power combination to break the barrier and get the shard. Yep. So that's probably what adds the most runtime to a 100% is finding you don't have the power you need. By the way, grab that bomb, actually, because... Oh. You will want bomb in a, in a few moments. Uh, good to know. Do I need anything else with bomb? Nope, you will just need bomb. Okay. See, th this is... Oh, yep. Okay, I see. Case in point. Ha ha ha. Heck yeah. So, funny thing, actually. Um, The first time I uh, went through this game, right? I actually got that one on purpose because, um, if I recall correctly, you can also uh, grab that with fireworks. Yeah, I, and I, I, and I used uh, fire ability, and bomb at the time. Yeah, any bomb ability will work on a bomb square. Waddle Dee's like, hey, this looks pretty cool. Uh, what the heck? What the heck are you? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Waddle Dee, you fine? I'm not Waddle Dee. I'm Waddle Doo. <laughs> Honestly, terrified me when I was little. And I wasn't even that little. This game came out in uh, 2000, so I was 10 years old. Oh, geez, that actually hurt me. So this, like, adds a little bit of interesting question to the Kirby lore. Are Waddle Doos just corrupted Waddle Dees? That's what I want to know. Because it's like, you know, we're not, we're not strangers to Waddle Doo, and... Um, if you recall, like, if you've ever watched, um, the Kirby, six, the Kirby anime, Waddle Doo was, like, kind of, like, the general of yeah. the Waddle Dee army, which was, which I always found interesting. I'm not gonna go, for, like I said, I'm not, we're not gonna go for all the cards, but I'll at least try Yeah, I, I like to grab them when I can. Um, so this was actually the, um, 
this kind of is the third in an unofficial Kirby trilogy. Yeah. Um. Oh yeah, because like, I, if I recall correctly, this kind of follows like Kirby's Dreamland or something. Uh, so Shuichi Shimamura, I think is the name of it. Ooh. Oh my God, Scars McLovin! Happy birthday, Oscar. Glad to see you all are doing well, and I'm happy to be able to show my support in such a way. Keep looking forward and keep doing what you do. Can't wait to see what's in store for the future. Thank you so much, dude. That's that so was a nice. $250 donation. Guys, we just got started. People are so nice. Aww. Well, this is already proving to be a wonderful birthday. Thank you so much, guys. Um, Cleffa Lover, you are absolutely right. The music in this stage is amazing. It is like, it is like too beautiful mm -hmm. for what it is. By the way, this is arguably one of my favorite combinations in the entire uh, in the entire game. Yeah. Bomb, like explosive shuriken is fantastic. So there are, there are seven copy abilities in this game, which is less than most Kirby games, but the fact that you can combine them into 28 different combo abilities. Do I need a specific um, ability in this level, by the way? Uh, let me look. Because, like, this is the one place you get, like, No, you spark. should not. You should not need any particular thing this level. All right, good to know. Yeah, thank you so much, guys. Seriously. Uh, when you get to the bridge is when the next crystal shard will be. Right, okay. I remember having such trouble with that one because, um... Like, it took me forever to realize that it was underneath the bridge. Uh, but yeah, so Kirby's Dream Land 2, Kirby's Dream Land 3, and then this were the three games directed by Shuichi Shimamura. Right. So there's sort of certain themes that are connected in these three. Some people call them the Dark Matter trilogy. Because That's right. And both this and Dream Land 3, there's a lot of repeat characters, and you might want to get up where Waddle Dee is, actually. No, I think it's under there. Or is it... Yeah, is it down low? Oh, okay. Okay, I'm good. Very nice. Woo! <laughs> uh, I'm predictable. My favorite is Fire Sword. Why am I not surprised, Josh? <laughs> Twitchy Blizzard says, Ice and Spark make the fridge. Why you no fridge? Uh, speaking of which, um, shout out to Wombu because uh, he... Uh, has like one of my favorite like countdowns. That, one of my favorite countdowns that he's ever done is the combination of is the poke is the uh, Kirby combinations uh, in this game. Very good taste too mm -hmm. in, in combo abilities. Uh, that's all three of them, right? Oh no, wait, no, I think no, I'm missing one. There's a boss at the end. Of that's this. right. That's yeah. right. Um, this character. Yeah. So this character actually appeared also in Dreamland 3. And mm -hmm. it's another character who appeared in Dreamland 3, this, and then not again until Star Allies. Yep. Uh, Adeline is her name, though. That's right. Or Adeline. Um, I think it's... A I pronounce it Adeline, personally. Yeah. Um, uh, McGonjigal asks, uh, top three cozy games? Oh, hi, Ellie. Um, oh. Oh, I, I, I forgot that, like, she calls herself that. By the way, this this theme, by the way. This is a really good one. I never understood what this was. Uh in the comments, what do you think what do you guys think that is? Uh, up to your imagination. <laughs> how laboratories had to, um, ha had to blur it out. Also, the ice dragon here is a boss from Dreamland 3. I remember that. I, th like, honestly, like, I think all of her paintings are, like, spoofs of, like, previous bosses and yep. enemies. Uh, this... Like, this is just straight up dark matter! Yeah, this is a boss from Dreamland 2. The final boss of Dreamland 2. Like, Adeline just casually paints up, like, the... By the way, this is funny. Boom. <laughs> you can just run into her. Ugh, <laughs> uh, what happened? I love this high five. Oh my gosh, they're so cute. Like, they put a lot of personality into, into like, these animations with no words whatsoever. And it's like, you get it. Like, you understand what they're doing. 
Uh, to address uh, Mayanjigal's question, though, do you have a top three? I know Cozy is in your... See, the funny thing is, like, my definition of a cozy game might be very, very different to, like, some people. Um, if we're talking cozy games, one of them would be Mario Golf Total Tour. Okay. Um, that's one that I a always love relaxing cozy. to. Yeah. Um, the other one, and this, this might not, ag this might not agree with some people, Celeste. Like, Celeste is a cozy game for me because I just love going through it, despite how difficult it is. In fact, part of the reason I love it, and it's cozy for me is because of the difficulty. Like, it's kind of like one of those things like, oh, this requires my attention. This requires my focus, so my brain gets turned off from everything else. Okay, I remember specifically in this level, there is a copyability requirement. Uh, Cutter is the point. Gino, oh, again. Got to keep up when I can. When DDD introduced Kirby to our favorite masked swordsman, he asked Kirby, have you ever met a knight? <laughs> Very good. Okay, so I need Cutter and what else? Um, just Cutter, but you probably don't want to combine it with Bomb because that's going to make it hard to hit this particular. Yeah. Uh, you could do Double Cutter. Um, just to be safe, I'm probably going to do Double Cutter, yeah. I love... It's so weird to me. So this is ostensibly the same ability that Kirby has in other games with, like, the hat and the boomerang blade. But in yeah. this, instead, he, like, He throws his, like, face. He, like, throws off a part of himself, and then he leaves, like, just a little bit. Like, he's made out of gum. Yeah, I, I never understood that one. I know a guy whose cozy game is Darkest Dungeon. I can believe it. I can totally believe it. Um, as for, like, a third cozy game? I mean, I know you spent... I, I know you went into an Animal Crossing phase for a little bit. Oh, like, the thing is, like, I go into an Animal Crossing phase anytime there is, like, a new Animal Crossing. So I probably... I probably say Animal Crossing. Like, that's just a fun... That, that's just a fun, like, easy and, like, simple game to just, like, turn your brain off with. Or turn your brain on a little bit. Because, like, you know, you got projects to do. You want to, like, uh, do things... Like, especially in the later games... Uh, Cutter should be able to get those, yeah. Oh, okay, I see. That's not where it's hidden, but it's gonna be the same. Yeah, I, 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 rem I remember, I remember where, um, where it's supposed to be. <laughs> Kirby channeling Majin Buu, yeah, kinda. Uh, according to Death Battle, Kirby would destroy Majin Buu. Oh, Kirby would destroy most characters from the DBZ universe, if you ask me. Like, hey, Kirby, uh, Kirby uh, manages to inhale uh, Goku's like Kamehameha. Suddenly, he becomes a Super Saiyan. Yeah, my, my only, like, issue with that, because I agree Kirby is, like, one of the most powerful things in any video game. Uh-huh. But also, in most games, Kirby has a very low amount of health. That's true. He's a glass cannon, for all intents and purposes. So, I don't... Like, we've seen Kirby survive ridiculous things, but I don't know how you justify the, like, health... The, like, six hits and you're done. Yeah, Get that's true. Here! Uh, K-Dog. Uh, no, not K-Dog. Buzzsaw. Buzzsaw just gave us five gift subs. You guys are so nice today. What the heck? And there's the last Crystal Shard. Uh, yeah, there'll be one more when you Get fight over the boss. Right, right. Not every level has a boss, but at the beginning of this game, there's kind of a, like, getting the band together sort of. Yeah, yeah, motif. yeah. So, like, things are pretty simple for this first bit. Get over here! Um, originally, this game, there was a uh, prototype for this Get game that had here. actual gritty movement, um, and then it kind of turned into a 2.5D game. What's yeah. interesting was this was one of the few N64 games to actually use the D-pad instead of the controller stick. Oh yeah, that's right. Get over and here. the reason for this is when they were playtesting the game, they wanted to playtest it with like elementary school kids, because how wanted it to be a game... That's easy enough for anybody to get into. Yeah. That, that's always kind of been the vibe for Kirby, that, like, even little kids can beat this game. Mm -hmm. um, which, 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 again, like, that's that's a general Kirby philosophy, is, like, oh, hey, this game's, like, did I? I, I went past it. <laughs> My bad. You, you're exploring, though. Look What's at, there to explore? It's a circle! Look at these beautiful stained glass windows DDD has. Um, yeah, speaking of which, by the way, like, so, um, you obviously can tell that it's polygonated. Right? Yeah. How do all these squares make a circle? <laughs> I just... No, no, it's fine. It's fine. It doesn't bother me. It doesn't bother me. It bothers me. It bothers me a lot. And that boomerang's still green! 
This was the first That's game I ever right? played that. Yeah. Wait, what was? The boomerang. The the symbol for it is green. Yeah. Okay, good. I don't trust myself with colors, man. Oscar's colorblind. I love this depiction of DDD, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Like, he's just a little guy. Like, the thing is, is, like, um, DDD is kind of, like, all over the place as a character. But the one thing that I know for a fact is, like, consistent with him is that at the end of the day, he's just a bully. Like, he's not, like, yeah. malicious or anything. He's just a bully. Swipe. S swipe. Ow! Swipe. And this is, like, a super fast-paced version of his theme. <laughs> just... <laughs> just holding it. Ow! I summon the flame swordsman! <laughs> In defense position! Oh, man. Oh, man. Uh, what? I love Waddle D supporting. Uh, peace? Okay, bye. Uh, fine! <laughs> Wait up! <laughs> Um, not, not quite, Josh. I can see green, but it, like, here, like, it, it's less that I can't see certain, like, I can't see a lot, like, the main ones are, like, the dark blues and purples. It's Those like are the, the ones that I can't see well. For you, yeah. I just don't trust myself with colors because I get it, I fuck it up so much. Like, ugh. classic example, I didn't know Lynn's hair was green for a while. That's insane to me. Mm. Excuse me for, like, looking at dark green in the, on the GBA and thinking it was brown. I mean, like, just because just cause she's one of your faves. I'm sorry! It's very funny to me. I like, okay, hair color does not contribute to whether she's my favorite or not. Though now that I know it's green with a ponytail, it helps. Let's fight a boss. And color is in the eye of the beholder, I guess. Okay, fun fact. I'm going to, I'm going to beat this boss. By only pressing the B button once. <laughs> and you don't need any, like, weird spider physics. Look, not not touching the B button at all, right? Only one B button press. Two B button press. Failure. <laughs> uh, this challenge run is ruined. I always liked how Wispy Woods was animated in this in this game. Yeah. Like, the, the the animation on his roots is very clean. This is one of the more, like, angry depictions of him, I feel like, too. He, he is pissed. Also, uh... Also, like, a uh, bit of a take here. One of the best Kirby boss themes? Yeah. Yeah, this is a pretty good one. I love this boss theme. I, I think the art style in this game has really stood the test of time. I agree. You got I like, agree. like, simple polygons works great for Kirby, but also just the backgrounds. They they went they went all in with the uh, like with the detailing on this game. Honestly, I guess it also helps that it is a two D platformer. So they're like, oh hey, like we have all these three dimensional assets on, like to us, but we only have to worry about two dimensions when it comes to the character itself. Yeah. Let's go nuts with the graphics. Again, it's, uh, as crazy as you can get with N64 graphics. Yeah, like, the backgrounds are just going to be, like, a, a skybox. It's going to be a 2D figure. Yes, Josh knows exactly what I'm talking about. The whistling, the flute in that theme. Yeah. Mwah! Love it. All right, so, Rockstar, here we go. Hey, now, you're a rock star. Oh, is the Womboy here? Ah! Womboy! Wombus. How's it going, Wombu? Thank you for coming in. Okay, so I know um, this is where things start getting interesting with the uh, with the power requirements. So, so towards the end of the stage, you're going to need uh, stone and shock together. Stone and sh oh, um, electro ball. Yeah. Okay, is there is there a shock, or is there a spark in this level? Oh right, it's called spark, not shock. Um, I mean, I I know what you mean. Yeah. Uh, that's a good question, actually. Well, there's stone. Yeah, like, if there's no spark in this level, I know where we can get spark. Yeah, if you want to just be safe, we can leave the level now and grab it somewhere. 
Yeah, like, ultimate, it, ultimately, it'll just save us time. Uh, a really great quality of life thing is you can leave a stage at any time and you'll hold on to whatever your copy ability is. Yep. So at the end of this screen is uh, is a spark enemy, so we should be able to go from there. <laughs> Keyblade Knight says we are now on planet GTA. Good one. <laughs> I like that. Uh, can you share the rocks, the the walk cycle for Stone Kirby? Oh yeah, sure. Uh, like he turns into a statue in this game, boom, boom, boom. and you're you're just completely invulnerable in this state. Speaking of which, boom, 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 boom. Look how fast he goes, actually. You you know what this kind of reminds me of? Uh, you watch you all used to watch Monsters Incorporated, right? Yeah. See that, Mikey? Ted's walking to work. Big deal. Guy takes like five <laughs> steps and he's there. <laughs> Fifth guy with... Oh my god, you guys! 100. You are too kind. Guys, thank you so much. Jeez Louise. <laughs> Kirby just became Dwayne Johnson. That he did. Well, here we go. This is what I needed here. I gotta be careful with those things because, like, um, their their sh their shocks can actually um destroy can, projectiles. Yeah, they can so. block the copy ability when you throw it at them. Yeah, it's weird. You like turn your ability into like a weird little crystal. Ow. Okay, now you need to hold on to this ability for a while because it's not gonna be right away that you use it. Yeah. Uh, but luckily, it is one of the most stupidly destructive abilities in the game. Yeah, th like, this this ability is actually kind of busted. <laughs> then again, a lot of abilities in this game are busted. Do, do, like, so someone mentioned it earlier. Do we want to talk about Fridge? Yeah, Fridge, where you can just kind of heal yourself indefinitely while doing damage to people. Uh, drill is really good. Mm -hmm. of, of all the things in this game to be, like, so unbelievably destructive, one of the most, one of the most destructive and, like, optimal things in this game is a goddamn kitchen appliance. One of my favorites, just because it's not busted, is uh, the ice skating ability. Because I would the like... The what? Um, uh, cutter and ice. Oh, yeah, ice skating. skating. Because I like to try and go through stages without turning off I actually, ice I actually do the same thing. I love that ability so much. Okay, okay I know there's a crystal shard okay. up here somewhere. Uh, there it is. Yep. Um, Have I ever heard of a show called Code Monkeys? Uh, can't say I have, no. Code monkeys. I remember a lot of monkey themed shows, but not that one. Yep. Um, the one that immediately comes to mind for me is uh, Super Robot Monkey Team Hyper, Hyper Force, Force Go. Go. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, this will have a crystal shard after you beat the boss. Boss is kind of a strong word for what that is. I mean, I, you could say the same about a lot of the games, in uh, or a lot of the bosses in this game. Oh, this screen, oh, this screen, okay, um. <laughs> Womboy says, still ranked it under Curling Stone, though. I think referring to the ice skates or to um, the... No, Curling Stone is ice and rock. No, no, I mean, which ability they ranked under that. Ah. Um, that's, that's just a dumb opinion, Womboy. I, I love you for having that As opinion. Is Kirby shredding a guitar? Because I didn't know he was into electric rock. Uh, there. Didn't you make that? Didn't you make a similar joke earlier? I, I said we're we're on Rockstar, so you know. Well, no, about the uh, electric uh, ball ability. Maybe. <laughs> oh no! What are we gonna do? Huh? Wait! Oh wait, it's stopping. Hey, up here! <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> I like to think. I don't know if this is confirmed anywhere. Yeah. Uh, right there, by the way. Thank you. Um. I like to think that the Waddle D that is your companion in this game is Bandana D before the Bandana. Honestly, I would like I, w I would like that for, I would like for that to be the case, yeah. Because it, it makes sense with little things like how um like how when you defeat DDD, Waddle D's like helping him up and stuff like that, and he. I know all the Waddle D's are DDD's minions, but like DDD seems to have a soft spot for him. Ow. I bet you anything, if they ever made a full remake of this game, they would give them the bandana. Oh, yeah, absolutely.
Okay, th this level's actually- this level I remember fondly. Oh no, not this one. Um, I'm thinking of- I'm thinking the one with, um, the giant temple, but... Yeah, speaking of vibey music, you want to talk about this theme? Yeah. Um, so there is a crystal shard in this, like, pillar area. Yeah. Um, it's a little bit later in it, but it's like, you get to a point that's sort of a makeshift maze. I think I know what you're talking about. Uh, quick question, do I need a copy ability in here? No. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and, like, free roam a bit here. So weird that that one's stone and not cutter, but I guess it's a stone axe. Yeah, speaking of which, like, you would think that would be a cool way to go about a, co a combination, uh, is, like, like, cause I know stone and cutter is, like, animal statues. Yeah. Um, but, like, stone axe actually sounds cool. It'd be, like, Cleavor. Um, that actually, that actually is a good question. So, um, ah, crap. Uh, here's a question for you. If they ever made a uh, Kirby game with this same mechanic of combining abilities, what kind of ability combinations would you like to see? Oh, boy. Like, um, again, if they made, like, stone and cutter, like, imagine a stone axe Kirby. Yeah. The, the one ability I feel is most missing from this repertoire, just because I think it's a very classic ability, is, um... <laughs> That's a funny one. Kirby just sets his head on fire. Um, is Parasol. Ooh, yeah. I'd love to see Parasol, or I'd love to see, um, either Tornado or Wing put um, into a game like this. Did you say the Crystal Shard is around here? No, keep going. Oh, okay. Uh, blue not, not exactly your best form of attack there, Kirby, but you do you. Oh, this one, that's right. Blue Sharky says, I want mecha combos. That would be cool. Ooh, that would be cool. Oh, Water and Thunder is a good idea, Silver Clod. Uh, what would Water and Thunder do? Um, maybe something with, like, with, like, a thunderstorm. Maybe you could turn into, like, a thunder cloud and, like, Ooh. shoot out lightning. Kind of like Krako or something. Yeah, maybe it would be, like, a Krako themed ability. That would be cool. You'd, like, mimic him for a second. Ow. Oh, that's right. I remember you just gotta stand there. Got it. That, that's a tough one to find. Uh, the next one is in the dark room. Yeah. I like this song too, though. Now this one, this one's a bit of a, a bit more of a vibe. Yeah. Um, Prince Dobler, thank you for the bits, man. Uh, the en the enemies that are like parasols, you can hold them with L, and they act like parasols. Oh yeah, that's right. I kn I I remember you can do that. That's true. Uh, crystal shard right down there. Yep. Is there anything up there that I need? I don't think There's so. There's probably food or something. Yeah. Yeah. I I'm missing a health. I might as well grab that tomato. Um, and then there's going to be um, a DDD section that has the last one. Uh, so someone explain to me how this works. <laughs> well, into the fire it goes. Hey, if we're underwater, how can there be a... I don't remember that bit. Uh, Which when they're, that? when they stole the balloon. Oh, right. How could there be a I'm scared, Spongebob. Oh, Jesus Christ. I don't remember Patrick saying that. <laughs> I, I don't think they get away with that on Nickelodeon. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, Spongebob. Patrick, no, you're committing heresy. That face. Yeah, I'm glad this doesn't cause damage to Kirby. I'd say this is one Oh, of how dumb would that be? There, There is an ability that can damage Kirby in this game. Uh, dynamite. Which is the dynamite. That is cool that you can actually kind of shield yourself from harm. Yeah. Um, using this ability. Yeah, it's got like a hitbox around it that can take the hit for you. I'm gonna ditch it now, though. Yeah, y you can't really easily um, you can't really easily make a combination with those with those like uh shield enemies because they block your any projectiles. So somewhere in this maze, there's one more shard. Right. Uh, so this is there's a few of these sections, uh, DDD sections. Apparently, they originally wanted to make 
Um, Full-on DD levels? Yeah. Huh. Uh, how it would have worked is there would have been three, maybe even four playable characters, and Ribbon would have acted as, like, the thing you hit to change characters. Ah! Um, not much is known if Adeline would have been playable, but there was an idea for Waddle D that would uh, be based around picking up and throwing things, a la Super Mario Brothers 2. Okay. There it is. Okay, I know where it is. I have to go down here. Uh, Prince Dobler, thank you for the 100 bits. I think that's what that means. I'm a little... Uh, yeah, 100 bits. Yeah. Yeah, bit, bits work a little bit differently, but the principle's the same. And you're right, Prince Dobler. Uh, with the rock bomb, the dynamite, you can protect yourself by holding down. Kirby will spawn a little construction helmet. Yep, a hard hat. We'll need that for one of the shards later. Oh, yeah, on. this jump is tricky. Yeah, he doesn't have his, like, DDD puff jump. All because Kirby's, like, on his back. <laughs> Get on the penguin's back. How much do you think Kirby weighs? I think there's a canon answer to this, but... I think there's a canon answer to this, but considering that he's, like, only eight inches tall, apparently, he can't weigh that much. The dude's basically a balloon. I think, canonically, he weighs less than Jigglypuff. Yeah. But that's just because Jigglypuff is, well, Jigglypuff. I love this, by the way. Oh, no, not oh, here. doesn't do it in this stage. Uh, yeah, that, that'll be later. Yep. <laughs> Get up on the penguin's back, says Crimson Flare. Yep. Flame. All right, so far, so good. Dude, we're blazing through this. Goodness gracious. Just gonna adjust a little bit here. Gonna take a little bit of a sip. <clears throat> um, we will need stone at some point in this level. Is there a stone ability in there? Uh, probably. Do we want to not chance it? <laughs> yeah, if you want to grab it at the very beginning of level one here. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. This is why I have this man here. <laughs> well, I have this man here for many reasons. One, I had to pet the dog. Kishki was very excited to see me. Very excited or very nervous? Or both? Um, maybe a little bit of both, but me and Kishki get along pretty well. There we go. I, I had to constantly, like, fight my urge to use the D-pad. Or not to use the D-pad, to use the uh, joystick. Okay, I'm gonna ditch my laptop here, because I don't have the battery for it, and I don't feel like plugging it in. Uh, yeah, that's Get fine. over here! Uh, Thiff Guy, thank you for the two months, man. Uh, just stone, right? Yep. When you get to um, a skeleton, there should be a part in the spine that you can break through. Oh, I remember this now. They're in the in the Cave of Wonders. Cool! Awesome! Dude, we're gonna have this game beat in like two hours. Actually, <laughs> though, like, we're, we're like blazing through this. I... I was honestly expecting this to go a lot, a lot, like, slower. Yeah. <laughs> the levels do get longer. Uh-huh. Like, we're, we're not gonna, like, just sit here and play through the entire thing, like, just, like, like, crazy. Like, we gotta eat. And, of course, we're gonna have drinks later. Kirby drinks. Oh, yeah, that's right. Okay. I think one of these leads to a crystal shard. Unless I'm wrong. Uh, probably. I think one of them gets us into, like, the background. No, no, no. Okay, there... Yeah, that's... Shoot! Which one? I'm gonna say the one currently on your left. I think so, too. Um... Someone is, like... Okay, chat, I'm going to need your help here. Uh, who remembers which hole I need to go into here? Has... I mean, it's not that big a deal. We can always retry the level, but... This has Dora the Explorer vibes. <laughs> gonna need your help. <laughs> Which passage leads to the crystal shard? Qual oyo se va al... Hmm. Shard. I guess you can just call it la cristal. Cristal. I forgot you can save state. That's true. <laughs> uh, hole number one. Which one is hole number <laughs> one, Jeppo? One. <laughs> 
Okay, lots of a lot of people saying it's the you know what? I'm gonna take y'all's advice here for a moment. Uh, create suspend point. I forgot you could do this. Okay, apparently, according to um, periodic sixteen or sorry, uh, Petrotic sixteen, uh, Code Monkeys is an animated oh yeah, adult I, show I re yeah I remember seeing that about eight bit programmers making games. I should warn you now, this show was made in the 2000s. Ah, oh, okay, wrong. And that's why we did this! <laughs> Man, things were different back then. No, no fooling! <laughs> Might as well. Here you get one of the most creative abilities. Get over here! Oh, absolutely. Half Crooked Grin. Uh, thank you for the birthday. And 35 months, dude. Thank you so much. Hi, Tanuki player. That's Robin. She's my bud. Happy to see her in the, in the YouTube chat. Hi, Tanuki. Also, the first time I use this ability and I get the useless one! <laughs> Yeah, so um, Stone and Cutter combined gives you the ability to turn into all the animal buddies from Kirby's Dream Land 2 and 3. So that's Kind the Fish. Here's Nago the Cat, who has a triple jump. Here's Ku the Owl, yeah. who can fly yeah. but is also very heavy. I love how Kirby 64, like, follows that, like, classic dynamic of, like, oh, hey, uh, sometimes it's uh, beneficial to go left. This is the one. This is my favorite one. This is the one. This is Pitch the Bird. Who has a much better fly, and also when Pitch hits the ground, he rolls. So you can, like, kind of keep the momentum up. Yep. Nah, dude, P Pitch is easily the best of the animal transformations, bar none. Literally Flappy Bird, yeah. Uh, there's Koo again. There's Nago again. There's oh, hey, there's there's Rick. Rick the Hamster, uh, who can climb walls. Which you never find out about unless you're actually looking for it. Which I suppose would, w w like, would work if you actually played uh, Kirby's Dream Land and would know about that. Um, yeah, come on, where's, uh, where's Choo Choo? There. Oh, yeah, there's Choo Choo, sorry. I, I was fishing for Pitch. You'd think you'd be fishing for Kine out of any of them. Uh. Um, so Choo Choo just is an octopus, and she just has this jump. There we go. Yeah, so that's just their little, like, love letter to Kirby's Dream Land 3, which, again, was... The last game this director had directed. Um, Masahiro Sakurai actually had very little to do with this game. I think you need to go up from here. Yeah, I think I recall this. Um, no. Oh, okay, no, it's not quite here, but later there'll be a passage. Sink like a stone. <laughs> yeah, don't sink down there. Nope. Okay, maybe at the top of this passage. Thank you for the birthday uh, wish, uh, Austin. Actually, I'm gonna check down here. Nope. Nope. Yeah, I guess stone isn't incredibly useful underwater. I mean, if you're going down, it can be. And paradoxically, uh, Kine does not allow you to swim. Like, you would think that maybe, at the very least, they could give Kine that. Nope. Okay, on the left and up. Yep, gotta let that pass, and we got it! Ha <laughs> ha! Yeah, thank you, VC Video. You get it. Like... What? You, you take the time. 
you take the time to carve out a fish. <laughs> and you can't even let it swim. If somebody could carve a fish out of stone that swims, I'll be very impressed. That's just a coelacanth. Coelacanths aren't actually made out of rocks, though. <laughs> I know. I know. But come on. Uh, I guess it's a, I guess it's a relicanth. Relicanth is a rock type, yeah, right? Yeah, it's a relicanth. That's just a relicanth, then. Um, speaking of which, actually, fun thing that's coming up uh, on my channel, hopefully sometime soon, is I'm going to be continuing that... Um, that thing I did with, like, turning Monster Hunter monsters into Pokemon. Yeah. I'm gonna be continuing it with Sunbreak. It's actually really interesting, like, uh, using that fossil philosophy, because I know there are ancient monsters in Monster Hunter, like, Tigrix is one of them. Mm -hmm. So that's all. That's always been interesting to me. Um, favorite fossil Pokemon? Oh, uh, Tyrantrum. No, no contest. Actually, that doesn't surprise me whatsoever. Yeah. Mine would be Kabutops. Kabutops is cool, too. It's up there, I, but... I, 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 like, I remember Kabutops had, like, a bit of a niche in um, early Pokemon, but then just fell out. But I still think he's a great Pokemon. I also really like Archeops. I wish it didn't get one of the worst abilities in Pokemon history. Yeah. But when yeah, it doesn't have that ability, it's pretty cool. Ar Archeops, like, uh, didn't really do it for me personally, but I understand the appeal. I, I will admit, as much as I'm not the biggest fan of their designs, the uh, poke the fossil Pokemon in uh, Sword and Shield were clever. Yeah, that was neat. Like that. That's a really fun dig on the fossil industry. Yeah, Dracovish, Dracozolt, uh, Arctivish, and Arctozolt. Yep, there you go. All right, so what do I need here? Um, right. I don't think there's any particular abilities you need for this part. So I can kind of just go through this freely. I think so. All right, sounds good. Ari, thank you for coming in. Oh, hey, Ari. By the way, something about this level. What the heck is that? Yeah, yeah, there's just cool... Like, I, who I, is that? I, it, it's not an enemy in the entire game. It just appears in this one little scene. Who is that? Um, I think she shows up in Dreamland 3. So I think that's just like a little like cameo. But I forget who she is. Uh-huh. There's also a card for her if you're collecting cards. Oh, okay. By the way, um, you don't want to talk about upside down pyramids? Kirby did it first. Although I think that thing is more of a diamond than anything else. Yeah, it's a um it is an octahedron. Those enemies I like a lot, they're called Neruffs. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Matt Daddy Sness says, Deliver us! Deliver us to the promised land. Yeah, Prince Dobler, you're right. It's an enemy. The witch is an enemy from Dreamland 3. Got it. Yeah, this is a this is a weird track here. Yeah, I was gonna say, y'all want some sick Kirby beats? This reminds me a lot of if you've ever played um, Persona 5 Strikers. Yeah. The first. Oh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Mind Palace is like this. Okay, so there's going to be one here that you'll need to get above and then drop down into. Not too hard to figure out. Yeah. I just need to not get crushed. Fifth Guy, thank you for the one dollar. Thank you so much, man. Un dollar. Un dollar. Oh, you know what? Actually, I need you. <laughs> that was such perfect timing. <laughs> what were you trying to get there? Shock bomb? Yes, because I you need the light bulb for one of the bits in this level. Oh, yeah, I guess so. Though I think with that, I just ruined my chances. I think Though we can always go with just classic RNG. Yeah, I think there'll be another chance to pick up Spark. Well, not I Spark. Mean I mean bomb. bomb. Oh, I'm sorry if you had, a, like, a, a comment in there, Thiff Guy. Uh, can you say it again? I'll try and No, no, it. no. Uh, in the tips. Oh. Because, like, I have the voice to speech for the uh, tip thing. Okay, uh, okay, yeah, so... so... we're supposed to use light bulb to see what the message was Adeline was looking at. Yeah. 
Uh, do we want to just quit out of stage? Yeah, I'm gonna try this again. I, I, I do not have the patience to just randomly try and push buttons. There it is. Look at that. That's the, that's the ability we need. That's a good one. Oh yeah, that's a good point. You can also just like rewind the switch thing with L and R. Wait, wait, what? Oh, you didn't know about this? The emulator lets you um with a ZLZR. ZLZ. How? Um. Wait, hit both of them at the same time. Does it not work for N64 games? Okay, maybe it doesn't work for N64 games. Oh, by the way, yeah, um, gonna take a moment to appreciate Kirby's Isle animations here. And, uh, yeah, thank you, for Pe thank you, Petro DC. I'll check it out later. You really appreciate how round Kirby is in this one, in particular. Isn't there one where he, like, falls asleep? Yeah. Ooh, big shiny star. I'm gonna grab it. <laughs> um, Tanuki player says no. You can't. Uh, it doesn't seem like you can do it on the N64. It's only on SNES games, NES, and Game Boy. Okay, so according to a uh, Buzzsaw the Righteous, um, this pyramid appeared in Dreamland Three. Um, and I guess there's a theory that the area of Red Canyon in Dreamland 2 turned into Sand Canyon in 3 because oh. of the interference of this pyramid. Get over here! Okay. Western Echidna, thank you for the tier 1 sub. Uh, seven months. Thank you so much, dude. Alright. Let's not get crushed this time. At least we have the uh, crystal shard from earlier now. Yeah. Yeah, the stars, um, the stars he can collect to get more lives. Not that we are really starving for lives. Mm-hmm. Nah, we're fine. I didn't necessarily expect to go through this game unscathed, but I just wasn't expecting myself to get crushed like that so easily. Okay, so water, moon, star. Hey! <laughs> there good, you go. Good puzzle. Now that's a clever one. Okay, I know there's probably one here too. I think. Uh, let me. Okay, so there's a maximum tomato over here, which actually is nice. I need that. I don't think it's this room. Um, there's a room with a big button in it, but it's darker. I really like how white bulb Kirby looks. It is actually pretty good. Like a little bob bomb. Yeah, I don't think it's this room. Okay. You'll forgive me for covering my bases here. You cover your bases. You're based. <laughs> I like to think I'm based, yeah. <laughs> As the kids say. Oh, goodness. Oh, yeah, I think it's just when you kill this guy. Oh, okay. Easy enough. Yeah, I think just about every regular enemy appears as a mini-boss mm -hmm. at some point. There we go. Uh, check your lefts and the top of the door frames. I'll keep an eye out. Um, was that the... No, that was the third one, right? Yes. I think we got them all. Yeah, that was the last one for this Okay, game. yeah, so we're good. Um, Tempest Swarm asks, what do you think Baldur's Gate 3 developers Larian Studios is going to make next? New IP or Icewind Dale 3? Um, um, I think they just announced that they're going to, like, leave the D&D IP. Yeah, that's pr that's pretty much what I heard. And go Honestly, their like, new thing, um, their thing. I did hear about, um, I did hear about their endeavors to basically be like, no, we're done with Baldur's Gate 3, and I respect that, honestly. 
Like, the game is pretty much, like, stacked already with so much attention to detail and so many things going on with it that I think Larian made a good choice here. Like, I I'm going through, like, I'm still going through Baldur's Gate 3, and I still haven't even scratched the surface of everything that that game has to offer. It's insane. Baldur's Gate 3 is such a such an anomaly for... It, it, it's, like, practically an indie game, but mm -hmm. it's so big. Oh, big comment. Um, in case this happened to get missed during Kirbying, I was playing Phoenix Wright the other day, and I was on episode 2 of the first game. When I get to Gatewater Hotel, first thing I notice is a freaking screwdriver poking out of a drawer. I was reading the dialogue when I noticed it, and this is what I said. September 6th, Gatewater Hotel, room 303, and why is there a screwdriver poking out of the drawer? What kind of crap is this chicken do? <laughs> And bust saw the righteous. All right, I have things to do, so I'm gonna take off. Hey, Oscar and Comic Foil, have fun today, and again, happy birthday, Oscar. Thank you so much, bust saw. Good to see you, brother. Thanks for being here, bust saw. Mm -hmm. And fifth guy, um, redeemed a uh, spontaneous top three. Okay, let's hear it. I will uh, wait for him. By the way, first time, uh, daring. Good to see ya. Uh, thank you for coming in. Only thing I want for Baldur's Gate 3 is more races to play, like uh, Eric Cockra, uh, Furball, Goblin, etc. Eh. I would love to play a Goblin or an Eric Cockra, both mm -hmm. great races. They actually, they really, um, they really made the Goblins, like, fleshed out in Baldur's Gate 3, like, way more than I expected. Um, Thip Guy says, your best Pokemon of all time, you and Comic. Well, I kind of have a countdown about that, but it, it has changed. Is it, um, is it your best, like, the best Pokemon you have used yourself? Best or favorites, maybe. I don't know. I, okay. I'm, not I'm interpreting that as favorites. Um, me, personally, my top three would be Chandelure, Gengar, and Rabombi. Um, my favorite three are probably... Oh, best, not favorites. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. Ooh, that's tough. Because it's like... I mean, if we want to go with the objective best, I'd probably say Mega Rayquaza. Because Mega Rayquaza is kind of stacked. Yeah, see, yeah, see, Austin gets it. I'll go with one of my favorite, like, teams I ever did mm -hmm. in 3v3s. I was using a lot of um, uh, special wall Umbreon, um, opening Rapid Spinner, Stealth Rocks, Don Fan. Mm-hmm. And, um, who else did I run with that team a lot? Uh, there was an Ursaring I really liked. There was a Scissor I liked. I would do Mega Ampharos. Uh, Azumarill. Azumarill. Ah, oh, dude, Azumarill's great. Play Rough Azumarill is great. Uh, Especially power. if you have huge power. Yeah, huge power. In play rough. Insane. Belly Drum. Um, in terms of myself, my top, the top three Pokemon that I ever made for, like, compet com competitive, quote-unquote, like, we're talking, like... This is a team that I would run if I were to go into like competitive Pokemon. Um, Gardevoir is one of them. I have a real, I have a really, really good um, shiny Gardevoir setup that uses um, the Hyper Voice Pixelate combo. Hmm. Um, fantastic combination. So for those who don't know, Pixelate turns all normal types into Fairy type moves. Hyper Voice, one of the best like special normal moves. Suddenly it has Stab with uh, with Pixelate, insanely good. And it's Fairy type, which is just one of the best types. Yep. Um, second best, Gargonical. Um, Gargonical is kind of insane in, uh, competitive in, uh, in Scarlet and Violet because super tanky, especially for a pure rock type. Um, Purifying Salt is just a really good ability. Salt Cure is just a really, really good move. Like, Iron Defense that guy, may, like, have, um, Body Press along with that, I think, is the move. Um, is it Body Press or Heavy Press, depending on your defense? Um... Uh... Heavy press is based on your weight, so maybe it's body press. And probably body press then. Um, and, like, one of my favorite uh, things is to do is um, make uh, Gargonical a ghost-type Terra. Because Purifying Salt, the ability, halves moves from ghost-type Pokemon. So suddenly the weakness is covered. And ghost-types don't have a lot of weaknesses. Um, additionally, if I had to choose my third... Oof. I'm probably going to say Ledge. Oh, cool. Yes, uh, I built a pretty competent Ledge uh, for competitive as well, and Ledge is fantastic. Either Ledge or Quackaball. 
because it turns Pokeball out Pokeball Ball is really fantastic. Good. Absolutely amazing Pokemon. Uh, what do you think of Low Kicks? Low Kicks is cool. Not my type of Pokemon. I'm not, like, too into the design personally, but I think Low Kicks is great. I've, I've never run one, but... I think it's a really cool design, and I like its ability and everything. Yeah, no, like, from what I have to understand, like, low kicks is, like, super viable, especially for a buck type. Yeah. Uh, w one I really like now, more recently, is, uh, uh, Glamora. Because it has the ability that it lays down poison spikes when it gets hit. Uh, toxic debris. Yeah. Yup, yup, absolutely. Um, so, I'm pretty sure it's been long enough that, like, people aren't going to mind spoilers at this point. But fun fact that I appreciate, like, I don't know if you've gone through, like, the Scar the Scarlet and Violet DLC yet. I haven't, but I don't mind you talking about it. I might as well go ahead and say it. They fixed, uh, they fixed, um, Gita. Oh, is there a better fight? Um, not only is there a better fight, they fixed her team, basically. She leads with Glamora, and she ends with, uh, King Gambit. So... Is there another fight with her, or did they change the fight? Um, that's the uh, there? the Indigo Disc allows you to be able to invite trainers that you've had that you've de that you've um, previously associated with yeah. to the college in order to rematch them, and they're basically like super boss versions of each other. Dude, I'm gonna say right now, Nimona is insane in I, that version. I always thought that Gita was actually holding back in mm -hmm. her fight. I know she literally says, "I am incapable of holding back," but if you think about it, this is like something that like all students do that like she's not gonna let everybody win but i don't think she's going all out in her yeah game. and uh, admittedly like the final boss of the story mode in scarlet and violet was not gita it's yeah. nimona like I, let's I be agree. real um but no um the rematch with gita in the indigo disc has her coming in i believe she replaces one of her pokemon with hisui and arcanine maybe get that gogo -Go out of there because i don't know what yeah that... i think she replaces gogo -Go i don't with know hisui what Go -Go's doing for her and she leads with Glamora, so you get the Toxic Debris immediately if you yeah. hit it. And King Gambit with Supreme Overload or Overlord ability. Do you know what that does? Uh, no. Increases attack power for every fainted Pokemon. Oh, right, yeah. So suddenly King Gambit's a threat. Yeah. So I'm like, yes, this is a much better fight for Gita. And she, uh, I don't know why she has Goku and Jepo. You got me on that one. I think all of her Pokemon were supposed to represent the six areas Probably. of Paldea. And, yeah, I, I think, um, after that, she... Was it Hisui and Arcanine that she... No, 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 I'm thinking, I'm thinking, um... I, I'm thinking Volo for that, actually. I don't, I don't remember what Pokemon she replaced. I know she doesn't... I, I, if I recall correctly, she doesn't have the Go-Goat anymore. But I don't remember. But, yeah, Indigo Disc was stacked. Like, I will say, like, for a DLC package, Indigo Disc actually d did feel worth it. Uh, somebody said she swapped out go -Goat for Chestnut. Chestnut! That's it. And yeah, like, no, her Chestnut is actually not that bad. Um, I'm not a fan of Chestnut, but she made it work. Chestnut's a cool Pokemon. I always want to see people run it better. Yeah, th unfortunately, like, Chestnut has the same problem as, um, as, uh, who's the fire one? Um, are you talking about Delphox? Or? Yeah. Uh, Chestnut and Delphox ha uh, share the same problem. They're that in they, a game with Greninja. Yeah, they're in a... Yeah, Greninja is just <laughs> so obviously the best of that three. <laughs> like, don't get me wrong. Like, a Grass Knight and a Fire Mage, like, classics there, right? It's Greninja. Yeah. Like, come on. All right, let's fight this boss. I always think Kirby's saying hi. Hi. Um, as I pointed out in my recent video that came out last week, um, there is, I believe, one game where Kirby speaks full sentences, and it's yeah. hilarious. So here's a bit of a challenge. I'm not gonna stop, I'm not gonna stop walking. Uh, yeah, Terrapagos. I've he I heard Terrapagos is really cool. Terrapagos like, is actually pretty sick. I'm not gonna lie. It Ow. Is really cool. Ow. Thank you, Vulnerability Frames. This boss was interesting to me. Look, look at that. <laughs> I'm just walking and I'm dodging everything. 
Uh, Josh the Night Fury asks, favorite Paldea gym leader other than Mr. Overrated Businessman Larry? Um, one, Larry isn't overrated. He is correctly rated. Yeah. But, but okay. I'm sorry, it's Larry. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, it's Larry. Uh, I'm trying to think of the whole rest of the gang there. Um, I guess maybe Rhyme. Rhyme is cool. Um, if I had to pick my favorite um, gym leader besides Larry, because, like, Larry's just the right answer. Um, I'm gonna be honest, um, I have a bit of a soft spot for, um... Grusha? Yeah, I have a bit of a soft spot for Grusha, but, uh, also, um, gosh, I can't remember her name, and I like her. Bug Girl. Uh, Patissier. Oh, the, ba the Baker. Yeah, uh, the Patissier. Someone remind me of her name, gosh darn it. <laughs> um... Katie, thank you. Oh, that's why it's hard to remember because it's such a like it, it's a very ordinary name. Yeah, it, I, Larry's an ordinary name. But yeah, but in, in that case, thing. it's intentional. So I think the thing with Larry is that that gym battle and the fact that he comes back later in the in the Elite Four is like such a memorable happening. Yeah. Okay, I'm actually having a bit of trouble hitting that last one. Hey! <laughs> yeah, Pix is kind of an odd boss. Um, Iono is a really good one too, Josh. Oh yeah, that's right. I, I admittedly forgot about Iono. I, I'm pretty I'm pretty neutral on Iono. I don't I don't love her, but I don't hate her like some people do. Is a classic. I love the animation on DDD eating this piece of meat up here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh. By the way, how cool is this power? Like, you paint something, it becomes real. That's just like infinite food. I don't know. I don't know if Adeline realizes yeah. just how powerful she is. Also, Dragon Reaper. Yes, that boss is called Pix. Get over here, Kirby! Yeah, pick short for pixel. Even though it's not so much made of pixels as it is made of uh, vectors. Does Kirby eat paint? Kirby eats anything. Yeah. Oh man, has there ever been an artist, Kirby? Yes, in uh in Star Allies. That's right. Oh yeah. Duh. And before that there's a paint Kirby in Superstar. But that's just a like one-off ability. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What time is it? It is 12.04. We've been streaming for only an hour. And we're already at the Aqua Star. Which is world three. There are six worlds. Holy shit, this game is short. Yeah. I don't remember it being this short. I mean, the worlds do get longer because there starts being one additional level. That's per fair. World That's also. fair. Oscar, Oscar, it's Kirby. Kirby. I know! Sorry! Um, Count Jorn Paradox asks, been trying to ask you this, Oscar. If you happen to be a necromancer or a lich, what would your lair be? Oh, that's a good question. Hmm. What would my lair be if I were a necromancer or a lich? I don't know. Oh, no, you know what? It would be, an, it, it, it would be a Mayan temple. Cool. Like, oh, that would actually be really cool. Imagine a necromancer that's based in, like, Mayan or Aztec mythology, and instead of, like, your usual zombies, like, you have skeletons that are, like, painted. Okay, yeah. Like, your your zombie army is less, in, is less a uh, skeleton army and more a skeleton parade. <laughs> <laughs> have a bunch of uh, Calacas. Yep, yep. That would be cool. I like that. Well, I, I guess that technically that would be Carlos Calaca. Yeah. I'd probably haunt a library. That sounds like you. Yeah. Absolutely. If I was a ghost, Absolutely. I would definitely haunt a library. If Absolutely. I was... that, that, that makes so much sense. Oh, no. No, no, no. I would haunt a theater if I was a ghost. Oh, but if okay. I was... 
Phantom of the Opera. Yeah, if I was a <laughs> Lich or a Necromancer. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep with the library. I think that's just a cool. Oh yeah, the volcano gives us like gives us um rock, not fire. Um, I think this is the level where you need um stone. Oh no, you're gonna need um ice bomb. Ice and bomb. Yeah. Will I have an opportunity to get those here? I don't know. I mean, I guess at this point we can kind of just like go for it because we're we're clearly making great time. Yeah, we have the time. And I am about to die. Never mind. <clears throat> uh, somebody <clears throat> asked us before if we could. Uh, uh, <laughs> Uh, somebody asked us before if we could give them um, our best Volt and Valooza. <laughs> um. Hey guys, look, Kirby's a rock. Volt and Valooza. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta be honest, he was probably my least favorite of the gym roster in Paldea. Ah, uh, the uh, the chef. Yeah, I I just found that quest the most annoying. Um, Aramal, uh, did a, uh, countdown about them, and according to her, her least favorite is, um, what's-his-face? The artist. Oh, the grass type, um... Yeah. Okay. I can't remember his name either. Yeah, he's got, like, a thorn whip. There you go. I always enjoyed Kirby just flopping on the ground whenever he does that. I love the Maraca guy in the background. Just jamming out. You can't bother him, you can't hurt him. By the way, yeah, that's something you can also do in this game. <laughs> you can just head check the Bronto births. Head boy. Brassius, thank you, that's the name Brassius, of Brassius, yeah, thank you so much. Oh, that's ice. Okay, so ice and bomb you said, right? Yeah. Oh, I remember these guys. Yep, big frogs. Ah! It's also very easy for these guys to make you lose your ability, so there we go. Awesome! Now you get a snowman bomb. That's it. I remember this thing now. He reminds me of the snowman in a Frappe Snowland in Mario Kart 64. Oh yeah, I remember that. Game Master Anthony says superhero landing. Not not quite. Kirby does not do superhero landings. <laughs> imagine like imagine Kirby doing like the Iron Man pose with those stubby limbs. Oh, I forgot. What element would your Lich persona possess? Fire, ice, or lightning? Poison? Yeah, I don't think it has to be one of those choices. I think those are just examples. It, it, fire, it, ice, of, of the three, probably fire, because like that, like kind of like fits in with the Aztec theming. But honestly, I probably go with poison. It, if I'm in a library, I better not go with fire. Um, yeah, I think ice would do the best for me in this kind of character I've made. <laughs> admittedly like this game is silly but i do kind of appreciate like some of the very simple techniques that you can utilize in this game it's very it, it's very simplistic but it's fun see it's funny because when this game first came out not that it had terrible reception or anything but one of the common complaints about it was that it was too short and too easy and now for people who replay the game they're like oh i love this game it's so short i could just like play it in an afternoon pretty much that's right. There you go. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Ow! Oscar was Ow. hydrating. Don't attack him while he's hydrating. I'm you're trying to be a responsible adult by drinking my water. You're a storm cloud. You're supposed to help people hydrate. Brother, you have no idea how much water I've been drinking lately. 
Admittedly, part of the reason is because I've had to, like, rinse my mouth out, like, constantly because of the wisdom teeth nonsense. Because it's like, oh my gosh. I can eat normally now, but I gotta, like, make sure nothing gets back there. I still feel it. Um, I apologize if this is asked already. Oscar, have you played any Rebirth? Yes, I did start Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, and I am loving it. Oh, I'm so jelly. Oh my gosh, dude. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is the reason I upgraded to to PS5. And I'm glad I did, because gosh darn it, the game is so good! I haven't gotten too far. Um, I'm only- I'm still in the first part, but damn, dude. They upped the drama, they upped the- they, like- they made they took everything from the game uh from remake and just like they improved on it and i like kind i kind of like the open-endedness of the game like you can basically just go through this however you want obviously like there's a set destination but the fun of this game is how you get, get to that destination here. and it's so much fun i'm i'm having a great time with rebirth um omega black thank you for the subscription brother um, Absent Coder just... Oh, redeem the gaming challenge. Fight Aquastar's boss without a copy ability. Oh, that's a tough one to do that with, too. Bring it. You could do I, it, though. I am totally down for that. All right, it. Absent Coder. I got, like, I'll I'll get you there. Sure. Acro is probably the toughest one to fight without I ability. actually like Acro as a boss, yeah. to be honest. Like, it's a cool fight. Um... Oh, yeah, dude, I think I was gonna say right now, Red 13 is an amazing character. Like, damn, bro, they made- they gave- they did that character justice. So I have a question. Yeah? Um, I'm curious <clears throat> if in Rebirth, if after the point where you do Red 13's quest at Cosmo Canyon- Yeah. If they continue to call him Red 13, or if they start calling him Nanaki, which is his real name. I do not know yet. Because that's- that's something that I was always a little disappointed about at the beginning, is that it's kind of like a big character moment mm -hmm. for him to start using his own name again. But, like, just because of the limitations of the game, they're not going to, like, make you change the name again, because you already named him whatever you want. I am not sure if they do that yet, actually. Like... I'm just curious to see how they handle it. What I would like to see, at least this is for me personally, um, like, obviously, like, he is Nanaki, that's his actual name and everything, and, like, what I'd like to see... At least, like, this is my prediction, is that, like, the party and, like, his friends would, like, acknowledge him as Nanaki. But he would have the grace to be, like, you've been calling me Red 13 all this time, and I understand it. But coming from you guys, it feels fine. Yeah, I'd like to see it at least addressed. Yeah, yeah, th I, I agree. Like, because, like, for I understand the, um, I, I understand the stigma that he has with the title Red 13. But Red 13 is just a really cool title. Let's be real for a moment. It is a cool name. Mm -hmm. Uh do yourself a favor, get good in Queen's Blood and win the Yes, actually, I've had it I've been getting it I've been taking every opportunity to play Queen's Blood. And interesting uh thing that they've added to the game, but so far it's it's paying off. It's weird. It Queen's is a Blood's very like weird new, game, uh, but it's fun. That's like the new, like, Tetra Master, right? Basically. It's like, it, it's a new, like, card it, game. It, it's a card game that they made in, within the game itself. And it's actually kind of cool. I'm not going to lie. Giving me a little bit of inspiration on what I want to do when I eventually um, start actually developing that that uh, game that uh, Sheik and I are working on. Yeah. Um, Project Isekai. Because, like, I, I've been, like, racking my brain on how to make a proper card game. Um, ever since we started working on that. And I've been getting some cool ideas. I've been, like, writing notes down like crazy. Um, hopefully we can, it can lead to something. And I'm looking forward to how that works. Can you do me a favor, John? Sure. It's getting a little warm in here. Do you see that heater over there? Yeah. Just turn it off. Not that one. Oh. That how one. I, how do I turn it off? In, in front of your, the thing that you're, the thing oh, that's this. in front of your, yeah, that thing. Okay. Is it on? It looks like it's on. Yeah. Get over here! Uh, turn the, uh, right knob to off. Oh, no, it was off. Oh, it was off? Yeah. Huh, it's getting warm in here. Get over here! Maybe it's because, uh, I don't know. Uh, Danny, thank you. Oh, uh, not, uh, not Danny. Um, Omega Black, thank you for the five gift subs, dude. That's so, that's so nice. 
Get over um, here! One last question before I sign off for work reasons. Oscar, what's your favorite starter Pokemon ever? Rowlet. Good choice. Uh, Rowlet is amazing. I love him. He's amazing. Um, I will I will add Get to that with a couple here. of other favorites. I love um, Bulbasaur. I, I I generally really like the grass starters with a couple of exceptions. Um, Greninja would be one exception. Um, Get as, over here! As much as I like Trico, I'm probably gonna go with um, I'm probably gonna go with uh, Mudkip uh, for that one. Good choice. Um, and as much as I like um, no no no, that's a that's Gen three, yeah. Yeah, that's Gen three. What's Gen four? Uh, uh, Turtwig. Turtwig, Pipla, Shimchar. Get over here. <laughs> sure. <laughs> um. Yeah, no, like, I'd probably go with Turtwig for that one. Um, I will say, though, Infernape's close. And in terms of, um... What about Gen 2, Jodo? Uh, Chikorita. I know Chikorita sucks, but I like it. Um, Generation 6, again, Greninja. Generation 7, uh, Rowlet. Uh, Generation 8 is, uh, Sword and Shield. I'd actually go with Scorbunny up for that one. And, uh, Generation 9, Quackaball. But if I had to pick my all-time favorite, it would be Rowlet. Rowlet's probably my number two. Number one is Bulbasaur. That, yeah. And you Mud, you, you Mud always also, love Bulbasaur. Mudkip's also up there, too. Oh, yeah, definitely. Everyone loves Mudkip. Um, have you seen Guilty Gear character reveal ABBA? Yes, ABBA looks awesome, dude. Man, if I ever remake Top 10 Zombies, bro, we ought to talk about ABBA. I haven't seen this yet. Oh, no, she's fit. Like, uh, yeah, Abba got revealed a couple days ago. She looks amazing, dude. Cool. Really, really cool. Um, hey, Comic Foil, did you check out any of Stardew Valley 1.6? Uh, Allie has been playing it a little bit. Um, she's waiting for the Switch version of the, uh, she's waiting for the update to come to Switch, but, um, so far of what I've checked out, it seems really cool. I haven't played Stardew Valley mm -hmm. in a while, but I really like the game. Uh, my wife loves it. Yeah. Um, I like that you can have a pet turtle in this one. There's, <laughs> there's a bunch of different options for dogs and cats now. Um, you can drink mayonnaise, which is very important. Oh, yeah. I, I Dude, freaking um, you can just take the mayonnaise PM and... Seymour read the patch note for that one. Yeah. Uh, Kobe, uh, first of all, Kobe, I, j I it would be a dream come true for Maximilian Dude to react to Project the Isekai. That would be amazing. Like, that would be, like, oh, yeah, someday. pinnacle. Someday. Just amazing. Um, and he redeemed a spontaneous top three. Uh, hit me, man. You're gonna need a volcano for this next stage, by the way. You need it. Rock and fire. Yeah. Um, we can get that easily from the first stage, actually. Yeah. So, I'll go ahead and grab that quick. Um, in the meantime, keep an eye out for Colby's, um... I'll keep an eye Spontaneous out. top three. Oh, yeah, and there is a new farm that starts with a coop. Um, which is pretty cool. Um, okay, so for Comic and Oscar, who is your favorite hero in The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom? Um, if we're talking spontaneous top three, um... My favorite hero in uh, Tears of the Kingdom, I'd probably say number three would be Sidon, number two would be Tulin, number one would be Riju. I think... No offense to Yonobo. I think Sidon's the one his, his, that I, I, I will say have. this, his, his spirit power is the weakest. Yeah. Like, absolutely Yeah, is. like, great character, not particularly exciting spirit power yeah now um, if we're talking like great spirit power again i'd probably say riju um but tulin's is easily the most useful yeah like I, no questions asked i like, think i do number three yonobo number two riju number one tulin i also just like tulin because i like the rito a lot mm -hmm. da, 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 da. yeah like I, I seem like my favorites like, I say my favorite Sidon just because like it has nothing to do with like the spirit power or anything. I just love Sidon as a character. He is a great character. Um, one of the most memorable characters in Breath of the Wild and mm -hmm. other characters kinda had to catch up to how likable Sidon was. Oh absolutely. He's also amazing in Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity. Like, damn dude, his fighting style is freaking cool. 
Uh, Western Echidna is saying, when you get a chance, Oscar, check your Steam. Oh, nuts! Um, and Josh the Night Fury has been asking, Oscar, would you be willing to try Ace Combat 7 Deluxe Edition on Switch when it comes out this summer? I've actually been thinking about that, because, like, um, I was never into Ace Combat, but a couple of my friends are. Um, so I actually would not be, uh, too, um, I actually wouldn't be too, like, against, like, giving it a shot. Um, also, uh, Leo Hightower, thank you for the, thank you for the follow, Ben. Omega Black asks, what's your favorite evolution? Um, Espeon. Um, Omega Black, I have the same choice as yours, um, Umbreon with Toxic Stall. Ah, there it is. Yep. Protected by this enemy crab. This giant enemy crab. Oh man, like you you want to talk about giant enemy crabs? I've been, I've been replaying Monster Hunter Generations, um, Generations Ultimate lately, and the amount of times I've had to fight Daimyo Hermitar and and like Shogun Cenitar. We, we don't want to talk about giant enemy crab. We want to talk about those blokes. Uh, and, oh, this crystal shard. Yeah, I remember this. Okay. Yeah, so it's when you're going off a jump. Hang on a sec. Doing this. Call me cheap all you want. I don't care. Cheap, cheap, cheap. Oscar's cheap. He used a save state. Oh, shut it. <laughs> Back in my day, you didn't save state if you wanted to. There you go. Yep. Yeah, back in the day, also, you had to play freaking Ninja Gaiden without save states. Like, if you're into that low-level anxiety, then by all means, go for it. I usually try to not use save states in, when I play retro games on this, but sometimes I crack and I end up doing it anyway. Oh, no, you and me both, brother. Like, I use save states on Ninja Gaiden. I am not ashamed to admit that. Especially if it's something where there's limited lives, I'll use it at when I start a new life so that I don't have to keep. Mm hmm So that I don't have... Uh, wait, go back. Oh, yeah. Um, is it here or is it... It like, might be another No, area. it's a little later. But it is next to a, a waterfall, much like that we, we don't need Volcano anymore, do we? No. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's right! Oh, there it is. Uh, okay, and just as a Got heads it. up, uh, next level is the one that you're going to need Cutter and Stone. Well, we got Cutter. Yeah. Okay, so are we going to get Cutter somewhere here? With save states, every game is a roguelike. <laughs> I guess in a way it is, yeah. yeah. Okay, I can't do the uh, I can't do the head bump uh, when I don't have my face. I guess that makes sense. Yeah, I'd love to start playing. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, but I lack the PS5. Yeah. And I can't financially justify a PS5 at this time. I know there's... I know they're going to, like, bring it to PC later. Um, it's just a matter of, like, when. Because there's also some games that I've been waiting to play because I would rather play it on a PS5 than a PS4, like, uh, like, God of War Ragnarok. Yeah. Um, I, uh, ended up grabbing a copy of, uh, Tekken 8 for the PlayStation 5, because, like, as great as the PC is for, like, fighting games, um, there are some cases where console is better, uh, at least in my opinion. Okay, so you said we need stone. Uh, yeah, stone and cutter. Um, I believe stone is available here. Yeah, you can pick it up pretty fast. As a matter of fact. There we go. This is the most memorable crystal shard in the game for me. 
because when I was a kid, I was so confused how you were supposed oh to Oh my it. god, no. It, it, there is no clear um, way to know how to get this crystal shard. I, re I remember having so much trouble with this one myself. I will say, like, because of the requirement, like, at least getting through this is pretty easy with pitch. Yeah. That's a very nice elephant somebody made there. <laughs> they actually made a really cool sandcastle here. Um, oh my F123 King God asked... Oh my effing God. Um, what are ideal starters for Zelda's... For, sorry, I saw the word legend and said Zelda. My, my brain is broken. What are the ideal starters for Legends ZA? Um, oh, I know like, you had a uh, whole conversation about this on Discord. Uh, yeah, we actually did come up with something. Um, so if, if it were up to me to design the um, starters for Legend ZA, um, my choice would be... Um, uh, my choice would be Poplio. By the way, Stars McLovin, I saw you redeemed a uh, spontaneous top three. We'll get yeah, to, we'll, we'll, get we'll, look, we'll get into that in a bit. Um, Thank my, you. my choices would be Poplio and make it a water ghost, a sort of Phantom of the Opera type thing. Um, Turtwig, and then make it a Grass Steel type, make it a Terrarium. And then Score Bunny, and uh, make him like a like NASCAR racer uh, type Pokemon. Maybe like Fire Poison. Or maybe even fire flying. Because, like, regular Score Barney already kind of has that, like, racer helmet. Actually, no, now that I think about it, it would be, like, um... It, it, I think it would be fire flying. But, like, kind of like a, uh... A play on, um... Oh, so under that rock. Go back down there. After that rock goes off, you need to get underneath it. Oh, or not. Um... Oh no, I dude, th this is one of the things I need it for. I think we need I think we need um animal statues later in the level. This is this requires it looks like cutter and bomb. Um shoot, I think you're right. Okay, later in the level is the cutter bomb one. Okay, do you want to finish the level and Yeah, we'll come we'll back? come back for this. I I thought it had something to do with that block there. Nah, it's all good. It's all good. Um, okay, so to get to the spontaneous top three... Yeah, sorry about that. Um, Alright, uh, DDD. Stars McLovin Whoa. asked for a spontaneous top three Let's Plays you've done. Ooh. Oof. Oh, that's a tough one. If I had to pick my favorite Let's Plays that I've done... Um, definitely one of the Fire Emblem playthroughs. I'd have to go probably with, like, the, the Talia Saga. Although I also have a really, really big soft spot for our playthrough of Blazing Sword. I think Blazing Sword is my favorite just for the nostalgia of it for me. Mm-hmm. It, it was also just a really fun run overall, yeah. honestly. Um, second would probably be my playthrough of Blasphemous. Um... Particularly because of, like, how that playthrough, like, kind of just... It's a puppy. Hey! It's a puppy. Hello. Aw. Did you come to say hello to stream? <laughs> yeah? What's going on with you? What's going on with you, pup? My baby. Sorry, I was trying to, like, sneakily get up here. <laughs> <No> <laughs> You're good. You're good. Hi, sweetheart. <laughs> okay, yep, there it is. So I need Rick, right? Yeah. If you stay still, I'll pet you. Nah, she'd be excited. Alright. Yes, kid. There we go. I've been here the whole time. Y yeah, so what in the game explains to you that Rick can climb walls? Nothing. Absolutely. Nothing I, explains that. Especially because, like, you wouldn't necessarily, like, expect it. Because one of the statues in this power-up is literally useless. Like... Kine can't do shit! So you expect us to believe that you thought of making Rick climb walls? And it's not like there's a color coding thing anywhere, like most of the crystal The only shards. hint you get is the fact that, like, you need to, like, 
open that block with the uh, with the statue cutting power. And they want they want to see the uh, <laughs> they want to see the dog, but she's like, um, I would absolutely uh, bring the dog in like to show you guys, but she's a little bit too hyper right now. Yeah. Uh, she's going a little bit crazy. Yeah, and we we would take her for a walk, but it's currently pouring right now. Yeah, no, it is raining. Great day, great day for a stream, but damn, is it like miserable out there right Bad now? Bad day for a walk. Yeah, she she's got the indoor zoomies right now. Mm-hmm. And she just came off a nap. Aw. Okay, I did not mean to hit that button. Okay, Dragon Dragon Reaper, I'm just going to say right now, Rick is useful for that one shard. <laughs> it's just like, why would you use Rick when you can use Pitch? There we go. Oh, what the? Kirby reacted badly to that. Was it one you already had, maybe? Maybe? I didn't know I did not know she could do that. Oh, the puppy. I, I did not know that could do that could happen. Hey, how's it going? Here's the puppy. Can we get some good girls in chat, please? Ah! Gino, oh. another five! Oh. oh, there you go. Hey, don't make Gino fun of the fish. <laughs> the devs gave it to you out of kindness. If you give a player a fish, it will feed them for an hour. If you give a player a stone fish, it will do nothing for them. It's useless. Yeah, we got some good girls in chat. Mm. Good girl. Jeez. That al that almost makes up for that horrible pun, you know. Oh. Yeah, she she'd be a little bit she'd be a bit of a hyper girl right now. Sorry, I cannot focus now. There's a dog in the room. Uh, Sorry. hey, uh, babe. Oh, you don't have to do anything, Amber. I didn't. <laughs> I didn't mean that as a complaint. Hey, babe. Yes. Uh. Someone, uh, Tempest Swarm is asking, uh, thoughts on, uh, Mermaid Peach? Uh, I love her. I, 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 si like, I need, I still need to pick up my copy of, uh, Peach, uh, Princess Peach Showtime. It looks fantastic. Uh, what's the pupper's name? Kishki. Mm -hmm. Uh, for anyone uninitiated, Kishki means potato sausage. It is Polish. Her idea. Because my family's Polish. Yep. She's a little potato sausage. So, um, you are here for a reason, right, uh, that's, honey? That's Kishki with a K, Jeffo. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you're here for a reason, right, hon? Yes. All uh, right. Are you about ready to start the drinks group this evening? Hey, so, um, in, um, the usual tradition that we do for, uh, some of our streams, we have drinks today. Yes, we and do. And I'm going to enjoy myself with these, because, you know, birthday. Um, so Amber has was uh, gracious enough to spend the week preparing Kirby themed mixed beverages. Wow! So this is gonna be uh, this is gonna be fun. Mm -hmm. So what are we starting with here? So today we are starting with uh, the Star Child themselves, Kirby. So Kirby the Star Child. Um, where is it? Uh, it's right downstairs. I'll be right down. Okay, cool. This is exciting. I've never actually been in the room for one of these. No, you have not. I've seen this happen plenty of times on stream. <laughs> so yeah, the first drink of the day is going to be uh, the Star Child based on Kirby. And that's pretty much going to be the theming for the rest of the drinks is we're going to be basically, uh, we're going to base them off of uh, different Kirby characters. Although she did make one, she did make a sixth drink uh, this time around, which I have absolutely zero idea about. So that's going to be a nice surprise. In the meantime, however, um, we're starting with the Star Child. What do we got? So oh, oh, goodness, this, that's big. Whoa. This is the Star Child. Ah, uh, this is a lot. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. Why are we starting with this one? <laughs> <laughs> um, it is dripping a little. Can I get a napkin? That is beautiful, Amber. Thank this you. looks fantastic. Oh my gosh. Okay, so, um, what do we got here? So this is the Star Child. Um, it is made with three large strawberries, um, three dashes of chocolate and orange bitters. Whoa. Um, an ounce and a half of strawberry vodka, an ounce of lime juice, um, half an ounce of simple syrup, muddled with mint, star fruit, um, and topped with club soda. That is a lot. Can you can you wow. get a get that close up so that they can see the the little star? Yeah, on like the rim. The, yeah, look at that. <laughs> that is so cute. This is also big. Like, holy smoke. That's probably heavier than Kirby is. <laughs> it, it, <laughs> it was kind of the intention. His 
originally I wanted to find a, uh, kind of like a little fishbowl to like put this in, because like Kirby's basically just a little ball. <laughs> that's adorable. <laughs> so I settled with this. That, that's a good shape. All right. It definitely so captures the roundness mm -hmm. of our round The boy. rotundness of Kirby and his uh, big body. The dude's eight inches long. This is probably this is probably the size Kirby is actually. <laughs> All right, so let's give this a shot. That's easy. That is very. Ooh, hang on a sec. So the club soda makes it like taste like a soda. But then the flavors just start blowing up in there. Like, I definitely can taste the strawberry. Um, the, no, strawberry is, like, super forward with this one. The funny thing is... <laughs> I have to, like, be a little careful with the straw. Because I'm getting chunks of strawberry mm. every now and again. Like a smoothie. It basically is a smoothie, yeah. like, for all intents and it's purposes. like a smoothie soda. Mm -hmm. mm. Originally, this actually was supposed to be a smoothie. Ah. Um, I was actually going to originally make this with porchata. Oh, um, damn. But I ended up uh, changing it um, to more of, like, a soda soda drink. Honestly, like, that, that works just fine. Yeah, it's very fruity, very, like... It's very simple, but it, it's a very simple taste, but it's easy. This is... Like, this is something I can just enjoy. I imagine this is what it would look like if you put Kirby in a blender and hit puree. Yeah. It, it would turn into this. <laughs> you want to try it? I would love to try it. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, go for it. Oh, that's good, Amber. Right? <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it's very... I, I like the club soda. I like club soda-based drinks a lot. Mm -hmm. Have some more. Yeah, I'm... Don't have to tell me try it twice. <laughs> There's plenty to share between both of you. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. You're yeah. Welcome. No, that was pretty good. Um, admittedly, like, we started out with a pretty simple one. Not much to say other than it's easy, it's sweet. But not too sweet. Um, the carbonation definitely helps. It like this is a this is a nice one we can just kind of like take our time with. Yeah, which... it's like not so carbonated though. Like like you wouldn't mistake it for a soda. No, no, not at all. No. They the, like it is very obvious in what it is. The and strawberry is, is... kind of like holds down the carbonation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, what's a good? You know what? It's like a it's like a it's like if a strawberry soda got a bachelor's degree. Hmm. I think. I guess okay. That's the best way I can. What do it. what what subject does a strawberry soda study? Um, hydraulics. Okay. I I don't know. Yeah. I, I'm trying to come up with some what, fluid mechanics. Get over here! I, I didn't have a better one. What, so. what? Okay. What degree do you need to study wind tunnels? Yeah, that that would be a physics degree. So okay, you so. would definitely take like a aerodynamics. No, aerodynamics you, no, you, no. Mechanics. You know what? Kirby would study quantum physics. Yeah. Yeah. Like, absolutely. He is literally a being of hammer space. <laughs> uh, thank you for the 44 months, North. Goodness. So, yeah, we can kind of just, like... I'm probably like, just going to, like, leave this here, and you can enjoy it to your leisure as well yeah, if you want. I, that is a good sip and drink. Mm-hmm. Glad you like it. Great one to start with, hon. Seriously. Oh, I'm going to take my time with this. <laughs> so. <laughs> I love who wrote the husband and wife and the husband's husband. <laughs> That's pretty much our dynamic here, isn't it? Yeah. Whenever I want to bother Amber, what I always say is, Amber, he might love you more, but he loved me first. <laughs> <laughs> Which is true. Yeah. Wait, somebody's somebody's talking about me in the... What is it? What is John's... If the uh, question is what my real name is... Oh, yeah. Yeah, my real name is John, J-O-N. Yeah, it's literally just John. Yeah. You may want to come up with a better cover name than whatever you came up with. Try John. There are a million Johns. Really? There's a million Lees. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, someone's like, I ship it. <laughs> oh, we got a bot. Give me a bit. Or give me a second here. I got it. Search and destroy. Be gone, bot! <laughs> 
<laughs> fires them out into space. Oh man, I love I, I love that joke. Um, now I'm reminded that uh, of that time uh, to tr I tried some strawberry uh, ramune. Ooh, that sounds good. Oh, North, thank you for the resubscribe. Yeah, thank 44 you. months. Like seriously. <laughs> All right, so yeah. Um, I think we're good. I think uh, that was a good one to start with, hon. All right. I will see you guys in another hour. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, Amber. You're welcome. Thank you. The straw's making it a little bit difficult because of the freaking... Because of the freaking... <laughs> the freaking uh, strawberry chunks. I, I feel mm. like drinking it from the side might be the better way to go. I'll probably start doing that in a bit. Um, North Redeemed, um, Ask the Green Scorpion, what's a game you have played a ton of hours on but don't actually like all that much? Would League of Legends count? <laughs> I mean, like, how do you play a game for hours and hours and not like it? I have an answer to that. It's, um, Legend of... Oh, thank you for the... What does that sound mean? Uh, five uh, dollar Oscar donation, Oscar can't Gina. say, be gone thought, because then he'd have to leave the stream. And yet you come in like a bat out of hell. If I had to choose which of us in this house right now was the biggest thought, it would be you. <laughs> I have to be honest. I hate that you're right. Yeah, that, that's not an <laughs> insult. It's just an observation. <laughs> Should I be ashamed? <laughs> you can be whatever you want to be. Never, never be ashamed of who you are. Fair enough. Which fair is enough. a thought. Because I'm in your thoughts? <laughs> Buddy, you live in my head rent free. Oh my goodness gracious. Great balls of fire! Oh man. I don't. We're only on the first drink and we're already going nuts. Uh, but the, the game I played hours of that I don't really like all that much is uh, Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity. I just wasn't super into it. It's not my kind of game, but I 100%ed it before the DLC came out. Fair enough. That 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 is, act, that is actually fair. I actually do like Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity, so I like I enjoyed my time with that game. Um, yeah, I'm not... <sighs> at the risk at, at the risk of bringing up potential like bullshit. Maybe Overwatch? Yeah. Oh, boy, Overwatch. Oh, boy. Yeah, like, I F spent hours... chat. I, I spent hours and hours on Overwatch 1, and I did legitimately enjoy the game. And then shit happened. I don't think you need to get into the politics or the behind-the-scenes things to say that Overwatch 2 was just very mishandled. Oh, absolutely. fucking lootly. Like, it, it doesn't take a genius to see that. I think they rushed it to try and distract from some of the controversies that were happen happening, and it looks like a rushed product. Mm-hmm. Um, Mages Andrus, uh, spontaneous top three, maids and butlers. Ooh. Oh. -ho. Ooh. There's a, there's a lot of good ones. Um, I mean, obviously the best one is Alfred. Um, but if we're talking, like, video games specifically, I like Felicia from Fates. Yeah, admittedly. the first ones I thought of were Jacob and Felicia. Yeah. Um, whew. uh, there's, okay, wait, I'm just running through a bunch. There's the Deku Butler. Ooh, yeah. There's, um, the Butler from Wind Waker, who's like a cardboard cutout. That one's pretty funny. Um, Hein from King of Fighters is a pretty cool guy. Uh, he's, uh, Geese's yeah. Butler. Yeah. Really, 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 really cool character. Um, there's a character in Danganronpa V3 <clears throat> who's the ultimate maid. I forget her name, but she's cool. Oh, Dudley's Butler. He delivers Dudley tea on a helicopter. Like, come on. Yeah. And he and he serves you tea after Dudley kicks your ass. Um, I also thought of Brewster, but Brewster is more of a barista than a than a butler. Yeah. Like there is a difference. There, there's some similar iconography, but he is not a butler. Yeah, same thing with the character from Valhalla. I forget her name. Oh yeah, yeah. That's a whole different category of character. Uh, Jill Stingray is the that's it. Is Thank the you. Lead from yeah, Valhalla. which by the way, Jill Stingray, what a cool name. Uh oh man. Um, yeah, I'd probably go with that. Like probably um, Hein from King of Fighters, um, Dudley's Butler, and what was the other one we mentioned? Felicia. 
Although there's a lot of mates. Oh, geez. Like, what What are the mates from... Uh, what was her name from... Hisui from uh, Melty Blood. Yes. Really, really cool. Really, really cool concept with that character, along with her sister. No, uh, there's quite there's quite a few. There's quite a few. What's the name of the teacher from Persona 5 who... Oh, Kawakami. Mates? Yeah. I can, Sa Sadoyo Kawakami. I can see that being some people's favorite. Oh, absolutely. Like, I I'm just going to say right now, I love Sadayo Kawakami. She she's a complex, interesting character. Absolutely. Her being absolutely. a maid isn't my favorite thing about her, but I like her a lot. Like, the thing is, is like, is is that like the is that like the favorite thing about her for some people? Like, absolutely. Yeah. Me, at, at least for me personally, I like the reason why. Yeah, it's she, she's just trying to pay the bills, you know? Like, that, that's a really, really cool deconstruction of like the struggles of being an educator yeah like admittedly like kawakami hits home pretty fucking hard like, and it's not like gonna lie. yeah yeah like like pro sex worker not that there's sex involved with what kawakami's doing but it's you know adjacent yeah yeah like the, the, it was clear where they were going with her character and i like the fact that they addressed that sort of theming in a tasteful way honestly yeah, yeah i think when you first find out that's a plot point it's like oh no but it turns out to be a lot more wholesome than you expect yeah yeah it's not nearly as problematic as it could have been i am playing through a uh, persona 3 reload right now oh um, yeah which i'm enjoying a lot mm -hmm. okay so uh, do i need any specific uh, abilities here i don't believe so but let me uh, bring up um yeah i know one of these you're gonna want to hug the ceiling Got it. Okay, it's not this room, though. Yeah, I think underwater sometimes the best way to go is just... <clears throat> um, is just nor normal Kirby. Mm -hmm. There are some copy abilities that, that do work down here. Yeah, all of them do, and this is also one of the only Kirby games where you can inhale wa while underwater. Yep. Ow. Uh, but also, all of the animations for the copy abilities are drastically slowed down underwater. These things are weird. They're based on uh, sea butterflies. Uh, sea angels. Yeah. Uh, what's a character that you like that's a complete dick? Oh, I have a lot of those. Oh, there's plenty of those. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, go up. Check check the uh, ceiling in this room. I'm not positive, but I think yeah, like, I, I know that's not, like, the way out, so... Um, off the top of my head, just because I've been thinking about Danganronpa a lot lately, uh, Byakuya Togami. Oh, yeah. Good call. Good choice. probably my favorite Danganronpa character, and he is an asshole. Okay, I need to go to the other side here. That was a little close. That, like, I think character, it's important to have characters that don't get along with each other sometimes because that, like, mixes up the dynamic. Uh, yes, definitely. And Byakuya is, like, a huge X factor in that first game. Like, that's how you get Lancer characters. Yeah. Um. Another one is Rivali. I think Rivali is the most interesting of the champions in Breath of the Wild. I agree, actually. I love Rivali. Um, in a similar vein, um, uh, Takumi from, uh, Fates. Yeah. I think Takumi's a great character. Um, wait, uh, before you move anymore, I think. Yes, right there. Oh, cool. Got it. Okay, and there's one more in this stage. It's in a room with um with Gordos. Okay, let me see if I can do this. My thing with Takumi all the time is like you're kind of supposed to hate him because he doesn't trust Corin, but like he's kind of right. Yeah, like he he's like the one character who has like the actual wisdom to be like. Hey, don't you think we're, like, uh, trusting this, like, dude we've never, like, we've hardly ever, like, associated with a little bit too easily just because he's some sort of chosen one? Yeah. Don't you guys think, don't you guys find that a little bit suspect? And, like, while Korn themselves had good intentions, the fact that Korn was there kills Takumi's mother. Yep. And Ryoma's mother, their, their collective mother. Um, oh, Glitch King has a great choice, Akechi. Akechi's a good choice. Yeah, Goro Akechi is an excellent choice. I think that's my wife's favorite Persona character. Honestly, great choice. Very good choice. Uh, this room has one. Um, 
when you start seeing Gordos, it's coming up. Got it. Um, it's gonna be on the top, I think. So stay near... Oh, no, it's gonna be on the bottom. Scratch that. Okay. Yeah, it's gonna be in, like, one of those down divots. I... Alright, keep going. This is a cool system with the exploding stars. Thank you. <laughs> I think that's probably one of the best copy abilities in this game. Oh, absolutely. Ow. All right, that's all three of them, right? Yeah, it is. Oscar said something positive about a Fates character. I'm just going to say right now, I like Fates as a game. All right, and there are characters in that game that I genuinely enjoy. It's just the one and several others. I made the mistake of telling V that I don't really understand what fates is. Oh, right, we need to go Wait, back and use... isn't it Bomb Shuriken? Yeah. Awesome! Yes! Yeah, before you get rid of that to fight Acro. I'm glad I remembered that. Uh, you were saying, by the way. Uh, uh, our friend Veronica was explaining yeah. the series fate to me because I was like... Oh, god! It's one of those series where there's just, like, so much of it and the naming conventions are so confusing that I don't even really understand what it is. Hon honestly, like, there's, a, like, the, o the only thing I really follow about Fate, like, as far as I'm concerned, is uh, that one character that's apparently very popular. I forget her name. Um, I don't know. She's a guest character in, um, in the new, um, in, in the new, um, Melty Blood game. Saber. Saber. Thank you. Yeah, like, honestly, like, Saber's, like, the only... It's, it's, I love how three people were immediately like, oh, you're talking about Saber. Yeah. yeah. Because, like, Saber's, like, the one character everyone remembers from Fate. Yeah, I don't know enough about it to, like, even have a problem with it. I just... I, I find it one of those games that is very hard to even know where to start. There's a lot going on with Fate. And... In, in, in the same way that there's a lot going on with, like, other games, like... Um, so... I, I've had a couple of people, Amber included, uh, come at me the other day with, like, this, like, amazing animation, uh, that came out of Honkai Star Rail, and I'm like, I know nothing about Honkai Star Rail, like, absolute jack, but that animation that they did recently was un incredible, like, absolutely beautiful, so that was fun to look into. Um, EJ is asking, now that some time has passed, would your rankings of the top 10 Geomancers change at all? Probably. Definitely, yeah. Um, yeah, definitely, because, like, um, you remember how Rashid was kind of, like, the character that, like, kind of, like, came out of nowhere for Aeromancers, and I yeah. wish I could have included him? In the similar vein, Talia. Yeah. Uh, from League of Legends. Is that how you say it? Uh, yeah. I always thought it was Talia. It could be Talia, or it could be Talia, I don't know. Yeah, like, it could be either one. Okay, before I go into the boss, I'm also gonna grab this. And I believe that is it. I'm so glad. I want to compliment Kirby64 again here. I'm glad that you can say try again, but it saves the crystal shard you collected. Yeah. That makes completion so much easier. I know there are certain, like, um, I know there are certain games that don't do that. Like, you still have to complete the level in order to get the collectible, and that annoys me sometimes. I'm gonna have some more of that in a bit, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, yep, Ass Encoder, we are going in. That's why we got rid of the copy ability. Uh, thoughts on a top 10 chrono kinetics, like time manipulators? I've, absolutely, we would love to do that. I've thought about that one a lot. No, we would absolutely love to do that. What do you think of the Skarner rework? I'm pretty behind on League of Legends stuff myself. Skarner looks fantastic. I haven't looked at League of Legends in, like, four years. Nah, Skarner looks fantastic. Like, I'm looking forward to seeing what, like, what more comes out of that. Um, Telekinetics kind of, like, leans into Psychics. Yeah, um, Telekinetics definitely falls under the umbrella of Top 10 Psychics. Mm-hmm. Uh, how would you... Um, how would you defend it? A definite? Offen you mean define Offenser? Uh... I'm sure there's a certain, like more like specific definition we could get looking at some dictionaries or looking at the sport but basically anybody who uses a rapier yeah. as their weapon more or less would be the fencer 
Yeah, there's also like there, there's also the classic like stance of a fencer is like their whole thing is like defense keeping a reach, uh, a lot of focus on like stance and parrying because they all can they can also use like sabers. Yeah. Um, or like Fiora in Lake of Legends does have a guarding dagger, mm -hmm. which is a common thing for some forms of fencing. It's just he c couldn't actually stab your opponent with the dagger that was against the rules, but you could use it to guard. Yeah. Um. As a matter of fact, that was, like, very common for a lot of fencers during that time period is, like, they would have, like, a disarming dagger. That was a whole point of the Mangash, is, like, to have a sidearm um, that you can use. And certain daggers also, like, specifically designed for disarming. Um, so that was a very common thing. Uh, favorite Dragon Ball characters? Vegeta. Like, I, I, in my opinion, I think Zuko, like from Avatar The Last Airbender has, like, the best, like, redemption arc. redemption arc character type. Like, I think he's, like, the best example of a redemption archetype. Vegeta's up there, though, in my personal opinion. So is Piccolo. Um, as a matter of fact, Dragon Ball has this habit of, like, Goku basically making friends with ex-enemies. Piccolo even brings that up during story mode in Dragon Ball Fighters. I think the movie Dragon Ball Evolution... Could have been a better movie if, if, if Krillin was in it. <laughs> I think that's the big flaw of that movie. Therefore, I think Krillin is the best character. Krillin's great. Like, Krillin's just fantastic. Alright, so, uh, thoughts on Beast Gohan. Beast Gohan's badass. Um, so is Orange Piccolo. The name's stupid, but Beast, Ho Be Beast Gohan is cool. Alright, so, no copy abilities, huh? Here we go. What's comics' favorite... Um, D and D slash Pathfinder class. Uh, Bard. Oh yeah, Bard is my favorite class. Even though, oh, I just thought I of something. Played it that much. Hang on a sec. I'm gonna have fun here. Oh my gosh, I didn't think of that. Okay, okay, I got something here. I got something here. So this is Acro, which is Orca spelled backwards. Um, and he was also a boss in a. Uh, Kirby's Dream Land 3. Hi, puppy. Kishki doesn't like Akro. Kishki says, Father, why do you not have a copy ability? I am not. Ha I do not have a copy ability, Kishki, because I was challenged to not have one. <laughs> EJ says Krillin's goaded. Thank you. Ah, EJ. Jesus. Sorry, we're having a little bit of a sound malfunction on our side, too. Ow. Well, I'm not doing a very good job yet. Well, you had to use your one hand to, like, fix the sound cable. So I can understand. I think you can still pull this one out. Okay, but you're not done yet. Nope. Phase two, baby. Here we go. Uh, is that an orca or a whale? Um, orca is not a whale. Uh, they're closer to dolphins, if anything, right? Orca is a type of whale. Orca is a killer whale. Oh, yeah, you're right. I guess small whales. Yeah. They're one of the smallest species of whale. Yes. All right, here we go. Also, they are very dangerous. Oh, extremely. Okay, you're doing the thing? Okay. There's the whistle. Okay, I lost it. Okay, you're gonna do the thing. Actually, now that I think about it, can I? Oh, Holy Reyes says Orca is a type of dolphin. They are not whales. Okay. Maybe I'm wrong on this. Uh, I'm gonna ask Professor, Professor Google. Are Orcas whales or dolphins? Hey! <laughs> Torpedo attack! Oh, by the way, unique animation here. Apparently, both are true, and it depends on your classification method. Really? I guess. Huh. Well, all right then. While this cutscene's going on, I'm gonna see if I can fix this audio thing. 
Oh, this is funny. Uh, Kirby! Ow. Oh. What happened? Sand. Hey! Wait for me! <laughs> Kirby just gets owned by a wave and everybody leaves him there. Alright, so Neo Star. Um which is basically like the fire star if I recall. Oh no wait no, this it's, is like it's the jungle star it includes some volcano levels. That's right, okay. Um and to uh answer someone's question, we're doing pretty good, by the way. We are doing alright. Uh thank you, Dazzling Shell, for asking. I don't think there's any ability requirements for this stage. Um, next stage is going to need stone and bomb at the end for dynamite. Got it. So we'll at least like see if we can fish out for dynamite in this level. Well, there's a stone. Not the most useful ability to have right now, but... Hey, I'll take it. Uh, watch the floor here, too. Yeah, I remember of, this. There, there's a lot of spike traps. I'm also a bit low on health, so I gotta be careful. Yeah, that one. Oh, actually, no, like, if I recall correctly, like, one of the, uh, one of the crystals is in one of those pits, if I, I recall correctly. I think you are right. Yeah. Yeah, so if you get to the end of the room... Grab that sandwich while I'm at it. Ow. I think it's this one. Yep, there it is. What makes it tougher is that the um, the spiders explode when they hit the ground, which has a damage effect. Ow. Also, they, like... Th those pits, like, drop really quickly. Yeah, there isn't time to jump off them. <laughs> nice. I remember, baby. Uh, the last one's going to be pretty easy to find, too. It's when you're going... Uh, from left to right over a high up area. Ay, madre. The good thing is, I can go back into the previous room and get stone again. Well, at the very least, my, I'm at full health again. Also, Holy Rhea, you're right. It would not be easy to skip stones on ocean, on like ocean waves. Oh no, they, it would not be. There we go. Got it. Uh, you're, you were supposed to be getting stone and bomb. Oh. But I mean, if you want to keep this for a little while. Well, I don't know if we're going to get another stone later. Okay, so stone and bomb we need. It's a stone, Luigi. Uh, Tristan, uh, can't stay long. Uh, just wanted to say happy birthday. Thank you so much, man. And also, Jolari, thank you for the bits, man. Oh, hey, Jolari. Yeah, it looks like um, we got... Also, Josh the Night Fury, also with a uh, with a hundred bits. Um, any movies coming out this summer that we're going that you guys want to go see? Um, not I'm really. Kind of interested in Deadpool three whenever that comes out. Oh yeah, that's right. I think that's in the summer. I admittedly haven't been really following what movies have been coming out like all too much, except for like you know, um, what's been going on with the Oscars, if only because that's part of my job. Yeah. Speaking of which, I will say one thing about the Oscars. Um, kudos to uh, Miyazaki for his victory. Um, Boy yeah. and the Heron, fantastic movie. Yeah, well deserved. Across the Spider Verse is good too, but I'm not. Oh, absolutely. I'm not really gonna be upset for it losing to a Miyazaki movie. Yeah, like let, let's be honest for a moment. Uh, Dazzling Shell 101 EX. Um, I feel like answering my questions from your Fire Emblem LP, starting with Path of Radiance. Um, yeah, I see you. Uh, Dazzling does uh, put a lot of um, questions on all of our Let's Plays, actually. Um, and I don't always get to all of them. Sorry. If oh, I, yeah. If I had them in a list in front of me right now, maybe I'd do some of them. But don't think I have time to fish them out right now. Sorry, bud. 
Okay, if I recall correctly, one of the crystals should be here. If you want to ask any questions here, though, da uh, Dazzling, I'll... I'll be happy to oh yeah address them we like we are we are open to questions here people oh uh holy ray my apologies i was saying raya it is holy ah. ray there. oh there it is I like these little pterodactyl guys ah okay there we go wow you just barely like landed on the <laughs> I saw you, like, land and then, like, move your hand to fix the cable, so I was like, you're going to fall right off, but you did not. I uh, should put AMA in the tags. I mean, it's kind of, like, assumed at this point, and it's not always AMA. Like, we're not going to get it, we're not going to get to all the questions, mind you. What's AMA? Ask me anything. Oh. I'm keeping it out for a bomb ability, but I'm not finding it. You can ask me anything. Whether or not I answer you is... A different matter entirely. I think ran out as soon as it. Um. Well, you won't need bomb until the end of the next level, so. So hopefully we can find it. Yeah. Uh, what's your least favorite Gen Four uh, fire type belief? <laughs> Gino. Uh, least favorite. Gen 4 Fire Type Elite 4 member. Well, there aren't any Fire Type Elite 4 members in Gen 4. Uh, there's this guy with, like, a low punny and a Steelix. And he's got two Fire Types, but, like, you know, he's not, like, a Fire Type guy. He has a couple Fire Type Pokemon. Two out of five does not make you a Fire Type expert. Lance, with your, with your two dragons, calling yourself a dragon expert. All right, I gotta fix these cables a bit and adjust myself here. I hate to break it to you, Dazzling Shell, but I did not play Monster Hunter Stories yet. So that one, that question is lost on me. Rathalos. The answer is Rathalos. Yeah, fair enough. Now, ch chances are there is something um, uh, regarding Rathalos. Rathalos, I think, is like the guy in that game. I think he's like your partner. I think he's, like, your first partner. Yeah. I know, like, some other monsters uh, become your partners. I know there's something with Zenogre. All right, so you said we need dynamite somewhere in here. Yeah, it is the third shard in this level. Got it. So hopefully we can find a bomb ability somewhere in here. Yeah. Um, the first one's going to be high up in one of the rooms. Then there's a minecart stage. And then finally... Oh, yeah, I remember this level now. Yeah, give me a second to just adjust this here. Yeah, we're using a uh, cable splitter, but it's a little bit janky. Uh, Magus Andrus asked me, uh, were you surprised about the amount of lore that was put into Power Wash Simulator? Yeah, you've been playing that game, haven't you? Yeah, I beat that game recently, at, as did Magus Andrus. Um, I had a feeling they were going to do something silly like that in the game. I just, like, from the first, like, bit of, like, story bit, I was like, oh, they're going to do something they're gonna do something silly with the lore in this so i can't say i was surprised but i do commend them for the effort okay so there should be a shard here right yeah somewhere there should be a jump or something up ah uh do you want to restart the level i have a good way to do that actually I think. Oh, death. <laughs> of course. Yeah, unfortunately, the only way to take hits here is... Ah! Nope. NG, no good. Well, worth a shot. Thankfully, it's, like, so early in the stage that it's not a problem to just restart. Yeah. And I already got that first crystal shard, so we're good there. Um, uh, Adam Zeke, Zeke um, asked, wait, what lore does Power Wash Simulator have? <laughs> there is a whole story going on in the background with... Um, because every time you get a new job, people are texting you during your jobs. There's descriptions. There's, like, hidden details in some of the levels. Would you um, say it's like Dark Souls? <laughs> no. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> there we go. Got it. Um, it involves aliens, time travel, and missing cats. What? Yes. In Power Wash Simulator, which it, which is a fun game. I mean, Power Wash Simulator, you, you pretty much like it, it. Pretty much says exactly what it says on the. It does exactly what it says on the tin. It's what so. a Yahtzee Croshaw would call a post dad game, which is it's like actually a chore, but like you can just kind of relax and do it. Um, uh, Joe is asking, um, which is the worst Pokemon region? Not generation, the region itself. Uh, hmm. I'm tempted to say Kalos. I'm kind of tempted to say Kalos, too, to be honest. Kalos, I have the most amount of trouble, like, remembering any of the places there outside of... Outside of Lumio City. Yeah. Like, there's a snowy area, there's an autumnal area... You see on the map, there's the Pokeball Factory. I remember seeing that and being like, oh, that, that sounds neat. I wonder what that's going to be. It's boring. It's just this, like, short, dumb thing. Is it a bad region? No, not really, but... It is kind of, It is a bit of a nothing burger. It doesn't really have anything going for itself other than Lumio City. Yeah, pretty much. Say comic... Thoughts on returning to Sinnoh and Unova anytime soon? Um, well, we did return to Sinnoh recently. Yeah. Uh, um, probably not Unova? anytime soon. I, I gotta be honest, I've completely lost interest in doing the post game for for Brilliant Diamond. I, I'm going to admit, yeah, me too. Like, we kind of just move on to other projects at this point. Yeah, and like, if I don't want to do it, it's not gonna be exciting, I'm sorry to say. Yeah. Um,. There is another Nuzlocke on my channel that I did with Pad of a Pokemon Black version. I do remember that. Um, and I can't say I'm super motivated to figure the emulator out to do Black 2 again. So, okay, I gotta be... My madre. If I were to do another Nuzlocke, it would be pretty much any regions but those two. Um, If we were to do another Nuzlocke, what would it be? I'm kind of interested to do, like, one of the more recent ones, like Sword and Shield or Scarlet and Violet as a Nuzlocke. You know what would be cool? Yeah. If we did Arceus. Yeah, I'm I'm not sure how that would even work, but... I'm not entirely sure either. I just thought it would be cool. Yeah. We, we could come up with a rule set for that. Okay. We might be, uh... We might be, uh, SOL on, uh, the, uh, Dynamite gear. I think we gotta get the whole package from outside the level. Yeah, because I believe it's right there. Yeah. I'll finish the level, and uh, we can go grab um, dynamite somewhere. Um, somebody talking about Hoenn. What's, what's wrong with Hoenn? I, I don't think there's anything wrong with Hoenn. Hoenn's probably my favorite region. Um, I, I like Hoenn so much that I actually wasn't that into... Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire because I just love the original Ruby and Sapphire so much. Mm -hmm. There's nothing... Although I will say, like, Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire did a good job. Yeah, they did do a good job. They're good games. Um, I'm just, like, kind of a purist with that one, I guess. Fair enough. Though if I were to Nuzlocke it, I'd do the most recent version, probably. Yeah. I think it's just that I like the pixelated graphics of that game so much more. Do a Nuzlocke on Dream Drop Distance. <laughs> I like the concept. I like the concept for that. <laughs> I've seen somebody do a Nuzlocke of uh, World of Light in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. I thought that was oh, pretty yeah, cool. Oh, yeah. Um, Alpha Rad. Yeah. Oh, that guy's dead. Um, describe examples of pandering in good way and a bad way. Um, The best way I can describe that, honestly, is like... Pandering in a bad way is if you're doing it just to just to do it just to check off a mark on a on a list. Um, pandering in a good way is if you actually make it work in in like in universe and in narrative. Yeah, I think pandering has like is like has a negative connotation for it, but I don't think you know that's just kind of like aiming for a certain audience. Um, I believe you can get it here. 
Yeah, I, like like we said, we need stone and bomb, right? Yeah. Yeah, both of which are really early in this stage. I think pandering is a very subjective thing. I think it exists more in the mind of the person consuming the art than the person writing it. I agree. Something is pandering if you think something is pandering. And, and it's one of those, like, situations where it's like... Um, yes, you can call it pandering, but is it pandering in a way that, like, makes sense and actually, like, is done in a positive manner? Then why should it be a bad thing, you know? Um, I would argue the di uh, Joe says, I would argue the difference between good and bad pandering is, is it respectful and earnest or condescending, manipulative, and lazy? I think that's absolutely true, Joe. Uh, I agree. The tough part is that it's hard to prove the intent of the artist a lot of times, and I think what can happen in a lot of discussions of this is people make assumptions about the intent of the artist of whether or not they like actually care like oh bullshit you saw that anyway go ahead like let me take the owl house i'm gonna take a show i like yeah um and there are people who would say the owl house is pandering to the lgbt crowd um making sure it has a non-binary character and uh-huh um Characters who are lesbians and characters who are gay men, da, 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 and would call that. Oh, they're they're just pandering to get like a gay audience. Like, I think that's a very bad faith reading of it because if you know much about the creator Dana Terrence, she is very much vocally and publicly somebody who cares about LGBT issues. I find yes. it very unlikely that she included any of these characters. Um identities just to tick a box. I think these were things she wanted the characters to have. Uh -huh. Therefore, it's not pandering, it's the intent of the artist. It wasn't made for the audience, it was made for the artist. Um, if I may also uh, jump into that conversation with one example that I personally love, Guilty Gear. Like, like yeah, there was that whole like thing going on uh, with uh, Guilty Gear's roster that made a lot of people angry for some reason. Just gonna say right now, the people who are angry don't know what the heck they're talking about. Um, those of you who know, you know, like, Bridget. Like, everyone got kind of got, a, like, a little bit up in arms with Bridget, but, um, Bridget, I think they handled her character extremely well in Guilty Gear. Is it taking, like, is it pandering? Maybe. But is it, like, a bad way to go about it? No! Um, I think they, I think, uh, they, I think they handled Bridget's character, like, extremely well. In a similar vein, um, one that didn't necessarily, um, uh, make as big of a splash as Bridget did, but I think is no less important, is Testament. Um, Testament was, uh, explicitly meant to be a non-binary character, and I think they handled Testament extremely well in, uh, Guilty Gear Strive. I think, kind of, the situation has changed a little bit with how Bridget defines themself. Mm -hmm. Like, earlier on, it was that Bridget was a male dressing and presenting as a female because she was, like, in hiding. She was hiding her identity. Yes. But then in one of the more recent games, they decided that she is a trans woman. She has embraced a female identity as her yep. self-identity which I guess people disagree with that characterization of. And it's like, why are you disagreeing with what a character feels? You know? Yeah. And besides, um, Har Harada, I believe... No, it wasn't Harada, um, but the creator of Guilty Gear... Someone remind me in the comments who it was, and gosh darn it! Mmm, meat. Um, like, the creator, like, intended for this to be the case with, uh, Bridget. Um, and who are we to, like, who are we to argue with the creator, like, the artist's intent, you know? Uh, Daisuke, thank you. Um, from what I'm to understand, Daisuke intended for this. And I also, like, find it, like, amusing. Uh, this is just me personally, right? I, al I also find it amusing that the character in Guilty Gear, who not only supported Bridget in her journey, but also encouraged her to move forward with it, is fucking Gold Lewis Dickinson. And that's just, um, that's both amusing, charming, and absolutely hilarious to me. And I love it. Uh, Tanuki Player makes a neat case here. She says, um, I can understand why some people were upset about Bridget. Like, Bridget was a cool icon for femme men, and when they became a trans girl, those more femme men audience lost that. Okay, I, I can actually kind of see that. Yeah, I can see that ups I, I can see that upset at the loss and that, like, not being your thing. Though also, I think 
maybe you need to accept though that like you don't get to decide what the creator does for the I agree. I mean if if Daisuke um Ish Ishiwatari. Ishiwatari if Ishiwatari wanted to do that, but then didn't so that they could keep it for people wanting that um femme man archetype, then that would technically be pandering to those men. Yep. And it could potentially come off as disingenuous. Yeah. And like that's not necessarily um what we uh that's not necessarily what we want. Um and for those who like do have do want to find that character um to like kind of like you know represent in a, uh for a lack of a better term plenty of those like already out there look at leo from tekken leo from tekken is a great example of that i do think we need characters who are like also male but challenge what the male norms are and i think we need characters who are female but challenge what the female norms are and i think we need characters who are trans to represent trans people i think all of these are important things to represent in our media i agree i agree and again like that the, at the end of the day like it is a very very complicated like uh, discussion to have. Is it an important discussion? Absolutely. We should have these discussions. We should have these conversations. Um, the thing, though, at the end of the day, that I feel needs to be practiced throughout the entire conversation is just a, it's just a modicum of respect. Like, the rep like representation is important. Like, uh, and like, is it pandering? Is it not pandering? That's ultimately up to your interpretation. But not all of it is bad. You know? It really comes down to intent. And I personally am totally down for, like, representation and, like, what these characters bring to the table. Because, just gonna say right now, um, Luce and um, Amity from the Owl House, fantastic characters. I think they're amazing. Um, I think uh, Bridget is an amazing character in Guilty Gear. I think Leo from Tekken is an amazing character. Again, I think a lot of it just, just like, I, th I think a lot of it also has to do with, like, are these characters also just great characters in and of themselves? You know? Um, another good example showing up in the comments, um, Kanji from Persona 4. Great, Absolutely. Great example of a male character who likes traditionally girly things. And that is one where I think it's, people like to argue whether or not he's actually intended to be gay or intended to be bi, um, stuff like that. And I see the value in having both that it would be great to normalize gay characters and bi characters but it would also be nice to normalize just liking sewing and you know separate having these interests that are traditionally considered more feminine from what your actual sexuality is. absolutely because those absolutely. two things have nothing to do with each other yes yes and yeah like I, i'm going i'm going to be the first to admit that persona 4 has a bit of an issue with its writing and a lot of it has to do with the time of like the era in which it was written i'm just gonna say that right now um oswald or hortensia isn't nauto not meant to be trans in the same vein um i th if i had to guess and i'm not in the writer's head i think nauto from persona 4 wasn't intended as a trans character um i don't really like how that allegory goes i think that's a very dated allegory that can kind of be construed in some harmful way. I think yeah. you could take some dangerous messages from that because I I personally, my interpretation of it is that the way you do Naoto's story um, she, I'll, I'll say she because those are the pronouns she uses throughout yeah. the game so that's what I'm going to call her um, but she thinks a lot about being a man her job would be easier if she was a man da, da, da. you get to the end of her mind palace and it's like a lab table with like where they're going to do surgery and it's like drills and stuff and like obviously going to be some invasive surgery and then her shadow self is like a horrible like monstrous cyborg that like her body has been messed with like there's an allegory going here yeah and the story that the resolution Nato comes up with is i'm happy with myself i'm happy with and i am a woman and i can do what i want to do and still be a woman and that's great and i like myself this way that's not a bad conclusion to come to i just am afraid of that rhetoric being used to say like see why do people have to be trans why can't you just do what you want to do and like i think that oversimplifies mm -hmm. that argument oh it absolutely does and that's the thing like that's not the message at least like from my own interpretation i'm not going to tell anyone to interpret one way or the other mind you but like my interpretation of nato's character is less about like gender identity quote unquote like it, it sort of is 
but it, it's more along the fact it, it's more like uh, the lesson of being comfortable in your own skin like you know and being comfortable in like what you yourself come uh, the conclusion that you yourself come to whether that conclusion is uh accepting as you are or accepting that you are not what society identifies you as you know um and again persona 4 has a bit of a writing problem and again, that that kind of comes with the times, but and it also does... comes with the country because yeah, yeah, this isn't absolutely. even calling Japan behind. Other countries have other nomenclature and other ways at looking at gender identity, which like you know progress is being made, but we still have a long way to go. Yeah, I wouldn't say Japan is like less inclusive of LGBT people. I'd say it's different. Than, yeah. than the U.S. Yeah, and and that's a thing, and that's a thing too. That also does not stop Naoto and Kanji from being good characters. They are still well written. They are still very interesting. We still love these characters for a reason. And I think that's like, I, I think that's an important part of it as well is um, whether pandering is bad or good, does it stop these characters from being like lovable? Like at the end. Like if you're just marking off a checkbox and like, it, and don't take the time. To make the character interesting, that's when that like that's gonna that's gonna become a problem, you know. Take the time to actually write your character and make it make sense. A at, at least that's how I personally see it. Yeah. Well, I love getting into these conversations. I'm Kirby sixty four, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta save those crystal shards. Uh, Kirby, per Kirby be gay? Truth come out? <laughs> no, 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 no. Does Kirby is gay? <laughs> I, I think we need drill in this level. Oh, sorry. Let me check the guy. Does Kirby is gay? <laughs> sorry, I, I do get carried away in these kinds of conversations just because I think it is a very interesting and very important conversation. That, that's the thing, though. Like, I respect the fact that you consider it important. And, like, again, these are important conversations to have. They're not always the easiest conversations to have, but it is important. I don't think you need any particular ability in this one. All right. Sounds good. Um, when is pandering okay in your eyes, Joe asks, and how much is too far? Again, like, I don't know if I could draw a specific line. I don't know if I could make a rule for it, but it's like, I don't know what it is, but I know what I like. I'll, I'll, I'll give, I'll give, like, an example of, like, a time where I was like, this is pandering. Yeah. Um, so, Avengers Infinity War has this kind of neat moment when they're doing the Battle of Wakanda, where... Um, it's uh, Proxima Midnight in the one tr trench versus, um, I think, uh, yeah, against Natasha Romanoff, and then Okoye also shows up, and there's, yeah. like, a little moment of, like, she won't have to fight alone, we're here too, when they and Wanda all fight together. We did need drill! Oh, okay, or well, we needed some kind of needle. Alright, my bad. Nah, that's cool. I got it. Um... And that was a neat little moment. Then in Avengers Endgame, they kind of have a sequel to that moment. And that's the big, like, yes. during the final battle where every female character suddenly shows up around mm -hmm. Spider-Man. And it's just, like, such a big moment. And in a way, it's kind of neat to see, like, oh, wow, we do have a lot of, like, female heroes in the MCU. But, like, just the way the battle is going, I don't know why suddenly all of the women ended up on one side of the field and... Did you check that uh, drop there, actually? Okay, sorry. Okay, no, thank you for reminding it's me. In, I think it's that... in something like that, though. Yeah, good to know, good to know. That's a moment that, to me, felt very, like, disingenuous and felt like it was, like, just trying to collect brownie points. Um, for, like, one example that I can think of... Actually, I'll give, I'll give you two. Um, two examples for me where that was the case, where I felt like it was pandering and, like, not really a good way to, like, present it overwatch um specifically soldier 76 that one felt like pandering because there was like yeah okay i get it like he used to have a boyfriend okay cool it felt like a complete nothing burger and it felt like they were just trying to check out the box that that was one example it wasn't like tracer where like oh hey like um they they uh they uh presented the uh, tracer as gay right and that kind of like made a splash like with a lot of like uh the audience as well but the way it was presented 
was fine. They made it a part of a comic where, oh, hey, this happened to be the case. It was part of a Christmas comic, right? It was very kind of nonchalantly showed that she had a girlfriend. And I and I kind of like the fact that, like, it was nonchalant. It's like, oh, hey, okay, Tracer has a girlfriend. Cool. And they treated it like it was, like, you know, nothing special. But the way they tried, they wait. The way they tried to do it with Soldier Seventy Six felt actually disingenuous. Oh, you can stop checking those because I realize this moment is going to be after another crystal shard. So it thank won't you. Be, it won't be up for a little while. All right, good to know. Thank you. Um, another example, kind of in a similar vein, was um Voltron. Um, the new uh, series of Voltron. I didn't get to the, the end of that series. I didn't get to the finale. Um, honestly, the finale just felt rushed like super rushed and they like did this thing with shiro oh oh i remember this yeah so you might want to drop drill because yeah you're gonna need to carve here so we need to make a hat uh-oh i don't know exactly how big the hat needs to be i'd start by taking two off of each side or maybe just one, yeah. But yeah, the, the finale to uh, Voltron just didn't do it for me. Like, that that one felt like pandering uh, with, like, what they were doing with Shiro. It's crazy to me to see people accuse Disney of, like, pandering or having a gay agenda. Because, frankly, Disney <laughs> isn't cool enough to have a secret gay agenda. Like, honestly, though. <laughs> Okay, so somewhere around here, there's going to be, like, a drop that has a hidden. Got it. Thank you. Um, like, back in, like, I think one of their first, quote-unquote, exclusively gay moments, as they came to be known, where there's, like, just, like, a little, like, blink and you miss it, like, same-sex couple somewhere, um, is in Frozen, when you meet that, the... That's the, right! The hoo-hoo <laughs> guy um the the merchant and he mentions there being a hot spring and at one point you can see into the like hot spring room yeah and there's a bunch of kids and another man implying that that's his husband and other kids right and i don't like that because it's freaking cowardly <laughs> <laughs> oh you're trying to like get gay brownie points and like you're barely showing him for a fraction of a second yep get out of here with that two boys sitting in a hot tub papi de puck cause not gay <laughs> <laughs> like, one of them wasn't even in the hot tub. <laughs> there we go, got it. Cowards. <laughs> and then Oh yeah, this weird-ass power. But most of the time with the, like, is XYZ pandering, I tend to be on the side of it's not. But I guess every... Technically, every situation is different. Uh-huh. And again, like... At the end of the day, like, make your own conclusions. Like, uh, go about it as you were. Um, at the end of the day, the best thing I can say in reaction to that conversation is use your better judgment. Use common sense. Like, that. that's really, like, the long and short of it. Try and be used to seeing people who are different than you in media. Uh-huh. And understand, and th this is a bit of a pessimistic take on my end, but I'm just going to say it right now. No matter what it is, someone out there is going to be mad about it. That's just something you also have to accept. Someone out there is going to be offended by whatever is, like, whatever is, like, on there. Like, people can people can get offended by the most inoffensive thing possible. Someone out there is offended about it. That's just how it is. But at the end of the day, you go about it how you feel. Just at the end of the day, be respectful about it. And that includes, if you don't like something, but someone else does, don't give them black for it. You know? Yeah. Seriously. That, 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 that's, all, that's all you really need to do. I am, like, keeping track of, like, the chat a little bit. <laughs> Just in case anyone did any other redemptions or donations or, like, uh, subscriptions yeah, or whatever. Um, we have the... Uh, we have the uh, feel free to remind us if there is a redemption or something that we missed. Uh, worst Persona Hot Sprints... <laughs> I mean, I don't remember five being that. Five's wasn't bad. that bad. It was very brief. I guess I would pick four. I'd probably pick four. Which isn't even the worst hot springs scene I've seen in any anime. Oh no, absolutely. But not. I hate that trope. 
Um, Persona 3's actually is kind of funny. Because, like, the guys are actually trying to avoid um, being seen uh, by the girls. And again, like, it's a scenario where, like, you know, nobody wins there. But um, that one is at least not that bad. Honestly, I think Persona 4's is the most offensive. <laughs> Especially because, like, if you go into... Um, I if, think if, if I you think go in into Persona like before they're not even trying to peep. They, it's a misunderstanding of when is their turn for the hot spring. That one is. So they like show up and then they're like, "Oh no, the girls are here." Yeah, that one is. But then you get the golden seat, and they are actually trying to peep. Oh yeah. Yeah, there's a um, there's a My Hero Academia scene that's the classic hot spring, and one of the guys are trying is trying to see over the wall. Yep. And he gets beat up, and it... It's the kind of thing that annoys me, because... I think it's very voyeuristic, and it's very for the audience, that, like, whenever Mineta is, like, perving out about the girls, you get to see his fantasy of what the girls must look like, wearing yeah. X, Y, and Z, and then he tries to see, and then he gets beat up, because... It's like the show being like moralistic and saying, shame on you, Mineta, for being pervy, but it still shows it to the audience and you don't get hit. There's not a hammer that comes out of the TV and punishes you. Shockingly enough, I think one series that actually does it not that terribly is uh, the Tales of series. Like there's usually a hot spring scene in like, or a hot springs event in the Tales of series, but it's usually like, it usually leads to something at the very least, and it's they're not still like eye rolly to me. Like they're maybe not some of them are, yeah, as bad for the women involved, but it's still like Lloyd. Were you peeping at the girls? No, 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 no. This was a m -m -m misunderstanding. Yeah, and yeah. then you get the peeping Tom title for well, whatever, man. It's, grow up. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest with you, Wave Runner. Xenoblade 2's hot spring scene. I also am not the biggest fan of either. It just feels tacked on. Like I'm gonna be real with you. Uh, Dazzling Shell, uh, which is harder, Soul Melter EX, True Arena, or Return to Dreamland DX? Probably the True Arena. Like, so Soul Melter's hard, don't get me wrong, it is balls hard. You can kind of cheese it, though. Yeah, That's I, th the thing. I, I think there are builds that make Soul Melter a lot more manageable. Absolutely. Same thing with Return to Dreamland DX. True Arena, though. It, it's hard to cheese True Arena. Like, that, that one's tough, man. Soul Melter, you can, like, bring somebody who has the artist skill and have them heal and... Yeah. Yeah, and most of the time for me personally, I usually cheese the true arena with stone. But again, like it's not as easy to do in um in um in true arena in uh, Kirby Superstar. Um I think in this next one you're going to need um ice needle at some point. Really? Yeah. What's Ice Needle again? Um, it's a, um, it's a, uh, Snowflake. Oh, yeah, that's right. Okay. Uh, whew. Isn't this the volcano? Yeah. There's no way there's a double ice here. Probably not. Okay, where can I go to get double ice? Um, I go back to the second level of the first world a lot because it has almost everything towards the beginning of it. No, you know what? I, I remember there's ice in this level. Okay. Let's try this one. Uh, the worst thing about Persona 4, the hot spring scene, isn't even the worst scene. That's the beauty pageant for me. Oh, yeah. I agree. The beauty pageant scene in Persona 4 is very upsetting to me. Yeah, that that one's just... That, that one's just, like... That's a reach. I mean, call me a hater. I really love Persona 4, but part of me loving something is... Judging. Is judging its flaws. Oh, absolutely. That, that's how I love things in media. Like, if, if you love something, you gotta be willing to criticize the hell out of it. At least when it's, like, shows and video games and stuff, not with people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> don't don't oh. criticize the hell out of your loved ones. Oh, dude, like, w Wombo playing through Persona 4 Golden. Holy crap, that was a trip. Oh, sorry, what'd you say, Joe? Um, MHA makes me angry because they bash on Mineta for being a perv while having fan service of 15-year-old characters each. Exactly. What, what, he, what he was exactly saying just Joe. now, yeah. That is... That, that is a prevalent problem in anime in general, I think. Yeah. Also, the, like, the love triangle stuff in MHA... 
My Hero Academia has been really disappointing me lately. Um, and kind of the being a love interest has absorbed Uraraka's character. Uraraka was a really cool character, and now she kind of just is the girl who likes um, Deku. Yeah, I, I kind of agree. Like, I, I, I kind of lost interest in uh, My Hero after... What? When was the last? When was the last time I uh, watched My Hero? I think it was during the gentleman, um, uh, oh, gentle, gentle criminal. criminal arc. Yeah. After that, I kind of just lost interest. Uh, the 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 war arc was a lot of sound and fury, signifying nothing to me. Okay, maybe there isn't. There's a lot of cool moments in it, but yeah, I'll, I'll check here. Yeah, we're looking for ice and needle. Oh, you know what? I had needle. I'm an idiot. Oscar in comics ever played HOTD Overkill and did you like it? Oh, House of the Dead Overkill. That game is a trip and a half. I don't think I ever actually played it. Um, oh, thank you. Uh, Amber brought us pizza. Um, we're nice. probably ready for the next drink, by the way, if we want to go there. Okay. Right. I am still on the, uh... I'll give this glass back to her when she goes back. Okay, so ice and needle, you said, right? Yeah, let me let me grab this copy ability and then we can move on to the next um bit. And then Comic and I are probably gonna have a quick lunch. Yeah. Um I think a break. Uh, oh, okay, in this tree. I know there's ice in this tree. Uh to be Oh, there's needle. To be fair, that's not just MHA thing. Whenever I see a love interest, I start a countdown to how long until you become not anything but a love interest. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit. And I think that happens a lot in shonen anime especially. Oh, absolutely. Shockingly enough, the one anime where it doesn't happen is Dragon Ball Z. Not that Dragon Ball Z necessarily is all too... That's not like a bastion of great female characters. Mm -hmm. There's some in there, but... Yeah. I will say, though, um, we were talking about it earlier, right? Kudos to Krillin in 18. Like, 18 does become, like, Krillin's love interest, but she still manages to remain a badass. Yeah, there may be one of the healthier relationships in that show. <laughs> one of the healthiest... Like, have you seen Goku and Chi-Chi? And don't get me started with the mess that is Bulma and Vegeta. Goku and Chi-Chi just want different things. <laughs> Basically, yeah. Hmm. Goku wants to fight and eat food. Chi-Chi wants children. Goku likes having children because he can teach them to fight. Oh, Naruto gets to hit the hardest. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. What's... Especially disappointing about MHA over Naruto to me is that I feel like Uraraka had a really strong start with her mm -hmm. own character motivations and stuff like that, and then it dropped over time as, like, the writing spent less and less time on her. Like, dude, straight up, the tournament arc? One, her battle against, um, de uh, against, um... Uh, Bakugo. Bakugo? Fantastic! That's a great fight. That was an awesome fight! And it's a great character moment, too, where, like, the crowd's, like, yelling at Bakugo for, like, going so hard on her, and he's, like... He's like, everybody show up. Uh, everybody shut up. I'm respecting her talent. Like, actually, like, yeah, I like the fact that Bakugo was like, that girl is not weak. Yeah. Like. Why don't you go easy on her? Because she's a threat. Yeah. Because <laughs> like, she's strong. As, I will as, not go easy on her. As soon as Uraraka, like, revealed her strategy by using the debris of the field, that was like a, oh, crap moment for Bakugo. Because, like, that, that's a thing. That's a, that's one of the cool things I like about Bakugo. And another example of a character who's a dick, but we like him. Yeah. Is that from the start, he did not think about holding back. Like, he was like, no, I don't care who my opponent is. I'm going all out no matter what. The, the trick with Bakugo is that he's actually a very emotionally intelligent and considerate character. He just never s says it out loud to people mm -hmm. ever. But the more you talk to him, the more he, like, actually is more aware of his surroundings than I, you think he is. I actually kind of dig the reason why he's angry all the time. Is because uh, of, like, that emotion allows him to be able to keep his, like, power in check. I, I like that explanation of it, yeah. That he, he's got nitroglycerin in his blood. <laughs> he's an angry dude. Like, Ooh. So, here we have... We have our next drink. Hey, oh, th look at this. Okay, so what do we have here? So this is the Starred Hammer, otherwise known as King DDD. Ah, King DDD, his weapon. It is so DDD colored. The Starred Hammer. <laughs> so, what do we got here? So this is with um, half an ounce of blue curacao, um, one ounce of ginger liqueur, half an ounce of lime juice, um, 
muddled mango slices and a star fruit and mint garnish with cream of coconut. Oh. Huh. Interesting. Okay. Definitely not as big as the Kirby one, but let's see. So, the starred hammer, everybody. I really like the color on it. Thank you. Wow, that is flavorful. You're having some big emotions there. Oh, my God. This is my personal favorite, too. Mm. Oh, my God. The flavor is so forward. That is... That is sweet. That is like rich. Yeah, let me let me try get this, dude. That is fantastic. Oh wow, wow, that is really good. You can really taste the penguin. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, like definitely coconut notes. The ginger is the ginger liqueur is like really, really doing. That's something so smooth. Here. Like that. It, that is like very smooth, very sweet, very flavorful. It's not too sweet though. This would be an amazing beach drink. Yes. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Like, it feels like a good dessert drink. Like a des like. Yeah, it's enjoy very a sweet. nice dessert on the beach after like some barbecue. Absolutely. This is what King DDD drinks on like his little Arctic beach. Can <laughs> drink the <laughs> drink the penguin, taste the penguin. <laughs> <laughs> Probably the best way to get hammered. <laughs> <laughs> Oscar, can you do a good uh, DDD impression? Let me tell you right now, this here drink right here tastes really, really good. <laughs> that was terrible. That was terrible. This is what I drink when I'm going to celebrate my, my victory against that there Kirby. <laughs> There's a hype train incoming. What does that mean? It means um, we got we're getting a lot of like bits and like subscriptions okay. and like contributions coming in. Nice. But thank you for the bits, dude. Thank you, Austin. Thank you, Wave Runner. Stop. Hammer time. <clears throat> Got a drink for hammer time. Why does DDD sound like Foghorn Leghorn? <clears throat> now I say, now I say, listen here, boy. <laughs> We gotta enjoy this here drink that the lovely wife has prepared. Pay attention, boy. <laughs> we gotta enjoy this drink. Nice and smooth and easy. It's very rich. It's very sweet. And I, took, and I said pay attention, boy. And I'm like, it's like a death or something. <laughs> I'm just like the Waddle Dee, just like staring blankly at you. <laughs> <laughs> oh my Would this God. be the drink to Dead or Destroy you? DDD -D Destroy. DDD -D Destroy. <laughs> The, the, the voice and text kind of ruined your pun there, but feel, that's a good one. I feel like being DD destructive. Well, that was DD delicious, Amber. Mm, no, that that, 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 that is that is wonderful. This like is, absolutely wonderful. This is like one of my favorites of the drinks I've made so far. It, like, dude, I, I like this is up there with the magma worm as one of my favorites so really? far. Really? Like, okay, the magma worm is really good because that's a really nice spiced drink for me. This is my choice for a sweet one like okay. this is fantastic um like some of the some of the drinks i've like loved over the series of doing these um the magma worm is definitely up there as one of my favorites the fiddlesticks definitely up there mm. um the um what was edelgard's called oh uh, it was like the it was the something flower the crimson flower crimson flower crimson flower is definitely up there as well this up there is one of the best drinks you've made so far. Thank you. Out of all two of your drinks I've had on this stream, that one is the best. <laughs> well, there's more coming coming later. I look forward to it. Uh, drink, uh, recipes to my drinks I will be posting on my Twitter as well as Oscar's Patreon. Uh, yep, and uh, look forward to a uh, highlights video later on the channel where... Uh, uh, my uh, lovely friend Pinka Lily is going to be editing um, the uh, drink uh, highlights for this. So nice. Look forward to that. Now I say, now hand over that deep <laughs> that starred hammer, boy. I want to enjoy this a little more. Now stop ignoring me, boy. Whoever mentioned Foghorn Leghorn, you got me stuck in that mindset now. That is kind of the voice he's doing in Right Back at You. It, it kind of a is. A little bit. It kind of is. 
Now listen here, Race Car Goon. We this gotta go good. and we gotta go and contact Nightmare Enterprises so we can order another. Now pay attention, Race Car Goon. We gotta order another monster because we need to defeat that there Kirby because that Kirby is making me. I said stop ignoring me, Race Car Goon. Oh that, my lord, DDD, I'm that sorry. Kirby, that Kirby is making me making me look bad, and I can't have that as the king of Dreamland. You understand me, boy? Oh my God. <laughs> Escar Goon's voice was something like that. It was kind of ah no. no he, 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 uh, right. The, the to one line of... I remember from Escar Goon is when he like threw like uh, threw a salt and pepper shaker at King Dedede, and he was like assault with pepper. <laughs> got to got to try harder than that, Escar. Uh... And that's very dangerous for him because he's a snail. He shouldn't be handling handling salt like that. I'm also enjoying the mango. Dude. Oh my god. Something more to this drink. The bits of mango in there. The drink seeps into it. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that is delicious, man. Oh man, I'm gonna enjoy this one. <laughs> you can take this back, by the way, honey. Sounds good. Thank you so much. <laughs> Kirby has been devoured. <laughs> I will see you guys in another hour. You got it. Bye. Kirby has been devoured. That's ironic. <laughs> Isn't Kirby usually the one yeah, doing the usually. devouring? Um, you gotta activate the super chat on YouTube. I do. I just haven't had much of an opportunity to do so. Mm. Man, that's good. What's Thank you guys so much for the hype train, guys. Seriously. <clears throat> What's anything fictional you wish was real? Superpowers, monsters, etc. Anything. Magic. Although, that could also be a potential for disaster. Because, like, magic... Like, putting magic in a real-world setting like this, that's just going to, like, create a complete upheaval of society. Um... Oh, no, you know what? Maybe, like, some mythical creatures. Like, I wouldn't mind, like, certain... Like, I wouldn't mind, like... I wouldn't mind Pokemon. <laughs> I'd take some Pokemon. Just so, just so long as, like, Kyogre and Groudon don't get into a war again. Yeah. I think, all in all, Pokemon would be the best fictional world to live in. Because if you think about it, if you live in, like, the DC or the Marvel Universe, you live in the DBZ Universe, like, terrible stuff is going on all the time. The world is in complete peril all the time. Yeah. Um, Sometimes there are, like major cataclysms in Pokemon, but for the most part, like, some kid takes care of it. Um. Because you gotta think, like, just because you lived in, like, the Harry Potter universe wouldn't mean that you're a wizard. Just because you lived in the X-Men universe wouldn't mean that you're a mutant. Oh my god, Josh and Nightfury. Someone in the chat called Meta Knight Inigo Montoya in anime form! <laughs> they give him that kind of voice in, in the anime. Mm-hmm. You must come with me. We must head into Wispy Woods because Kirby must fulfill his destiny. <laughs> Yo soy... Me llamo Meta Knight. Yo soy el héroe del... De la... Del mundo de sueños. Dreamland. <laughs> Boyo! Oh, uh, you keep saying that word. I do not think it means what you think it means. <laughs> Blade Charge, happy birthday, you beautiful man. No homo. No, thank you. Normalize, <clears throat> normalize calling men beautiful. Normalize saying I love you to your homies. So yes, homie. <laughs> Who voiced Meta Knight in the anime? I don't know actually. The 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 Kirby anime was weird. All right, Lost Mouse, thank you for hopping in, man. I think the guy who voiced Brock in Pokemon voiced no him. No way. Is that true? Really? That's also the person who voiced uh, Seto Kaiba. Brock and Seto Kaiba were the same guy. I'm gonna, I'm gonna look at this. Uh, someone saying Eric Stewart. Eric Stewart was Meta Knight. Let me, let me look this up. <clears throat> the funniest one to me and right back at you was Rick the Hamster was in a few episodes and he had an Australian accent. Crikey! Oi, Kirby! Uh, Eric Stewart. 
uh, did voice Meta Knight, and he also voiced Brock and Seto Kaiba. Yeah, it was Eric Stewart. Huh. Go figure. Kirby, you will never collect the three blue eyes white dragons needed to form the ultimate dragon. <laughs> Dude. That's silly. As absolutely batshit silly as Seto Kaiba was, I love how ham he is. And a lot of it has to do with his voice, both English and Japanese. I just think the concept of Kaiba is so funny, where you take somebody with the craziest ego ever and you give him so much money. Yep. And all he wants to do with it is card games. One of my favorite moments <clears throat> came from uh, the... Uh, uh, oh, from... posture check. Ah, oh, thank you. <clears throat> One of my favorite moments was from the different dimen uh, Dark Side Dimensions movie. Where, like, at this point, like, Pharaoh has moved on to the afterlife. Mm -hmm. And Kaiba is, like, so upset about it because he never got a chance to, like, full like defeat the Pharaoh. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. I just... <laughs> I'll, turn I'll turn my trusting my frying, frying pan. pan. Into, into a dragon, dragon pattern. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, like, one of my favorite moments was, like, in the movie, Kaiba is, like, simulating Pharaoh's deck, and he keeps losing. And he's commenting to, like, his, like, subordinates about, like, why he's doing this. And he's like, as long as the Pharaoh is gone and I have, will, and I've never had the chance to defeat him, the scars of my defeat will continue to burn. He crushes a bottle and tosses it aside, like, in a very dramatic way. And then afterwards, he's like, Fire whoever designed that bottle. Kaiba Corp's products shouldn't crush that easily. <laughs> like, okay, Kaiba. <laughs> Kaiba is a guy who will stand at the edge of a cliff so that if you attack his last monster, he will fall to his death. And he will put his life in the balance so you feel too bad to attack. Granted, that wasn't for his pride. That was for his little brother. Mm -hmm. But it's very extra. Um, Absolutely. Somebody asked, um, oh my fucking god, asked, um, what's the most unnecessary Kanan character death? Have you ever watched The Walking Dead? Because yeah. that's a great show for unnecessary character deaths. Oh yeah, absolutely. What's the worst moral choice in gaming? Like, it's barely even a choice that it's lopsided. I just got the one at the end of uh, the DLC for CrossCode that I thought was pretty, like... Come on. Like, I get what you're saying, but, like, come on. Who would pick the second choice here? Yep. Um, I don't want to give it away because it's a spoiler, but... Like, interestingly enough, my immediate thought was Infamous, but, like, Infamous 2 actually has a great... Um, it's um, interesting. That's an interesting one. I'd say Infamous Second Son is the obvious... Yeah, no, don't do that. Because, like, the, the evil, the evil uh, choice in Infamous Second Son is just really selfish I'm <coughs> excuse me I'm playing through a uh, Lisa the painful right now yeah and that game is just a generator of impossible choices <laughs> where a lot of times you'll get like this crazy guy will like kidnap one of your party members and was like I'll give you a choice either I kill this party member and you never get to use them again or you cut off one of your arms Oh, yeah. And, like, then there's, like, a bunch of special moves you can't do when all your stats go down. Mm-hmm. Awful. Um, which choice in particular, Joe? Um, the one where he, um... <clears throat> uh, the one where he, um, basically assimilates all the powers, uh, from the, uh, other conduits, uh, after he, after he breaks them out of the prison. Um, rather than the famous option where he, uh, uh, where he, uh, basically imprisons the villain and uh, helps out his tribe. Did uh, you save the children with a bucket? I don't know what that means. Yeah, I don't get that reference. Sorry. Um, I'm going to use the bathroom real quick. I'll be right back. Okay. So I'm going to hang out with hold, the four, hold down the four for me, will you? Yeah. Uh, uh, Wave Runner brought up... Um... <coughs> Excuse me. You good. <coughs> Sorry, I'm gonna choke to death while Oscar's using the bathroom. <coughs> Don't die on me. Um, Wave Runner fifty six. Um, can I say Star versus even though that's a show and not a game? I I heard the ending of that. A lot of people are very unhappy with it. 
Uh, Joe, that's not a choice, though. That's based on your karma. I'm talking about a choice. I mean, good point. I think that's probably the weirdest thing about the Infamous games is how you don't actually get to make the choices organically. You could, like, want to do something and it can say, Oh, no, you're not evil enough to make that choice. Go back and do some evil things. Yeah, I get what you're saying. Um, I would say the choice to rat out the Phantom Thieves and Confidants in Persona 5. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know who would actually want to do that. I mean, sometimes there are bad endings where, like, you pick it because you want to see the bad ending. You just kind of, like, want to see how things get worse. But, like, I don't know many people who would want to, like, make that choice for themselves. Uh, somebody brought up Life is Strange. I think the final choice in Life is Strange is pretty contrived. Um, yeah, and Tanuki Player mentioned that. I think someone else mentioned it, too. <laughs> Shadow the Hedgehog, 14 possible endings, but they all lead to one true ending that makes everything you've done worthless. Or at least makes it so that, like, it doesn't matter what choices you made, there's, like, one canon thing that happens. Um, I would argue, like, mages versus templars. While the, templar, while the templars do have a few good points, it's marred by every single templar being just the worst. That's true, they, like, all the templars are just, like, always jerks. My thing with the Assassin's Creed games is that I feel like a lot of times, rather than explaining why they pick the side that they're on, characters just insult each other and be like, oh, you are so narrow-minded, you don't understand the da 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 They don't, like, try to explain what their philosophy is. They just, like, there are things in this world you do not understand. That That's kind of my issue with Assassin's Creed. Uh, comic, about the recent poll you did for the next game you Let's Play, did that ever get a winner? I remember there was a tie. Um, yeah, so I picked one of the games from the tie, which was Ori and the Will of the Wisps, which I'm playing right now over on my channel. Um, oh no, screen's falling asleep. Uh, oh! Oh, you're talking about Lisa, um... Also, I was talking about... Oh, I know what you're talking about now. Uh, the moment where the children are playing with the matches and you need to... Um, I did uh, I did use the bucket, Wave Runner. I did use the bucket when prompted to help the children. It, it didn't go super well. Okay, so you got the reference. What are we talking about here? Uh, we're talking about Lisa the Painful. There, oh. th there's, a, there's a part where there are a bunch of kids in a fire and you need to get a bucket of water for them. Oh. It, it's kind of one of those, like, Undertale gotcha kind of moments mm -hmm. where, like, it's set up to trick you so that you fail at something. Got it. Um, I don't know if I'm going to Let's Play Yakuza Kiwami now. I don't think there's really enough, quite enough interest in it. Um, and it's very, it, it, it's very long. It's a lot for me to devote to for, I think, not what a ton of people really want to watch. But it did tie with Ori in the... So, I mean, if I get, like, a lot of outreach of people wanting to play it, then maybe, but I don't know. <laughs> Ali said, I hear you playing, Lisa, and you always sound so concerned. Yes, because characters are dying all the time, and there's yep. nothing you can do about <laughs> it. Uh, do you and Oscar watch a lot of American sitcoms? If yes, which ones? If no, the question is dead. Not really. I haven't watched any in a while. I know, um, I know you have, a, like, a while ago. I was really big into, um into How I Met Your Mother. Mm -hmm. um, I was not super pleased with how it ended. Um, there's some older ones. Growing up, I was a big Full House kid. Oh! Um, I've probably seen every episode of Full House multiple times because that was just a thing. That Leslie was on. loved Full House. I really like shows that are like sitcom deconstructions like BoJack Horseman or WandaVision. Mm -hmm. I do appreciate the cartoon ones, admittedly. You got me into BoJack Horseman, and I'm like, geez, I wasn't expecting you to get this pressed. I, I think BoJack Horseman, honestly, is, like, one of the best written TV series of all time. It's so good. It's really good. It's very, very sad. It's mm -hmm. also very funny sometimes. Oh, it's hilarious. It, hey, it, guys, what is your favorite Yu-Gi-Oh! series? Probably GX. The only one I've watched all the way through is the original. Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> Bojack Horseman is the least of the painful of animated sitcoms. <laughs> yeah, that tracks. Uh, Scrubs and Brooklyn Nine-Nine are great sitcoms. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I didn't really think of them as sitcoms, but I have watched Brooklyn Nine-Nine, and I really liked it. Um, if you would count it, uh, The Good Place is an amazing Ooh, show. Oh, okay. Uh, Parks and Recreation, um, The Office, all good ones. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know if I'd call those sitcoms. They're like a kind of like very specific style of show. Yeah. I mean, I guess... I guess Brooklyn Nine-Nine is, is a comedy, and the comedies grow out of the situation, so yeah. it is, in that sense, a sitcom. But, like, there, there's a very specific genre where it's, like, you know, it feels like they're in, like, a documentary type of thing. Yeah. Uh, kind of kind of the whole Total Drama Island situation. Yeah, I, I call The Office just a comedy and a mockumentary. It's a mock documentary-style comedy. Mm-hmm. I never watched Curb Your Enthusiasm. That's one that I think I would probably like, but I don't know when I would make the time for it now. I like the term mockumentary. That actually works. Like, yeah. is, is that... Did you come up with that, or is that a No, thing? that's a common term for okay. <clears throat> movies like, um, like This is Spinal Tap, or The Office, or... Um, yeah, there's a lot of things like that where it's framed like a documentary, but it's not real. Got it. Okay. Oh, geez, I forgot about those things. It's kind of the cousin of, like, found footage movies, like Blair Witch Project. Okay, okay. Um, favorite and least favorite Yu-Gi-Oh! character in the original and GX. Huh. Hmm. Um. Oh, I hate to say it, but I think my favorite in the original might be Seto Kaiba. He's just, he's just a magnificent bastard. He really is. Um, for me personally, um... Either Seto Kaiba or, admittedly, Joey Wheeler. I, I really like Joey a lot. Yeah, love an underdog. Mm -hmm. Um, as a like smaller character, I always liked Mako Tsunami a lot. Mako's cool. I like that he was like a pretty nice guy at the end of the day. Yep. I know for GX, you absolutely adore uh, Tyranno Hasselberry. He was cool because he's got dinosaurs. That, that's one where I liked his deck more than I liked the character itself, but he was all right. Fair enough. Um, yeah, yeah, I guess I guess Hasselberry would be my pick from that. Uh, least favorite characters. Um, just because I think he's a really useless character, I'd say Duke Devlin. Ah, okay. Duke Devlin's just kind of, like, around a lot, and he's not doing anything most of the time. And in GX... Ow. I don't know. I don't know if I have a least favorite character in GX. You didn't really watch that show all that much, did you? I watched it up through the um, Society of Light arc. That's right. <clears throat> so I didn't get to, like, when he has that, like spirit girl that follows him and stuff. Admittedly, that... Uh, Yubel, right? Yeah. Yeah, admittedly, like, that that series didn't even, like, uh, complete fully in English. Like, the... the like... I think he had that one duel against, like, Dark Jesse, and then after that, like, the show just kind of stopped in the English version. Somewhere around... Like, especially when the Neospatians showed up, when it started being like, oh, yeah, I made these cards when I was a little kid and they got sent into space and now they're like real sweet I'm just like come on dude <laughs> I mean the and original then, idea came from Kaiba and then Jaden Yuki is like yet another reincarnation of an ancient king like uh, yeah come on man I, I love Kaiba's like uh oh there yeet um, I love Kaiba's, like, uh, explanation as to why he does that whole, like, interdimensional space thing. He's just like, because if there is intelligent life out there, then let's teach him how to duel. Yeah. <laughs> I think my favorite character of GX is still Seto Kaiba. <laughs> he's barely in the show, but ju but he's... He's completely necessary for the plot in the world it takes place in. One episode that I really, really enjoy from, um... Yu-Gi-Oh! GX is actually the episode where Maximilian Pegasus visits the school, and he goes up against it in a 2v1, 
against um Crowler and Bonaparte. Yeah. And it's actually really cool to see him like in action again with a revamped tune deck. Yeah, that's pretty neat. That that I always found cool, especially because like gosh darn it did tunes need an update. Um thoughts on Zane Truesdale. That was a uh, Cyrus's older brother, right? Yeah, the the with the, uh, with the, the Cyber prodigy. Dragons. Um Zane was all right. He, he's painted as so so cool and then he kind of he kind of gets outpaced, I feel like. Uh, he gets warped, in yeah. a way. Yeah, he gets warped real bad. Like, he, he gets warped uh, after he graduates. Okay, so where is it that I need this power? I've never watched 5Ds. I hear it's pretty good. 5Ds, shockingly, for how stupid the concept is. Like, card games on motorcycles, card come on. Card games on motorcycles. It's actually not that bad. Like, I actually kind of enjoy it. Uh... Really? That's what it's for? Yeah. I mother. I don't know if that's the only way to open it, but that's this this guide had a picture of that ability, so that's what I huh. that's, that's what I went with. You know, something tells me that we only needed needle. Cuz I didn't see blue on that thing at all. That's completely possible. Oh, you know what? Okay. This is going great. Ah, dang it. How do updates work in the I am not doing anime? well here. Do they just buy the latest cards? Um, I don't know if that's always the explanation, but I can remember very specifically in the Battle City arc, them going to the card store and buying new cards. And that explains, like, where Yugi got, like, Light Force Sword and stuff like that. So, yeah, I feel like a lot of times they are... I think there is, like, an evolving meta in the world of the show. I mean, I highly doubt that, like, the original uh, series is going to stand up to things like Synchro Summons and, Z and XC Summons uh, and stay all on that the jazz. Left so stay on the left side in this room after you get that, because there'll be a crystal shard on the upper left. Got it, thanks. I think it's right above here, right above that, um, that cappy, yeah. Awesome. You know, I didn't even consider that those things were cappies. Yep. I think. I think that's what they are. I just figured they were, like, sand pillar things. Really? They're cappies? Maybe. Huh. I mean, I guess the cappies do look a lot like sand. I wouldn't be surprised if they weren't cappies, but... That's just Ow. the assumption I'm making, because Cappies aren't anywhere else in this game. Yep. Say what you will about 5Ds, it did give us the best filler arc in all the anime, the Crash Town arc. Good old Wild West. With that is games. true. Crash Town was actually kind of sick, I'm not going to lie. That's the kind of thing that makes me interested to watch it, that there <clears> are, like, <throat> cowboys playing card games. That's Dude, like, I actually kind of like the idea of like, okay, the first person, to, the 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 guy who takes the first turn is the first person to draw their dual disc. Yeah, that's actually kind of sick. All right, here we go. All right, so this dude. I'm gonna be honest with you. This power is probably not the best for this. Then again? Actually, hang on a sec. I might have something here. Yeah, you could, like, eat those little enemies there and then spit them into the arms, but... Uh, this guy's name is Magman. Yeah, this ain't working. Oh, tired Kirby. So yeah, this guy's literally just named Magman. Yep. He's a man. He's made of magma. That's all there is to it. Da, 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 yeah, that that part in particular. <laughs> like, Josh had it right. Like this is the this is the part where it's just like, oh yeah, that this this song sounds awesome.
At least he's not Pie Ribbit. I don't remember Pie Ribbit. Is that another Kirby boss? That sounds like a fire frog. I remember a, like, fire owl in Squeak Squad. Oh, yeah. Uh, Nightmare456 says, Okay, my break is over. I gotta go back to work. Good luck on the boss. Thanks. Thanks Thank for you. stopping by. Oh, wait. oh, yeah, that... I wasn't looking. I was reading comments. I forgot he did that. Uh, Pie Ribbit, I guess, is in Triple Deluxe. I don't remember that one. You know what? Screw it. I'm, I'm grabbing, a bit. I'm grabbing an ability. ability. Uh, first that comes up. Not that useful. <laughs> Double stone? You know what? Why not? Yeah, just the AoE of that move might help you. Yep. All right, that'll work. Oh boy. Um, question. If Mario made a new Double Dash game, what pairing would you like to see? Like, new characters with, like, new pairings and whatnot? Yeah. Who would... Who would be the natural pair up for Rosalina in a Double Dash game? Because she didn't exist yet for Double Dash. Um... What was that big Luma from... Oh, um, we could have Lubba. Uh, Lubba. Yeah, that's it. Probably Lubba. That'd be cute. I, I can see Lava being a character in a Mario Kart game. I feel like what they'd probably do is pair up Rosalina and Pauline and decide, like, they're friends now. <laughs> that would be cool, actually. Ah! This might just be, like, a back-in-my-day kind of thing, but just, like, I really miss the old like mario baseball and stuff but like the mario sports games that come out just aren't as exciting to me anymore i agree honestly dude like M mario uh mario strikers battle league just oh jeez. oh jeez. oh my bad where's that hitbox uh, somebody said pauline and donkey kong jr that would be interesting Oh, to... please tell me. Okay, good. I think uh, Dry Bones and Boo would be a neat that combo. That would be cool. Or if they didn't want to bring back Petey Piranha, they could do Dry Bones and King Boo or anything like that. Okay, your hitbox is weird. Yeah, I guess you just need to aim a little higher. Very nice. Okay, we good. Oh, who would Nabbit team up with? That's a good question. Popple. <laughs> Nabbit and Popple. <laughs> Bring in Popple <laughs> from Superstar Saga. <laughs> that would be funny. Although if Popple were in the game, he'd probably have, um... What, what did he call Bowser? Uh, um, uh, Rookie. Rookie. Yeah, he'd probably have Rookie. Run, DDD, run! Eat him! <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Oh, King bob -omb would be a good one to put somewhere, too. Uh, King bob -omb? Huh. Okay, this is where things start to get a little creepy. Welcome to the Shiver Star. Uh, King bob -omb and King Womp, maybe? Maybe, actually. Okay, I'm not sure. There might be a fire and bomb. Ay, um, madre! You might need fire and bomb for this Fire one. and bomb? Yeah. I'm not entirely sure. That's the volcano power, right? No, that's, uh, fireworks. And believe it or not, yeah, there is a fire guy early in this stage. Hey, I'll take it. I, honestly, though, I do love the fireworks power. 
So before uh, Kirby and the Forgotten Land, this was the big Kirby takes place after an apocalypse on Earth theory bait. Yep. Yeah, it's heavily speculated that Shiver Star is basically post-apocalyptic Earth. After, I guess, a nuclear winter. Or maybe it's so long that global warming has happened and the pendulum slung the other other way and now it's a ice age again. I mean, that can happen if I, if I, like, as far as I'm concerned. Oh, Kamek and Hammer Bro, that would be a good one. Oh, okay. You could do, like, Pauline and Foreman Spike. Do two, like... <laughs> old like pre super mario brothers characters oh goodness that's a that's a that's a reach yeah but those are two games that came out next to each other that is fair donkey kong and then wrecking crew also then if you if you were bringing back the like other nintendo characters that were in mario kart 8 deluxe you could do things like like villager and isabelle that's true or inkling boy and inkling girl Boink. Okay, here's a question for you. If they were to bring um, more guest characters into Mario Kart, who would you want to see? I, I'm not saying this because we're playing it right now, but Kirby has been my choice. I think Kirby would be great in Mario Kart. Like, honestly, yeah, just make the Warp Star a, uh, just make the Warp Star a card. Yeah. Okay, I know for a fact that there is a Crystal Shard here. And I think it has to do with, like, getting on top oh, of one of these. Oh, there. That's easy! Did you know that um, Kirby's Air Ride was originally supposed to come out before Kirby 64? Really? It was planned to be the for first uh, Kirby N64 title, but it got dropped. Huh. And this was originally going to be on the Nintendo 64 DD. Um, but it did so poorly in... It did so poorly in Japan, and it didn't even come to America, so they just put it on the regular N64. Yep, I remember that. But that was the, uh, there is a disk drive add-on for the Nintendo 64 in Japan, similar to the Sega CD. Mm-hmm. We actually researched that a little bit when Josh and I collaborated for, um, uh, what's it called? Uh, Top 10 Nintendo Fails? Yeah. And, uh, we were, like, talking about that when we were researching for, um, uh, regarding the, um... What was it? Uh, yeah, the the DD and all that jazz. I think um, yeah, somebody, um, SPD Magenta Ranger said, and I agree, Samus would be a cool choice because you can make a gunship car. Okay, yeah, that would be cool. You know, Captain Falcon. Yeah. I know we've already had Big Blue, so just make Captain Falcon a character. Uh, there is a Crystal Shard under the water somewhere. Yeah, I do remember this. Yeah, I'd like if Rob the Robot came back. Ah, that would be cool. Um. Yeah, I gotta think more about the Mario Kart characters we already have and how to... Because you could do, like... Oh, Excite Bike, dude! <laughs> yeah! Okay. That would be great. For a long time, I've been saying I would like seeing a mixture of. I'd like to see Excite Bike, like Excite Biker and Super Smash Brothers. Oh, uh, okay. I don't know exactly how it would work, but I think it would be funny. They've ma they've done crazier. Yeah, you could like they made Piranha Plant work. You could like mix in some like things with Mock Rider in there too. Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, but I think, basically, make Wario's side special into a character. Oh, how about Koopa Kid, as in the, like, the Koopa Kids from the Mario Party games? Oh, okay. I could see that. It, it, I think it would get confusing having them in the same game as Bowser Jr. Pretty much Bowser Jr. has now replaced Koopa Kid. Pretty much. And Baby Bowser. Um, I think that's all of the shards in this stage. By the way, we're talking about a cool, cool-ass power. Here we go. Yeah, I like this one a lot. Much better than any curling stone power of Wombu. <laughs> you crazy. Wow, the shade. Ow, ow. 
Ow. Somebody said maybe Olimar with an SS Dolphin. Oh, that actually wouldn't be that bad. Or, I think I mean, Olimar would be a great choice. I love Olimar. Hey, madre. Hey, there she is again. Yep. Yeah, she gets around. Huh. Uh, Colby Kongs said, I think you mean the hockey puck. No, that's a curling stone. <laughs> I don't know if the game calls it a hockey puck, but that's not what it is. Which Fire Emblem game has the best... Or which Fire Emblem ha game has the best cast of waifus? <laughs> not which one has the best waifu. Uh, for you, that'd be Lynn, but overall cast. I I'm gonna be real with you. Three houses. Cast of waifus? Cast of waifus. Just like, which game has the best... Okay. If we're talking to mainline series, I'm just going to say right now, three houses. Because they're great characters, and they definitely, they definitely like, got really popular. If we're talking to waifu just for waifu's sake, go play Fire Emblem Heroes. Just going to say that. Just play Fire Emblem Heroes. I mean, Fire Emblem Heroes has, like, all the Fire Emblem characters, so, yeah, that's the... Yeah, and they have a, they have a habit of making some pretty damn bombastic waifus in there. With their freaking original characters. I say. Uh, you need a needle and spark in this one. Is there a needle and spark in this level? Probably. Uh, we'll check. Same goddamn brain cell. <laughs> this is a good one. I like this one. Oh, thank you for all the dances in the chat. By the way, fun fact. Um, this is um, this is a remix of um, uh, Butter Building. Yeah. Okay, wait. Let me let me make sure I'm not missing anything here. Which, by the way, um, I really like this theme. Best remix of Butter Building, though, is from, um, Kirby, Kirby's Epic Yarn. Yeah. Yeah, with the piano. Okay, there's gonna be one under one of the clouds here. Okay. I'm gonna try something stupid. I'm gonna go through this entire segment. Ice skating. T technically, it's cloud skating. This is the kind of thing I would do all the time, though, playing this game. Oh, yeah. So far, so good. No! Well. It, it forced me to stop, so yeah. I was able to reset. Down there. This I will stop for because, well, obviously. Yeah, there's even a Oh, little, there's a platform down there's here, There's even actually. a platform for us to use. Da -da 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 <laughs> also screw Nintendo for retconning the Koopalings being Bowser's adopted kids. Oh yeah! It is definitely they did definitely completely change the canon on that. Um, they were Bowser's kids until Super Mario Sunshine came along when they wanted Bowser Jr. to be like Bowser's one and only kid. Yeah. <clears throat> and then they brought them back for New Super Mario Brothers Wii, and we're just kind of like, yeah, I don't know. They work for Bowser. I he adopted them, I guess. <laughs> oh yeah, okay. I think there's a crystal shard here, actually. Yeah, on the left, I believe. Whoopsie. Yeah, the timing on this is a little tough. Um, was this 2000 or 2001? This came out in 2000 in North America and Japan. Um, I think it was 2001 by the time it came out in Europe. 
Um, fun fact, as a matter of fact, this was one of the very first N64 titles I ever owned. Um, along with, uh, Mario Party and, uh, Super Mario 64. Good ones. Uh, this is the first Kirby game I ever played, I think. Really? Uh, second, actually. The first was Kirby's Tilt and Tumble. Ah, okay. On the Game Boy Color. Um, my very first Kirby game was actually, um, Kirby Nightmare in Dreamland. Yeah, that one was shortly after for me. Yep. Yeah. Ah! Well, you're gonna need to eat one of those guys anyway, so. Yeah, make sure you get a needle, and we're still on the lookout for Spark. Right. What's y'all's favorite example of fridge horror from media? Not Ooh. actually food, but things that you realize, yeah, that you realize later is actually scarier. Um, my, the immediate thought that came for me was, um, Pikmin. Mm. Specifically, Pikmin's bad ending. Yeah. Yeah, the Pikmin throw Olimar's lifeless body into the onion, and he gets seated wasn't didn't they play with that for pikmin 4 as well that's sort of yeah, yeah that's sort of the plot of pikmin 4 is what happens to people when when they go through an onion like that yeah. yep and they become obsessed with don dory ah gino was your head in the clouds with that last death <laughs> I'm gonna need another drink after that one. Yeah, were there like lightning guys before that we missed? Um, not that I saw. Yeah, we may have to come back here um, for when we have a lightning guy. Yeah. Again, though, like we're making great time. I'm actually quite shocked at how quickly we're getting through this game. I wish you were shocked, then we'd have the powers. Ready. Ay, madre puta! I, I, I was sitting and wait for that one, but here we go. <sighs> As if on cue. I'm like, I'm, oh, it's the lightning rod! Ah! I'm like a sniper waiting for you to say a certain word, and then I'm like, ha, pun. Dude, you're really good at that. Like, way, way better than I care to admit. Stop that! I'm gonna teach you guys all a trick for conversation. Um, this is something I, I, I've been preaching this idea for years. Um, so if you want to appear as a more fascinating person in big social gatherings, what you do is called wit sniping. So don't talk about things until you know you have something interesting to say. You say less things and the percentage of them is higher in them being really interesting or really funny or something like that, and you've just become the most interesting person in the room. So, ratio. Yeah, with like, sniping. The funny thing is, I actually kind of do that at work. Like, I have this co-worker who's, like, a really, really cool dude. His name is Bob. He, he, like, he thinks apparently I'm, like, the most intelligent person ever because I have all these fun facts that I just randomly spew out sometimes. Yeah. It's admittedly endearing. <laughs> I, I won't, I won't lie. Um, I doubt Bob is watching this, but just gonna say right now, Bob, you're a cool dude, and I, and, like, I respect you greatly. You seem like a cool dude, Bob. What was the very first game you ever owned? Uh, for me, it was Sonic the Hedgehog 2, uh, for the Sega Genesis. I don't remember if my family had a Sega Genesis first, or a Super Nintendo. Um, but whichever one of those we had first, and we had a bunch <clears> of games <throat> for it, so it would be one of those... Uh, but before that, if you're counting stuff that, like, owned, like, in the house, not so much like I owned myself, uh, my parents had a ColecoVision from back in the day. Oh, which, goodness. Which I still have. So, one of the first games I ever owned was Smurf for the ColecoVision. Oh, goodness. I've never heard of that. <laughs> Gino says, yes, teach me your ways, Comic Senpai. <laughs> You have learned well, Gino. You must be in the—you must be like a frog in the pond. You do not seek the fly; the fly comes to you. Uh, Sensei, what if a fly never comes? It—it <laughs> it comes. This is a swamp. The fly shows up. <laughs> 
Nobody likes a desperate frog. Uh, my first was Star Wars Rogue Leader, Rogue Squadron 2. Great game. I have that game. Um, I've beaten the first and the third Rogue Squadron, but I've never beaten the second one. That one's hard. Oh, yeah. And I don't want to do it with codes. I want to do it legit. But that game, is, <laughs> that game is very hard. I think I got <laughs> stuck on the, the Battle of Endor when you're, like, actually fighting the the second Death Star, the actual... It's a trap scene! Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, funnily enough, my my very first Star Wars game that I ever played was that one from the arcade where it, like, had the joystick, and, like, you could have, a, like, a one-on-one -on -one duel with Darth Vader. Oh, that's a cool one, yeah. And, dude, I love that arcade machine. They used to have that at a uh, Regal Cinema near us. Um, they had it at the uh, Bardon Lane's bow bowling alley that we used to go to. Yeah. Like, that was fun, man. I, I admittedly miss old school arcades. Um, we have a uh, one near near us actually called the uh, uh, called the Game Gallery. Uh, really really cool place to go to. Haven't been there in a while though. Um, uh, Zabe's ten says um, this world has a lot of connections with Forgotten Land, implying that the science ancients were from the Forgotten Land and create both star dream and create both star dreams and Lord Star. Uh, Lord Star Cut, the Lore Star Cutter. And oh, more. really? You know what I find funny, um, related to that? Yeah. Is that those things, um, look a lot like toys, and this is very reminiscent of a toy factory? Yeah. Um, I saw people talking about the Terminal Montage videos before, like, um, there's something about Kirby 64 and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. Um, which I think does a really good job of, like, depicting this of like when we see all this stuff it's colorful and happy and stuff like that but then it'll cut to uh Adeline who when she's looking at everything everything's like dark and apocalyptic oh, and yeah. it's like the same things but the color gradient is different because this is actually like a terrible place but it's colorful because it's a Kirby game so I think we got like like a peach a cherry and like an acorn and we need to match them with colors. So I guess try pink, red, brown. Uh, that one. Uh, the second one. Okay, I just wanted to see what the other colors were. Yo, nice! I, want, I wanted to take the lead on that one because one of us is better at seeing colors than the other. That wasn't even colors, that was just... <laughs> Well, the buttons were colors. Yeah, the buttons were. So for a second, when you kept going right, I was afraid you, like, couldn't tell. Yeah, no, I just wanted around. to see, like, if there was anything, like, any other buttons around. Yeah. Yeah, good call. Um, I think that's all the shards in this stage. Um, I think so, too. Yeah. Yes, it was, because, like, I remember getting one uh, near the staircase, near the uh, conveyor belts. One from the boss, and then there was that one. Um, so the next stage is going to require one of the coolest copy abilities in this game, which is Spark Cutter. Ah! <laughs> it is time to join the darkness. Um, I guess I might as well get a head start on that. Um, if I can, uh... Oh, hey! Yeah, right here! Yeah, yeah we'll take him. Sweetness! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> da -da. <laughs> oh my gosh, Darth Kirby is great. What you gotta realize too is that this game came out like right around the same time as episode one. Oh yeah, that's true. Like there's this was definitely what they had in mind. Sith Kirby. Honestly, Kirby might have more in common with the Sith than he does with the Jedi. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. What's even cooler is that I can use it as a shield against yeah. these, uh, project- Depending on the exact angle. Y you're deflecting projectiles like, like a Sith or a Jedi. <laughs> I guess I am. Kirby might need a little more training. 
Do you remember in the Right Back At you anime when Meta Knight tries to train him with a sword? Oh, yeah. I think, like, DDD's Monster of the Week is a, a Bugsy, who, for some reason in this version, uses swords. Oh, yeah, that's... Huh. Yeah, that's true, actually. Um, I think I fought... Like, the funniest part is that, like, Kirby literally has Sword Knight just... Uh, Blade Knight just gave him his sword. Yeah. And, like, Kirby doesn't even suck it up. He just, like, tries to hold it. Yeah. And just, like, falls over. And I think the funniest moment for me is, like, when, like, Meta Knight uses the blunt uh, part of his sword and just, like, bops Kirby in the head <laughs> multiple times. Makes a good gift. Okay. Um, real quick about the Kirby anime that I remember very, very fondly is I think one of the coolest um, continuing story arcs in the Kirby 64 in the Kirby anime was between Masher and Knuckle Joe. Yeah. I don't know if you remember that. Not exactly. Um so Knuckle Joe is like an ally in the anime and he's kind of like sort of like a bounty hunter type thing. Okay. So uh but uh he has this continuing rivalry with Masher um which is like that giant like sword and shield like golem looking ass motherfucker. Right, yeah. Um and the idea is that they have an ongoing rivalry. Kirby helps Knuckle Joe defeat Masher the first time. And then the second time he comes back as Masher 2.0. And there was this one really, really cool episode where, like, uh, Knuckle Joe is stubbornly trying to go after Masher, but he's injured. So the whole episode involves, like, Kirby just, like, help trying to get him to be like, Hey, stop trying to do this alone. You yeah. need help, pal. Okay. Like, you're, you're injured. Stop it. This level... <clears throat> We're going into probably one of my favorite levels in this game. That's one of the coolest uh, songs. Absolutely. Uh, Blue Jade Spitfire, thank you for coming in. Um, I'm actually curious, how many viewers do we have right now? Uh, last I checked, 45. Not bad at all. Thank we're, we're down to 43. I just want to say, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Like This has been very fun. Really glad John could join me for this. Oh, happy to be here. Mm -hmm. Um... I almost want to see if, like, Amber's ready with the, th with the third drink. I don't know how long it's been. Um. Yeah, we'll give it another level. Here we go. Okay, like th this is where we need Darth, Darth Kirby, right? Yep. Um, it'll be the second crystal shard of the level. Got it. They also bring this song back in, um, Planet Robobot. That's right! Well, I screwed up there. Uh, Bob the Red asked, uh, what are your thoughts on Melina nowadays? Melina from Mortal Kombat. Um, still not the biggest fan of her, but, like, I know they're trying to do, um, like, a bit of a redemption thing with Melina, and I think that's fine. Um... Oh, no, there's another power we need. We need drill for that. Oh, okay. We're gonna have to come back. That's fine, actually. The, the second one definitely uses... At the very Sith least, Kirby. the good thing is that that's early in the stage. Yeah. So we can always come back easily for that. Um, I, I'm still not the biggest fan of Melina as a character, but... Eh, it's fine. Uh, surprisingly, King DDD does not have any shards in this section here. I remember this part being particularly difficult because, like, if I recall correctly, those mallets are insta-death? They might be. I really like, um, the death animation for Kirby riding DDD. I'm actually gonna test this out. Wait, you- It is insta-death! You're gonna lose the power now, though. Oh. Uh. Yeah, that's it. Let, let, let me, let me, um... See, this isn't the Let's Play, so I can't skip ahead. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't I feel like an idiot? Uh, Thif Guy says, do you still hate Birdo? Who hates Birdo in 2024? Yeah, like... Justice I, for Birdo. I, I'm just gonna say right now, I learned my fucking lesson. I don't hate Birdo at all. In fact, I think she, I, I think she's an amazing character. Uh... <sighs> I think here. Yeah, if we could get Needle Stone first. Um, I actually want to prioritize Cutter and uh, uh, Cutter and Spark. 
That makes sense. Because, um, again, uh, drill and needle are, like, early in the stage. Yeah. There we go. No, I've kind of come around on Birdo, though. Um, definitely, like... De definitely when, like, in the 20 aughts, when, like, it kind of came out of, like, people would cite the uh, instruction booklet of Super Mario Brothers 2 and be like, oh, according to this, Birdo is a boy who thinks he's a girl. And, like, there's just all this, like, haha, Birdo's weird kind of yeah, humor. And that's, yeah, like, there, there was that's whole... where we were at at that. And now... I mean, I don't think Nintendo actually intends Birdo to be a trans character or anything. Um, I think they just mean her to be female. I think that's their story and they're sticking to it, but... Yeah, but, like, one way or another, there was that time. Yeah. And at the end of the day, like... Once I got r r rid of that kind of, like, just weird opinions on like, yeah. gender there wasn't really anything left for me to hate about her like I i'll be the i'll be the first to admit i was like I, I was one of those that didn't respect um the community as it were and i've I, I i'll say like i i like to think i've come a long way since then uh the wave know? runner says there were definitely some video game opinions that became popular just because just because they were spouted by big youtubers yeah i think, I that, think that's oh true. that's definitely true there were things that like we all just kind of collectively agreed on um, I will say, like, um, I don't know if anyone in the chat watches the Party Crashers, but, uh, one dude I love is, uh, Vernius, and Vernius absolutely adores Birdo. But, um, the other Party Crashers, uh, TC Nick, um, King of Skill, and, um, especially Eevee, really make fun of him for it, but they make fun of him in the, like, in, in the very endearing way. So, like, I always found that amusing. And, like, Birdo's, like like weird she's like a weird pink dinosaur that shoots eggs out of her mouth but like i don't know it's mario i kind of I, I tend to like the weird characters more oh absolutely Yeet. yeah i absolutely adore the party crashers yeah, i so, think they're hilarious so what the hell is that in the tube oh yeah what the what heck? um it's like a hippo yeah type of thing uh what are you guys doing actually i think it is just the hippo Fun fact, uh, that's the first time I noticed that. Only because you pointed it out. Yeah. That is, that is wild. Yeah, that's one thing about this, um, this, that's one thing about this stage that was, like, always, like, interesting to me. Bird. Oh, goodness. Uh, is, like, the music, like, sounds really good, but it also has that, like, sense of, like, dread, uh, to it that I always found interesting. Yeah. I kind of like this style of... Like, I would call this a fridge horror. Oh, absolutely. Um, because it's never really important to the plot where we are. It's just kind of like a neat background thing. Hey! Alright, so we're gonna get to the next drink, everybody, after this stage is done. So, hang tight for that. And where is this crystal shard? Uh, keep going. I think it's in a boss room. Okay, I just... I just remember... Oh, gosh. Cat... Why does that cat look familiar? Um. Hey, Sissel, is that you? Yeah, yeah, it does remind me of Ghost That looks Trick. like Sissel. Oh, goodness, yeah. D dude, the more I look at this stage, the more I'm freaked out. What the heck? Uh, uh, witch? Kiki, is that you? <laughs> <laughs> nice. There we go. Okay, there we go. It'll appear in there after you defeat the Phoenix. The Phoenix is no match for Darth Kirby. <laughs> Phoenix is Bird Lady! Hulk confused! Yo, imagine if Darth Vader was in, like, Marvel vs. Capcom. He was in a Soul Calibur 4. He was. Calibur 4. What a weird, uh, what a weird, uh, choice of character for yeah. Soul Calibur. Yoda was a piece of shit. I'm just gonna say right now. And then you Yoda also was an had, absolute uh, piece of shit in, uh, Soul Calibur, in Soul Calibur uh, 4. And you had The Apprentice from, uh, The Force Unleashed. Yep. So I think it's a little further than this. Um, there are, like, different kinds of crusher machine things, but you'll, you'll be able to see it pretty easily. Got it. I don't think it's in this room. 
This room always made me nervous. Yeah, just knowing that instant death hangs in the balance is always always nerve-wracking. Okay, so one um one situation I remember having is that like I would like jump the um I would jump up to like keep going, but like it was just high enough that it crushed me. Cause hitboxes are dumb. Yeah. And I agree, Dobler, um, Link is a better uh, Soul Calibur character. Than... Oh, absolutely. No, Link is fantastic in uh, Soul Calibur 2. Oh, oh, okay, yeah, I remember this now. Okay, it's going to be on one with kind of a reddish floor, and you're going to need to grab it on the right before you jump up. Okay, it's not this one. We don't have time for the sandwich, Kirby. <laughs> Uh, pass here? Yes. Yes! There we go. Nice. Oh, Jesus! Uh, yep, on top of the thing. I forgot about that. I like these robots pushing him, too. These destructive oh, yeah. robots. <laughs> what a catchy <laughs> beat. <laughs> okay, I'm actually gonna go grab both of these guys, because... Uh, Double Lightning actually has a really cool power. Yeah, this one's really cool. I like the little dance he does while he's uh -huh. holding it. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Actually, now that I think about it, I don't even know if this power will work on the boss. Um. Also, we still need to get Drill. Yeah. We'll work on that in a bit. We'll see. We got the third drink here, and... Huh. So, this is the Banana Dana D. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that got you, didn't it? I love it. <laughs> the Banana Dana D. Tell us about the Banana Dana D, Amber. So, um, it is made with a uh, banana aqua fresca base. What? Uh, um, so... Uh, basically, a aqua fresca. It's a uh, Mexican style drink. Um, oh, agua fresca. Uh, agua fresca. There you go. Okay. Um, I'm. It's made specifically with uh, fresh banana, half a cup of uh, strawberry banana juice, and this is made it all in a blender, by the way. Um, uh, half a cup of evaporated milk, a tablespoon of vanilla, um, one and a half cups of water. Um, one tablespoon of brown sugar, four to five ice cubes. Um, you blend it all together in, in a blender really, really nice. And then if you want to make it alcoholic, you add, uh, one ounce of peach brandy and five dashes of orange bitters. And garnish with a, with a mint and orange slice. Huh. There's a lot going on there. That I, is a lot. I'm interested to see how it comes together. Well, cheers. Okay, this is familiar. It's like, uh, it's like, uh, I mean, it's not, but, okay. I don't know how to describe this. It is, I, it is mm. kind of made similar to how you would make horchata, except without the rice. Yeah, like, it, it is like an horchata. You know what, it, you know what actually it is? It's like a milkshake without the milk. Pretty much. It has a very subtle flavor, actually. Like, I guess that makes sense because Waddle Dees aren't exactly the most detailed. Mm -hmm. Try this. They're not. They're not as D D detailed as D D D. <sighs> Waddle detailed. Smells <laughs> great. It does. Thank you. This was actually. This one was actually a little bit harder to, for me to figure out because originally I wanted to do a banana liqueur, but I couldn't find any. Mm -hmm. And. So the thing about all these like all these drinks, I have to like usually like buy a whole bottle of banana nice. liqueur. Let me get a look at that. Uh, like in advance and like figure out what I'm gonna do with it outside of the stream. So I'm, I'm actually curious what would have happened if you did find banana liqueur uh, to use on this. You can definitely taste the banana. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. No, very banana forward. I like this a very lot. Very bandana yeah. forward. Th this is this is second <laughs> favorite for me behind the the, the star hammer. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah, it's very it's very smooth too. Like this is an easy one uh, to just 
like, drink. Definitely dessert drink, though. Mm -hmm. Hey, I did see in the chat, um, back there a while ago, um, Azure Knight Garrow, I think it was, um, asked if we could do a toast for your mother that passed away this year. Um, I'm very sorry to hear that. Oh, um, man. Br uh, bring it down a little bit, but, um, I... Sounds nah. like things are really tough. I'm a toast to you and your mother. Yeah. Hey. And cheers. Uh, everyone, uh, a toast to uh, to his mom. May he rest. May she rest in peace. And may God bless you all. This is great, Amber. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. Again, very, very easy. Very like nice. You know what I'm actually enjoying about the kind of the theming right now. All of these drinks that we've had so far are nice, easy, simple, enjoyable, like Kirby. Yeah. Like, I didn't, I, 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 I didn't know what to expect when Amber was making all these. Um, but yeah, like, I guess I could, I guess it's to be expected that Kirby drinks would be accessible. I think is a <laughs> yeah. great word to put it. It is a great word for it. It's like. If you guys, like, if anyone in the chat is not big on, like, drinking, like, beers or, like, strong drinks or anything, but you still want to try out some, like, you know, alcoholic beverages, give some of these a shot. I wouldn't like, say they're rated E for everyone because... Obviously not. They have alcohol in them. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe, like, E21. <laughs> <laughs> rated E21. In other words, M for mature. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe like E16 if you're in other countries. Also, you drink know, depends on your. Yeah. Just gonna say, drink responsibly. Well, Amber, I thank you for uh, spearheading this operation <laughs> with the with the bandana D. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, I shall return in another hour. Yep. Would either of you like water? Um, I have mine, but I could probably use a refill on water. I would love a water, thank you. You got it. Mm-hmm. Thank you, sweetie. Mm -hmm. Can we get some, like, claps in chat for Amber? Mm -hmm. Can we get some Go Ignises? No, like, I heavily, heavily appreciate Amber for being able to prepare all this. Because, like, again, mixed drinks and just the general idea of, um, like, you know, bartending and, um, what's the word for it? Uh, I, I hear mixology used a lot. Yeah, I think that's a word. Mixology, like, she she likes experimenting with that kind of thing. And having the opportunity to try out different concoctions and, like, different mixed um, experiments with these streams has been a really, really good way to, like, get her feet wet when it comes to mixology. And it's really fun. It's absolutely a lot of fun. And she comes up with some really, really awesome stuff. Again, like... From previous sessions, like, I still ask for Magma Worm every now and again. Um, Crimson Flower is great. So the Fiddlesticks was insanely amazing. That's I will say, great, like, so far the Starred Hammer too. is, like, the star of this yeah. one so far. That was really good. Um, mm. I saw you trying to ask this question a few times, uh, Josh the Night Fury. Um, which version of Force Unleashed do you like better, the HD version or the original ps2 slash wii version i've only ever played it on the wii so that's all i can um speak for. i i uh, saw the uh, hd and from what i have to understand it's good here you want the rest of this sure go for it thank you hey ali if you're still watching can you come pick me up <laughs> <laughs> it's actually not that much out nah there. you'll be fine no, I'll, I'll chill for a while after we finish stream and sounds good I, and again honestly we're making great time we're only four hours in and we're already like nearing the end of the game like, not bad at all. Oh, Allie says uh, she is watching. Allie, ha uh, you playing Sims right now? How how's the Sims going? Allie spent all day yesterday making a new Sims world and, like, making sure that every single person was a character she had created so that there were no rando Sims walking around. Yep. Uh, by the way, Azure Knight, alcoholic <laughs> shakes are nothing new. Trust me. <laughs> I've, I've had them. Uh, what is in the magma worm? Um... I don't exactly remember, but I know it was a very cinnamon-heavy drink. Um, I believe it was, like, cinnamon and apple brandy. Um, and it was garnished with cinnamon sticks and a jalapeno pepper. Okay. So, it was a very spice-forward drink. Like, I might very have... spicy. I might have trouble with that. I, I respect the artistry <clears throat> of it, but I would probably have trouble with it. Oh, no. It, like, it is a very spicy drink. 
but you'd be shocked that it's not that spicy because the apple brandy actually makes it very sweet forward like it's a very it's a very perfect balancing act of sweet and spicy uh the magma worm is um very cinnamon heavy very like uh spice heavy but again that apple brandy just brings it all together uh with the magma worm and yeah again the idea is that like it's like magma the jalapeno is the worm so there gotcha. you go and the the fiddlesticks was kind of in a similar vein but i remember is fiddlesticks re referring to league of legends yeah um we called it the fiddlesticks yeah Th let me tell you that stream was something else because we had a drink based off of thresh um and oh that one i had remember the, the yeah and that one had in absinthe in it <laughs> that one got me dude the chain warden that's what yeah. we called it well absinthe makes the heart grow fonder yep but no the fiddlesticks was a very um uh, was another cinnamon for like in case you haven't noticed i love cinnamon in my mixed drinks like i'm a like put cinnamon in something and like make a drink out of it i will probably love it but i remember describing um uh cinnamon i remember describing the fiddlesticks is like if i went to a very fancy halloween festival it's like uh it was like it was like if an, if an old fashioned got cosplayed for Halloween. Hmm. That's how I described the fiddlesticks. Cuz it was cuz like it had an ice cube in it. Like it was a very old fashioned style drink. But like fall flavors like pumpkin and cinnamon type of thing. This sounds for drinks like what the goose is for sandwiches. There's a place near us called the Goose. It's a sandwich place and there's a lot of secret menu items where you can get specialized <clears throat> hoagies and there's like a lot of them that are named after star wars characters and there's other things too oh i love that um so you could get there's one called a luke skywalker um there's another called an anakin skywalker which is a luke skywalker with barbecue sauce on because that's the dark side oh yeah <laughs> that's good and then there's a han solo which is a luke skywalker with meatballs nice oh wow yeah, there, there was actually a bar uh, not too far from us. Like, it was about an hour away. That was a very, like, gaming and comic-themed, like, restaurant-slash-bar. Yeah. It unfortunately closed down a few months ago, and I was really sad about that. But it was a really, really cool place. They had they had an original X-Men, um, oh, like, arcade machine one there. of those six-player games? Yeah. Heck yeah. Yeah, it was awesome, dude. Um, uh, Petra, thank you, for, uh, thank you for the subscription. Uh, speaking of Fiddlesticks, wonder if you think, uh, wonder what you think of him now that he was heavily reworked. Dude, the rework on Fiddlesticks did him so many favors. Ah, didn't know there was a rework. Uh, yeah, they made him, um, <clears throat> um, they made him a much more, like, monstrous entity, and he is fantastic. Like, I, he, he basically, he actually became one of my mains now, actually. Nice. Um, whenever I pick up the game every now and again. Um, you still, we still need to make the rusty nail for multi. Oh man, like, th that's another one, yeah. Um, cause there's actually a drink called the rusty nail, but, um, there's a character in, in Risk of Rain 2 called Multi, who has, like, a nail gun. So, like, uh, we're thinking of maybe, like, the next time we do Risk of Rain drinks, we'll make a, a variant of the rusty nail called the Multi. Hmm, okay. Okay, so, we need drill, right? Yes. I know where we're going for this. Uh, Josh the Night Fury said, Speaking of Anakin, do you believe the rumors that Hayden Christensen might be voicing Shadow in the in Sonic 3, in the Sonic 3 movie? Not sure yet. Um, we'll, we'll have to see. Yeah, I don't know what to think of the rumors there, but I can see it. I think he'd be good casting. I actually do agree with that. <clears throat> I am looking forward to the Sonic movie. They, they are silly, silly movies, but I enjoy them. I haven't watched either of those movies yet. I don't blame you for that one, to be honest. I'm really behind on, like, things I want to watch, like, or it's been hard for me to want to watch things. Lately, um, Allie and I are, um, our nights have been a lot of, like, we watch something for, like, half an hour while we're eating, and then yeah, we just go to gaming. We've just both been playing a lot of games. So we've been watching like half hour episodes of Game Changer and stuff like that. <clears throat> oh yeah. And uh, there we go. Uh, plus Jim Carrey is the best Eggman, even admittedly better than Mike Pollock. That is that is an extreme statement. 
Oh, boy. Hang on a second there. Do, do, do you want to take the floor on this one? I... I don't want to, like, tell people who like Jim Carrey as Eggman not to like him, or as Robotnik, or whichever he goes by in those. Um, I'm just... I think <clears throat> Jim Carrey is a very talented person. I don't like him in everything that he's in. I agree. And just from, like what I've seen of his performance as Robotnik, that is probably the biggest reason why I haven't seen those movies yet, because all the clips I see of him, I'm just like, you are being too much. It's it's not doing it for me. The thing is, is like, <clears throat> I like, I personally love Jim Carrey as Eggman, but you have to kind of like, understand going in, that this is not the Eggman we know. He, like, Jim Carrey is doing his own interpretation of Eggman, and it's a good interpretation. But is he better than OG Eggman or the egg like what was it Michael Pollock? Yeah, yeah. Is he better than Michael Pollock Eggman? No, I don't think so. Because like Michael Pollock's Eggman is just so iconic at this point, and gosh, he knows how to voice the character. Like absolutely. I I have a rule in you know th this isn't a rule for everything, but I think in comedies generally you like you can't start at a 10 out of 10 because then you have nowhere to grow from and from what i've seen of jim carrey's performance he comes in at a 10 and stays at a 10 for the entire movie and that's like not dynamic comedy to me like i would love to see him get to that point from just getting more and more frustrated with sonic's antics and not being able to capture him uh-huh like if jim carrey came in as like as like a weirdo and eccentric but like very professional and then by the end of the movie, like, every time he faced Sonic, he, like, got I didn't realize crazier. I only had two health. Oh, jeez. Then, then I think that would be great, but I think Jim Carrey's just there to do what people like Jim Carrey doing. That's rough. Well. <laughs> <laughs> if an animated movie of Kirby was made, who do you think would be the voice of Kirby himself? Uh, Vin Diesel. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> that would be something. Okay, so these don't give a copy ability. Great. It's not like I expect them not to cast the celebrity as Robotnik in these. Like, I don't expect them to, like, get Mike Pollock or whoever to do it. Okay, so you can duck that! Damn, I wish I knew that earlier. Yeah, so this is the, uh, this is the HRH, is the name of this robot. The uh, hate. <laughs> yeah, I forget what it stands for. The H stands for humanoid, the second H. Because then his second form is called HRV. Admittedly, I think this is like one of the coolest boss fights. Like, this thing is actually kind of sick. I know he was kind Look of... Look at this! Yeah. Yeah, I like this Transformer. I love his scissor hands, too. Oh, man, it's the Scissorman. I know he's kind of a meme, but Oscar, what's your opinion on Alfred's Eggman? Asks Jebo. On... Who's Eggman? Uh, Alfred? Is that one of the... voice actors? You're gonna have to... You're gonna have to clarify this one with me. Oh, jeez. Alfred Coleman. I don't remember what he was in. Alfred Coleman. Eggman. Something about Sonic Destruction, AI-generated Sonic... Uh, I'm sorry, I don't. I, guess, I have no clue. I guess this is a fan dub. Maybe I'm not familiar with it. Oh, the real time fan dub. Uh, no opinion. Okay, important scene here. Oh yeah. She says, "Oh no, it's my home, and look what's kind of become of it." And they're all like, "We got this." Come on, everybody! No. Oh. Ow. Ah, 
dang it, Kirby. So, Kirby's definitely light enough for Ribbon to carry. Oh, yeah. Which will become important later. Okay, so, Ripple Star. We have every single Crystal Shard so far, right? I believe so. We've only been on stream for four hours and 20 minutes. I forgot how short this game was. Okay, let me get my guide back up. I just gotta say right now, like, goddamn juxtaposition in this game. Like, in this area, because, like, you come here, and you see all these, like, sunshine and rainbows and flowers and pretty lights. Uh, bomb needle. You're gonna bomb need. needle? Oh, yeah. hey, how about that? Uh, that would be, a uh, needle spark. Oh, okay. Like, look at how pretty all this is. Yeah. This is also, like, practically a remake of the first level. It really is. I, I, I don't know what the logic of doing that is, but there you go. It is a little bit off-putting, I guess. Yeah, even down to the uh, Crystal Shark placement. Yep. Yeah, I guess I just hope that there is a bomb guy up ahead then. I like how things stick to Needle Kirby. How enemies, like, stick on him. Yep. Oh, man. Are we gonna have to, like, run out to a different stage and grab Bomb? Probably. Ow. Uh, those guys are ice. Oh, Aha! There we go. I almost screwed that up. So, yeah, you turn into a... Oh, yeah, this thing! You turn into a Gordo. That sound effect, by the way. That's pretty <laughs> satisfying. <Ew. laughs> awesome sauce. Like, what are we worried about? This place doesn't seem all that bad. Look at all the pretties. Look at all the pretties. <laughs> That's it, so... Oh. It is that bad. Oh. What are you doing here? What are you doing here? She's on her own mission. Yeah, clearly. Um, we're going to need Cutter at some point. I think just Cutter. There's two of them. Three of them. Oh. Are they originally from here? We got a whole coven. They do look a lot like the fairies that live they on do, the They do, actually. Star, yeah, so. you're right. Okay. Yeah, so this is the uh, the Toho world. <laughs> That's apt. Okay. Oh, no. We need Spark for that. Oh, do we? Yeah. Yeah, we can break that with Spark. Well, Spark is like really early here. Yeah, yeah, we can pick it up real quick. Oh. You killed him. You monster. Ay, madre! <laughs> I am not doing well. Actually, now that I think about it, will this work? Probably. Well, we're about to find out. Um, I don't know why what you guys are talking about in the chat, but I just saw Madoka Magica there. Oh, yeah, this whole place is kind of a Madoka Magica. Oh, okay. I just finished watching Madoka Magica for the first time. Um, I really liked it. All right, good call. Okay. Yeah, I'm actually surprised you got into Madoka Magica. Uh, Veronica really wanted us to watch it with her. Oh, uh, okay. That, that actually, that actually counts. That, that actually fits, yeah. Um, somewhere in one of these sorts of rooms, also, there's a oh, yeah, I remember crystal this. shard. So, look for different places you can go against walls and stuff. I don't know if it's in this room specifically, or if there's another room like I it. I mean, I'll keep looking. God, this music is off-putting. 
Yeah, I might be in another area. Sorry, just adjusting. <clears throat> so what's cool about uh, what's cool about Devil Spark is it creates this electrical field around you, which doesn't really do anything until an enemy comes into it, and then it like fires a bolt at it. Like that. Yeah. Um, can you go left from here? Um, I should be able to. Oh, sandwich. I mean, Kirby's never gonna say no to a sandwich. Uh, yeah, uh, Bob the Red, we don't... Um, the witches, apparently, they only ever appear in the background, and they were enemies in, uh, Kirby's Dream Land 3. And they just kind of show up in the background for this level. Can you? I got it. You're on. Thank you. So are we, like, going into the underground tunnels of this area or something? I guess so, yeah. I guess we're tunneling underneath Ripple Star's castle. Uh, stay hydrated, kids. Redemption from Azure Knight. Thank you. <laughs> Magenta Ranger says, I hate it. It's creepy. <laughs> yep. <laughs> nah, if there's one thing Kirby consistently is good at is making something cute and innocent into something very, very scary. Um, somebody's asking if you tried the new Skulls. Um, not yet. I haven't played Skull the Hero Slayer in a while, admittedly. I gotta get back on that. Ow! Oh! Yeah, that seemed way too easy there. Thank you. Welcome. Thanks, hon. Okay, it's gotta be here. Oh, yeah. Yep, yep. there it is. Nice. Yeah, I hear the new skulls are fun. They're basic. They're they're supposedly like based on like, um, uh, like gods and folk heroes or something, if I recall correctly. Uh, top three video game antagonist. <laughs> I'm not answering that question right now. Top three. Video? Not on stream. Is it just the antagonist? Um, no. Um, I'll I'll go ahead and let you read it, and you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Wait, which chat is it on? Oh, okay. Yeah, we're not answering that kind of question on stream, pal. What's wrong with you? <laughs> um, no men and I drink yet. Oh, this is where we needed spark. Cutter. Or cutter. Damn. Uh, is there a cutter in here? No. Ah, uh, we're probably gonna have to come back here, huh? Yeah, I think so. Ugh, I don't like coming back to this level. It's, cr it's creepy. Oh, well. Up we go. Man, that's at the end of the level, too. Come on. Yeah. Alright, so... Cutter... Where can I get a cutter enemy? Oh, wait. I can just go around... I just gonna go around the horn here. <laughs> Go around the horn. <laughs> Is it just cutter we need? Yeah. Um, that's okay if you just, like, let him scroll off the stage. Like, that was just dumb. There we go. Alright, back to Ripple Star. <laughs> Oh, no, you gotta one. go around the horn. Can't just take the Panama Canal like a slacker. I got it. I got it. <laughs> you go around the horn. Uh, the Blue Griffin said hi. Hi. Hello. Uh, J uh, JC Gaming Expert says so. What are your hopes for Persona Six? Oh man, I don't even. I don't even know how to address that. Yeah, no, like, as far as I'm concerned, Atlas can do whatever the heck they want. Because, like, like yeah. all, all I know is that it'll likely be really good. More and better, I guess. Yeah, by the way, you want to talk about creepy. Can we talk about these motherfuckers? Oh, Scarfies. Scarfies can go die in a hole. Yeah, the... the 
the big uh, gimmick with them is if you try to inhale them, they turn into monsters. Yep. Some of them even do, like do it like at, just do it automatically if you turn your back on them. Yeah. I do kind of like how all the allies like basically show up to help here. Like I know D, yeah. I know Waddle D is just like, hey, hey, come over here. Like doesn't really do anything, but they all show up here. Yeah, I think those Kappa enemies were also cutter. Hmm, <laughs> deep sea popsicle. Floor ice cream gives you health. Or in this case, water ice cream. I watched a video, um, I don't know how you pronounce it. Um, I don't know how you pronounce the name of the YouTuber who did it, but it was everybody in Super Smash Brothers rank ranked on whether or not they have had pizza. Oh, oh, okay. Um, Which I thought was a really I, good I know one. the video you're talking about. I don't remember who did it. By the way, Fifth Guy, thank you for the bits, man. Um, a spontaneous top three has been redeemed again. Uh, let me, uh, look up here. Uh, top three best games that get progressively darker. Ooh. Hmm. Okay, okay. Okay. Um. So what are the Madoka Magica of video games? Okay, I'm just gonna say right now, the the one that comes to mind for me immediately is Doki Doki Literature Club. That's, yeah, that's one of the first I could think of. Yeah, like, that. that's an easy one. Um, Least of the Painful starts pretty dark. It does keep getting darker, but it does start pretty dark also. Mm-hmm. So. Um, hmm. Pretty much any Kirby game yeah. could qualify for that. If I had to pick, um, if I had to pick the one that, like, gets, like the darkest i guess you could say maybe kirby canvas curse gets pretty insane mm. like you you, you want to talk about that final boss of drosia <sighs> um huh uh dongan rampa oh dongan rampa like dongan rampa kind of starts out dark though at it least does get worse. Dongan Rampa 2 at least like starts on like, oh, you're on a like colorful Tropical island beach getaway yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> um, somebody said I feel like Delta Rune is heading that way. Delta yeah. Rune and by extension Undertale, kinda yeah. I'd say Undertale does that. Uh, what if Atlas made a main series Pokemon for Creatures Inc and Nintendo? Oh, that'd be interesting. Also, thank you for the bits, man. Um. Bioshock, I'd say Bioshock Infinite does get progressively darker. Yeah. Bioshock 1 starts pretty dark and stays there. The thing with Bioshock Infinite, though, is that, like, it's already dark when you know what's going on. Yeah. If, you pl like, if you're playing Bioshock Infinite, you've already played the first two Bioshock games, so by that point, you already know something's up. Yeah. I guess... I guess Doki Doki Literature Club would be a really good choice. Like, honestly, I think Doki Doki Literature Club is, like, one of the better examples of that kind of thing. Yeah. Um. <sighs> I want to say Pony Island, but not really. Pony Island starts dark pretty much, like, right out of the gate as mm -hmm. well. Huh. Twilight Princess? Eh. Or maybe, maybe Wind Waker? Maybe you could say Wind Waker. Wind Waker in terms of stakes, yeah. In terms of darkness, eh. Like, you get the Puppet Ganon, I guess, and like... Oh, wait a second. Tears of the Kingdom. If you know, you know. Okay, alright. Kinda, sorta. I'll, I'll give you that one. Uh, again, like, not the best example. I wouldn't say, like, that counts, but if you know, you know. Yeah. Um, oh, Explorers of the Sky is a good one. Ooh, Pokemon Mystery Dungeon. Yeah, that's a great choice, that, actually. That's a good pick. Ooh, yeah, Explorers of Sky gets really, really insane. I like that answer. The Redeads are scary in all contexts? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, man, I, yeah, I would probably say Explorers of Sky is, like, probably the best, like, the best example of that idea. Because, like, yeah, that game gets pretty freaking dark. In a way, Persona 4 does. Yeah. Honestly, like, a lot of the Persona games do. Like, yeah. in a way. Stakes keep building. Mm -hmm. Fog gets to be a scarier concept over over time. 
Uh, somebody recommended CrossCode. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think you could say CrossCode does that. Mm -hmm. Uh, Three Houses, maybe. Three Houses, yeah, in a way. But, like, that's less dark and more, like, dreadful in a way. Because, like, it's talking about, like, you know, the whole yeah. horror thing. Oh, jeez. What do we got this time? Where would you rather be? A room of Scarfy with a vacuum or a room of Redead with a speaker that only plays Nickelback? Like, the Redeads are worse, but at least their screams block out the music. <laughs> <laughs> wow! Someone's not a fan of Nickelback. Do I have to turn the vacuum on? <laughs> <laughs> like, at the very... Like, I'd probably go with the Scarfies, because at the very least, the Scarfies go down in one hit. I could just use the vacuum as a, as a bludgeon. Yeah. Yeah, I think I I think I'd take my chances with with the Scarfies. <sighs> Hydrate. Earthbound's a pretty good choice. Um, mm. Mother Three, I'd say even more so. That's actually a really good choice too. Yeah. Um, I saw another suggestion up there, and now I already forget it, or maybe I didn't see it on there. Um. I mean, I'm playing um, Phoenix Wright Dual Destinies right now, and that's Ooh. that's going some places. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. That's a really good one. No, dude, like I think you'll I think you'll enjoy the twist in that game. Like that that game got they, that game had me shocked, which admittedly is not that hard to do, but you know. Yeah. I just got through the. I liked the third case a lot. Um, it does minor spoilers. Um, it does have yet another, like, mystery game example of, like, where one of the twists you need to figure out is that a character that you think is a boy is actually a girl or vice versa. And I was just kind of like, huh, oh, jeez. It's not the worst handling of it I've ever seen, but I, I rolled my like eyes Like, you're just so tired hard. of it at this point? Yeah. Um, oh, 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 uh, Spec Ops The Line gets darker and darker and darker. That's good heist music. Okay, if I recall correctly, this one is... I remember this level specifically for one of the crystal shards. We need fire needle. Yes, we need the fire arrow. Which is the first uh, combo ability you showed off in this playthrough. Oh, Super Paper Mario is a good choice, somebody Ooh, said. That's true. Um, Chrono Trigger, I, I think, could qualify, yeah. Okay, whoever's doing that trumpet, yo, <laughs> they're going so hard. I want to see like a Waddle Dee in the band doing that, just going. <laughs> yeah, grab that fire. That one desire. I am filled with ire. You are, you are, you are. Gotcha. Nice job. All right, now you're a bow. And remember, you can also jump while you're charging arrows, which is which is very silly. Oh, drawn to life, Jeppo Ooh, said. That's good a good one. one. I also saw a Mori up there. Um, somebody's saying Bravely Default. I haven't played Bravely Default. Uh, yeah, kind of, in a way. <laughs> I remember Wombo mentioned, like, going through an oh, entire Oh, yeah, you can play the whole like game that. as a bow, yeah. Uh, Mario & Luigi Partners in Time is also a pretty dark game. Ooh, so yeah, says. that's a good okay, one. Okay, yeah. Um, Celeste, I think, is a curve of darkness. I think it gets pretty dark in the middle, and then I think it slides back down and you overcome it. Uh, Final Fantasy IV kind of says pancakes. Kind of. Uh, would Xenoblade 2 count? I don't know. I haven't played it. Uh, kind of. 
I'll admit though, like I didn't beat Xenoblade 2 because I just couldn't get I, I just couldn't get through through it. Uh, somebody said, would Hollow Knight count? I don't know because I feel like Hollow Knight's kind of like kind dark of from the get-go, admittedly. Yeah. You could argue it gets darker, but the thing is, like the the entire game has like an like a whole like vibe of somberness throughout the entirety of it. Got it. Yeah, that's that one's way too well hidden. Shish. Okay, now to get rid of this terrible power up. Yeah, there's one more that will appear in the middle of a room after you clear it. Oh my gosh, yeah, and then this will be the very last crystal shard, my guy. Like, holy crap, <laughs> dude. Four hours! Four, four to five hours? Like, what the heck? Yeah. I'd say we did pretty good. Uh, for your consideration, GDC. <laughs> nice. So here's the question. We have to fight Miracle Matter next. Um, what do you want to use to take on Miracle Matter? Say again? We have to take on Miracle Matter next. Yeah. What, what ability do you want to use to take him on? I mean, we kind of have to, like, go in his base, Kirby, because of the way Miracle Matter works. Yeah. Either that or you can be patient and wait for him to use the forms that you have. Uh, somebody asked, what are your thoughts on X-Men 97? I think it looks really cool, and it I'm looks excited great, honestly. to watch it. I just haven't yet. Yeah, I haven't had a chance to watch it myself, but I am looking forward to seeing it. Ah, jeez. I'm losing it. You can't win. They have the high ground. By the way, Wave Runner, fifth guy, thank you for the, uh, thank you for the bits. Uh, does Dragon, does Dragon Guard count as a game that keeps getting darker? Um, I have not played Dragon Guard. Uh, Zerdus Curtis asked opinions on Matt Pat's retirement. Um, I mean, good for him. Good he's, for him, honestly. He's stepping back. He's, I think he's done what he has wanted to do on YouTube, and now he's stepping back into a more management directorial position where he's not going to have his face on. And, like, I don't know. I think that's going to be ultimately good for him. Yeah, definitely. You, you either quit the hero or live long enough to see yourself become the villain. And there have been some small Matt Pat controversies but for the most part i think yeah everybody well, felt pretty good with him as he left goodness gracious we we breeze through this what the heck honestly like <laughs> i kind of want to wait for the rest of the drinks now because like we went through this really fast okay here's an idea uh, what if we back out and we look at the uh, files that you've picked up since you're not going to pick up anymore? We can yeah, see sure. Who, who you got file cards of. Um, you might actually have to, like, relaunch the game. Well, thankfully, this game has a very convenient reset button. Yeah, I'm going to be honest with you. I did not expect us to get through this so quickly. 99. Like, Kirby was that short? Yep. And then if any of you motherfuckers in the chat say, of course he's short, he's eight inches tall, I'm gonna fucking end you. <laughs> say it, say it, do it. Uh, yeah, enemy info. I also just like this theme a lot. So, like, is this all it is? Is just yeah? I think it's just cards of the characters. Wispy Woods. Wispy I'm actually surprised here. we got these. Or like, do you get the bosses automatically? Nope, they're randomly factored in. Wow, that. I'm surprised we actually got it. In fact, you can see the card for uh, the final, final boss of the game before you face him. NZ. NZ. Classic Gordo. Uh, we got Poppy Brothers Jr. Poppy Bros! Poppy Bros! Poppy Bros! Who do you think you are? Poppy Bros! Poppy Bros! Poppy Bros! Poppy Bros! <laughs> we had to do that at least <laughs> once together. Blowfish. Bonehead. <laughs> yeah, he's a real bonehead. Uh, what are your top three video game adaptations, be it movie, TV show, or anime? Huh, good question. Ah! Of course, Kirby is short. He's eight inches tall. Good use of resources, Gino. 
Very good. That, <sighs> that was worth $5. Hey, hon, can we get that next drink? <laughs> Please? <laughs> Thank you! Gino, you have driven Oscar to alcoholism. Congratulations. Bruh, North did that last stream during our Risk of Rain uh, run. Jesus Christ. <laughs> what else we got? Squibby. Squibby. And I will never, ever, 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 ever write a song about Squibby. <laughs> Oh, man, dude, like you were the one who got me into Homestar Runner yeah. and uh, yeah, that's and classic. strong bad emails. Yeah, speed mails. I'm, I'm a big speed mail fan. I am not gonna write an email song this week. Oh, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> punk, punk. Hey, oh, I get punk. it, cause he's a punk. He's got the mohawk. Oh my god, that's great. Hey, punk. We got no. 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 <laughs> Burnus. <laughs> nah, tr try again. That name's not good enough. Zeus. Zeus. I like that one. Zeus. Plug. Plug. Oh, I get it, because he's Zeus. He's Zeus. <laughs> God damn it. Zeus, the big guy. Bumber. Bumber. What's going on with his foot there? Yeah, he's, um... His other foot, too, is kind of, like, clipping into his body. Hi, Scarfy. Yariko. Yariko. Sparky. Mumbies. <laughs> Mumbies. And Mupu. Very nice. I'd say that's a pretty good haul here. <laughs> Considering that, like, I kind of just give it going at them haphazardly. Uh, have you ever played Super Robot Wars? Very, very briefly. Extremely briefly. Uh, that would be a total of fifty dollars I donated for this. Happy birthday, buddy! Thank you so much, Gina. Like that is very much appreciated. Um, you know what? Actually, since we have the opportunity, might as well show these off. Yeah, yeah, these are pretty neat. Uh, I don't know if we can do multiplayer. No, we would need another controller that we don't have here right now. That's all right. Are we ready for the next stream? Uh, yes, we yes. are. Yeah. All right. So what? Ooh, this one looks uh, this one looks a little more fancy. So this is the Masked Knight. Ah. Hmm. Okay. It is one ounce of dark rum, an ounce of lime juice, half an ounce of Earl Grey simple syrup. Um, the glass has been smoked with sage, muddled with rosemary, and served in a whiskey glass. The glass has been smoked. Wow. Wow. So, yeah. The Masked Knight, otherwise known as the Meta Knight. Dude, the nose on this. Just, just give that a smell. Whoa. Yeah, I can smell the sage. Mm-hmm. Here we go. Smells like a, uh... Uh, metaphysics store. <laughs> wow. You know, I hate the obvious pun here, but that is very sharp. Oh, because <laughs> it kind of cause Meta Knight. That was unintentional. Mm. <laughs> yeah, very strong, very sharp, this one. Like, this one... This one is not easy compared to the ones we've had so far. This one, like, this one's definitely for the <laughs> more mature audience. Kirby, in order for you to partake in this drink, you need to understand that you need to be more mature than you are <laughs> now. Kirby, like, puts on a tie. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Yeah, I see why this would get banned in Smash Bros. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. That is good. I really like the idea of smoking the glass. Yeah, no, that that is actually like something I learned because of her. And you'd be surprised, like what kind of thing, what kind of like creative, like the kind of creativity you can go with with that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is very sharp. This is. This is the kind of drink I would have, like, at your actual bar. Like, a night out in the bar. I feel like not fancy enough for this drink. I feel like I need to be dressed better <laughs> to drink this. <laughs> With a mask and a cape? Yeah. 
<laughs> Kirby, you must become the Star Warrior. <laughs> oh. Nah, this is really, really good. Like, it's sharp. It's like... Again, like, it's not as... It's not as sweet, but this is definitely uh, more on the... Uh... This is definitely more on the sour end. That's certain. Still very enjoyable, though. You know what's funny? The more I drink it, the more I enjoy it. Like, it has a bit of an acquired taste type of thing. Yeah, definitely the second sip I took, I tasted more of the, like, fruit mm -hmm. notes of it. Yeah, like, it hits you, like, it hits you, like, on the first sip, but then the more you have, the the easier it gets. Yeah, it's like, it's like a good boss fight. Like, the first time it kicks your ass, but then you... <laughs> You start to kind of appreciate the mechanics of it more, and you can handle it. It's like you're being trained. Yeah. <laughs> Meta Knight is training you for the bar. <laughs> <laughs> Drink me. <laughs> Drink me. <laughs> Fight me. <laughs> Come. Seduce me. <laughs> Whoa, Meta Knight. <laughs> No, that's a good, that's another good one, honey. Well done. Thank you. Honestly, like the big one for me is the nose on this. Like, what, like you take a sip and you can just like smell the sage. You can smell the garnish. You can smell your garnish game is on point. Seriously. Thank you. Though. Mm. I don't usually drink, but when I do, I <laughs> I don't usually drink, but when I do, I drink the last night. <laughs> Stay thirsty, my friends. My wish. Is to find the most powerful warrior in the universe and drink him under the table. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, actually? What's funny is that, like, like this is like the Mass Knight. I would like to see a variant of this called the Galactica Knight. Ooh. Like, and that would actually be really cool. And then, like, you kind of, like, blend the two together into Morpho Knight. <laughs> I was going to say, you're drinking it outside and a butterfly comes and lands on it and everybody's like, No! <laughs> like that that would be really that would be like just an interesting thing for like a future stream if we were ever to get back into that you could you, you could like make one of those coffee table cookbooks of these oh absolutely oh, yeah. people, like, would, people would buy it she actually would she actually plans to do so with all the recipes we've put together so far yeah you've been like you, i think that'd be great a record of them yeah I'm, I'm i'm thinking like once we hit around maybe 75 to 100 recipes i'm gonna actually publish a book of Coca-Cola in it. Yeah. I think that would be amazing. I'd buy that. Absolutely. So yeah, there you go, guys. Hmm. Yeah, like it it gets easier the more I drink it. And that's like kind of fitting. It's filling you with sage wisdom. The funny thing is, is like that's not a thing that's like unheard of with drinks. Like there are drinks that like do get easier the more you drink them. It's like it, it's one of those like, oh yeah, this drink has an evolution type thing. You know what I, I mean? I feel like I don't drink that much. I feel like I've never experienced that before, like this right now. But mm -hmm. like you're absolutely right. Uh, what what's a good example of a drink that does that, um, babe? Oh, um... Like, a, like, I know there are some popular drinks that have that sort of, like, evolution, where it's like, yeah, it gets easier. I guess when more... I started drinking scotch, I kind of, like... Honestly, I think old fashions are like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, old fashions, like, are kind of, like, difficult at first, but the more you have it, the easier it gets. And I think that's kind of, like, what's going on here as well. Hmm. You want the rest? Sure. Thank you very much. <laughs> Kirby, here, have this drink. Wait, how old are you now? <laughs> uh, the water skull drink? Oh, yeah, sure. Hang on. <laughs> I don't think Kirby can get drunk. I don't think Kirby has a liver. That's a good question, actually. I, I think when Kirby All eats the drinks, things, they just go to like, the void, the, the, void the, <laughs> the other dimension that mm -hmm. is his stomach. By the way, fun fact, honey. Yes? We're at the final boss already. Uh, so I've heard downstairs. Yeah, we got through this really quickly, actually. Yeah, we are, we are just <laughs> busting down this like, game. Like, super fast. Two speeds. Fast and way too fast. <laughs> super fast. Well, you better get ready, because the next the next drink is actually going to be a twofer. Oh. Actually, that works out. Oh, um, Honestly, like, you could probably, like, you could probably, like, bring that up, like, within the next 10, 15 minutes or so. We're going to do some minigames. 
uh, because we're kind of like trying not to go to the end like immediately. So yeah, let's play yeah. some mini games and then we'll take on the last two bosses. All right. So All right. yeah, uh, whenever you're ready. All right. Sounds good. Let's Thank do you this. so much. Yeah. Thank you. I'm definitely gonna need some pizza after this, though. I'll Guys, tell you, this I'll is a great that. gig. If you can ever get on Oscar's stream, they they bring you drinks, they bring you pizza. <laughs> hey, Ga Gage was Gage already beat you to it on that one, but yeah, Man, I feel like I booked. Nah, like it, it's really fun uh, you wanna, doing do you this wanna, kind of thing, and it, it was just like. Should I have a coaster for this bad boy here? Nah, you're fine. Okay. If you want, you can use that. Um, I don't think it's gonna. Oh, it is perfectly shaped for that glass. Well, not not just that, but this thing, like, stretches out. Oh. Technology. Amazing. Technology. It's plastic. Which we did not even have until after World War One. Fair enough. By the way, uh... Oh, thank you. Oh, I think that's part of my, um, headphones deteriorating. <laughs> oh, fair enough, fair enough. Yeah, yeah, it's this stuff here. These headphones are kind of old. Um, it's the it's in a pair, Lolo Lo and La La La, perhaps. You'll have to find out and wait and see. Hmm. Uh, what's a story where you actually root for the villain rather than the hero? Ooh. Hmm. I'd say, like in Invader Zim, there are episodes where you're rooting for Zim, and there are episodes where you're rooting for Dib. Depends on the episode. Oh yeah. So I, is it one button to jump two and one button to jump one? Uh, the A button to jump two, the B button to jump one. I like that he uses the gourmet race. Ah! Ah, Zafer! Happy birthday, fellow March birthday king. Also, hey, Comic and Amber. Hope you guys are all having a great time, smiley face. Thank you so- no, it actually, like, was that out the smiley face. That was from Zafer. That was Zafer. Dude, thank you for coming in, bro. Hey, man. Good to see you. Or, or to, to hear you. Or to hear a facsimile of you. <laughs> I actually do remember playing these mini games with a, with some friends when I was uh, when I was a kid. Uh, Bob the Red says, Oscar, which Nintendo peripheral did you think was actually pretty good? And what Nintendo peripheral is the worst? Ooh, good question. Give it um, up for the DK Bongos! I was actually going to say, the DK Bongos are pretty darn good. Okay, we're on normal difficulty now. Oh, this is giving me, like, Pokemon Stadium vibes with the, like, different colors of characters. Yeah, apparently Kirby's Air Ride was supposed to be a Nintendo 64 game originally and would have that, been out that before That blows this. my mind because Kirby's Air Ride is pretty, like, complicated. Yeah, they and they shelved it for a while and then it came out for the GameCube. <clears throat> like, I think Kirby's Air Ride is a fantastic game. Personally. Same with, um, Kirby's Return to Dreamland, or what eventually became Kirby's Return to Dreamland, originally was being marketed for the GameCube. Oh, yeah. And there were there was a trailer for it. I would watch the trailer all the time. Nintendo seems to have a trend with that because I remember Twilight Princess was a similar set, was a similar gig. Yeah. GameCube, uh, Twilight Princess launched simultaneously for both the GameCube and the Wii. Yep. See, so, yeah, I'm basically just going to go through all of these. I guess there's... And yeah, like, uh, the arena gets one? different. Whoa. That's kind of weird how, like, the spots on the ground move, but the pattern on the ground doesn't. Oh, yeah. It's freaking me out a little bit. So... I, I guess I understand why. So one thing I would actually like to do sometime, like, if we ever find an opportunity to do so, right? I would love to stream Mario Party uh, that, with, like, you and friends. That'd be great. I'm down. I'm always down for some Mario Party. Mm hmm You have a favorite Mario Party? Um, off the top of my head, I'd probably say Mario Party 2, but at the same time, like, 3 is really good. Yeah. Um, so is, like, Mario Party, I think 5 is the one that's really good. 5 and 6 are the ones I've played the <laughs> least, because those are the only mainline ones I don't have. And 10, I haven't played 10. I also will say, like, 
I know a lot of people don't agree with this, but I have a soft spot for Mario Party 9. I Yeah, I think Mario Party 9 is pretty okay. Like, okay, I will say this. I understand why people don't like Mario Party 9's boards. Like, I get it. You're riding a car together, um, and, like, it's just, like, one linear path. I get why people don't like yeah. that, but I think there's, like, a different kind of mind game mm -hmm. that happens with that, Definitely. and I, I kind of appreciated that. On the other hand... Mario Party 9, I think, has, like, some of the best selections of minigames. Yeah. Like, the minigames in, like, Mario Party 9 are fan-fucking-tastic. It especially was a the... huge step up from 8 in terms of minigames. The... Also, the boss minigames? Super cool! Yeah. Super sick! Like, I, 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 I am a Mario Party 9 apologist, personally. Like, yeah. I know a lot of people not are not a big fan of it. I actually like it, personally. And now we have intense difficulty. I think it's crazy that we never got any DLC for Mario Party Superstars. Yeah. This looks low-key stressful. It is. Oh. At first I thought you were just like in the sky. But no, you're like over a lake. By the way, you can see how this is intense difficulty because I lost this one. Let's try it again. Yeah, I think that'll be a good way to pander this is like, um, just see if I can get all the intense difficulty victories here. See? Not all pandering is bad, people. <laughs> I know that's not the same kind of pandering, but you know what I mean. Hey, I like pandas. They're endangered, so we need to take care of them. <laughs> you know, the giant pander. That movie just came out, Kung Fu Panda 4. I still have yet to watch Kung Fu Panda 4, and Kung Fu Panda 3, uh, and Kung Fu Panda 2 is like one of my favorite movies of all time. I heard 4 was disappointing. That's what I heard too. Like, I, I heard it's not terrible, but it's not like... It's no, it's no Kung Fu Panda 2 or 3. And even then, like, 3, from what I understand, is not the greatest either. I haven't seen 3 yet. Um, I've only seen the first two, and those are both for you. In my personal opinion, Kung Fu Panda 3 is good too. But I still think Kung Fu Panda 2 is the best of the bunch. That's my personal opinion, anyway. Yeah, I guess I don't need my guide anymore, so I can just keep an eye on stream. Yeah, we did good there. <laughs> oh, fifth guy redeemed a spontaneous top three. Uh, laid on me. Um, Oscar and John, I redeemed a spontaneous top three. Um, okay. Oh, I'm sorry, we even mentioned this, and then we kind of lost focus. Oh. Um what are your top three video game adaptations, be it movie, oh, yeah. TV show, or anime? I'd like to... So, are we saying a movie, TV show, or anime being adapted into a video game? Or a video game being adapted into a movie, TV show, or anime? I think it's that. Like, a video game being adapted to other media. So, I could say, like, like uh, The <clears throat> Last of Us on HBO. I was actually going to say, I think The Last of Us is one of the better examples. Like, the, the TV series In is actually memory, really good. At least, yeah. Um, I know you like the Sonic movies just fine with that. Do you think make a top three I, I for think, you? Uh, the first and second Sonic movies, like, as far as I'm concerned, like, are actually really enjoyable. Are they the best? No. Are they fun? Yes. Um, that is the best way I can put it. But, like, honestly, like, if you're going to choose an adaptation of Sonic the Hedgehog, I actually do recommend watching the movies. Man, this is hard. Um, I've never actually watched a Yakuza movie. I didn't know there was a Yakuza movie. I didn't know either. That's news to me. There's a lot of, like... Yeah, there's a lot I haven't seen in terms of, like, I haven't seen the Uncharted movie. Um, the Uncharted movie, for what I to understand, was, like, a little bit disappointing, but not terrible. Yeah. It, it looks like it would be fun. I just... I don't know. Um, I did not like the Ratchet and Clank movie. Yeah, I didn't either. Um, for just how big it is, the Pokemon anime, I think, deserves mention. I mean, yeah, like... The games came first, right? Yes. 
Um, I will say, like, I think the I think the Pokemon anime got better over time. Um, yeah. I think it started peaking during the Hoenn season. Um, if only because like some of the Pokemon battles that they have presented in there like are fantastic. Like we all know, we love in um, Infernape and the Infernape versus like the Bio. Oh, and Sinnoh, yeah, yeah. I think. Oh, it was Sinnoh. Sinnoh yeah. was when we start getting some really good fights. Um, even then, like, ah, oh, jeez, I'm trying to remember. Uh, yeah, Ho no, Hoenn actually had some good ones too because I remember there was that really really cool battle. Uh, between Sceptile and Cineroar, or and and um, not Incineroar, Blaziken. Uh, Blaziken. Yeah, yeah. The the battle between um, May and um, and Ash we, between Blaziken and Sceptile, really, really good. Um, I did say it before, but uh, somebody asked, "What about The Last of Us on on Max?" Yes, definitely. I, I think that's a great one. That's definitely a good one. I will say this: like, if you want to get into The Last of Us but are not interested in playing video games at all, the series on IMAX is actually a really good way to do it. Yeah. Like they, they, like they definitely do a really good job adapting The Last of Us to a, a series. Man, that's a lot easier for me to think of negative examples <clears throat> than positive. Um, I mean, they have a, they, they have that reputation for a reason. Like, like we joke about it, but there's truth in jest. Yeah. Like I guess I thought the Mario movie was fine. The Mario movie was okay. Like I, I had fun with that movie. Yeah. Is it a good movie? debatable but it's not a terrible movie at the very least i had fun with it like that that's kind of the i i think that's the main takeaway personally like i'm not looking at the mario movie as like the greatest thing of all time it it was fun and, not, if, and if i had fun watching it then that's really all i can ask for i have not watched the persona 3 anime yet um i did <sighs> watch a lot of the persona 5 anime and i thought it was pretty lame honestly honestly the the persona anime's yeah, not really. It's like the animation to me. They make it... it, it it's very... Well, why does the old ad attack in an anime look worse than in a video game? It has some good moments, I will say that. Also, Tanuki Player. Yes, you're correct. The Castlevania Netflix series. Oh! Mwah! Yes, yes, that mwah, one. Mwah, mwah, mwah. That one right there. Fantastic! A lot of people are saying uh, Sad AM. Oh, Sad AM was actually pretty good. Yeah. I actually do like that iteration of Sonic. I think maybe the Sonic comics in general both the archie and the idw comics i agree have a lot going for them i do agree um i want i want to talk about castlevania though mm. what a great series the only criticism i have is that they didn't bring in my boy grant and nasty <laughs> aside from that though damn those series are fantastic like all three seasons of um trevor's arc with saifa and Alucard, fantastic. And I cannot wait for the next season of Nocturne. Dude, incredible. Absolutely incredible. Like, yeah, Castlevania Nocturne? Fantastic. Do you want to know the funniest thing? The biggest worry I had is that they were going to butcher Maria Renard's character in Castlevania Nocturne. They did not. She is awesome. She and is I really love cool. it. Okay, I got a, I got a weird one. Um... The anime Steins Gate is based off of a visual novel, Steins Gate. That's true. And the anime is very, very good. I've never actually seen the anime of Steins Gate. That wouldn't be a very difficult adaptation, mind you, but it I mean, is an adaptation and it's very good. Funny enough, I remember watching. Okay, this is a weird one, but I remember watching this and it wasn't act. It wasn't that bad, but it was just kind of mediocre. Was Professor Layton in the Eternal Diva? Oh yeah, I never, I never watched that. Like it was, a, it was an animated movie. And it was strange. It was kind of weird, but it wasn't bad. I will say, Gabe was one of the best sword fights between Leighton and Descalay. Like, actually, it was actually kind of sick. Oh, oh I hear puppy. <laughs> I hear puppy whining down there. She really wants to come up. <laughs> Bring her up for a bit. We're, right. we're, we're having some fun here. Puppy. Bring puppy, her up for a bit. Puppy. Hey, Blazing Knights watching YouTube on the Switch for some reason. <laughs> you can do that? A bit. Uh, I know you can do that. <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh, when I hear Trevor, I think of Trevor Phillips from GTA 5. Yeah, not the same Trevor, brother. Hey. Okay, all right. Aww. Easy, easy. <laughs> Stay. Stay, baby. We are too excited. Thanks. Come here. I don't it's think you're okay. It's okay, Kishki. <laughs> I think she forgets I'm in here every time. <laughs> Like, she doesn't see you often, so this is, like, a new thing for her. Oh, stay. Stay. I know. I know. Oh, 
Oh, here's a puppy. Oh, here's a puppy. Hey, it's okay, it's okay. There you go, there you go. Oh, you're good, you're good. Say hello to all the people. Fishki. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> all right, there you go. My favorite part of your last countdown um, was there's a part where you're on screen and Kishki's like on the bed behind you, like watching. Yep. And you like do a gesture with your hand like this, and Kishki goes like, <laughs> "Oh man, that that was my that was my countdown with uh, Mech, right? Yep. Uh, yeah, that was my high five rush." Uh, does Kishki have separation anxiety? We are actually we actually kind of think she does. Um, she has um. She's had a habit of, like, getting very whiny um, when we're not paying attention to her. So, like, again, we're, like, we're trying to, like, train her a little bit in, like, you know, making sure, like, letting her know that, hey, just because we're not paying attention to her doesn't mean we're ignoring her in a way. But, yeah, we, we're we thinking that because when we, when we, uh, when we went to adopt her, um, she was kind we could tell she was the runt of the litter because she was the only, she was the only, uh, the only one of her litter that had black fur and she was easily one of the younger ones um i think also she um was the most secluded because again when we went to go see the farmer who was like you know uh who was like adopting her to us um like they had like he had like a litter of like seven shiba inus every single one of them rushed us to greet us like like you know jumping on our legs like greeting us is like oh human human like i human interaction like oh my god you're a human who are you i've never seen you before kishki on the other hand immediate ran away oh ran away hiding under a hiding under one of the tractors and is like uh and when we approached her she would like back off and like get very nervous so yeah, like I actually would not be surprised if she actually does have a little bit of separation anxiety. Does she do the thing with like um, Nugget will like chew on blankets and like like suck on them pretty much? Does Kishki ever do that? No, uh, she doesn't. She doesn't do that. What she does a lot is um, chewing up fabric. Okay. Like we give her a toy, like say um, say oh, okay, best example. We ha we have we gave her a toy of like a stuffed wolf. She chewed the ears off that thing. It's like... Yeah. Basically just ate them. Might just like chewing, I don't know. She likes fabric. Yeah. She really, really, really likes fabric. We found a tennis ball. Like, a squeaky tennis ball that's, like, meant to be a, a, a dog's toy. She chewed She the, unwrapped it. She unwrapped it and chewed the... Literally chewed the fiber off of it. Nice. I was like, what is... Why are you like this? So we have to get her toys that are like not easily destroyed, because she has she has a very destructive streak. Let me tell you. Um, how old is Kishki? She's like eight, nine months around. Uh, she's gonna be a year soon, that's for sure. But now nah, she is a very she is a very uh, attention seeking pup, that's for sure. She loves attention, and she wants it all the time. And I am convinced that she is trying to eat me. <laughs> Delicious father. No, seriously, I am very convinced that the, that that dog is trying to eat me. Cause whenever like we're like whenever Amber and I are just like laying in bed, just watching like TikTok or like you know hanging out while I'm playing the Switch and whatnot, like immediately on top of me, and then she chews my beard. <laughs> She tries to chew my beard off. And while I appreciate the attention, it's not fun. It's very cute to watch, though. Oh, I'm sure. But I don't like my beard being pulled. Or eaten. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I understand if she wants to lick my face. I get that. But I don't want her chewing on my beard. It hurts. I, mean, I don't know why the beard. She likes fibers. She likes fabric. Yeah, yeah I guess that's the... like the fabric of your face. Basically. Actually, though, what do we got, honey? What do you got, Amber? So the sixth drink, I would say, is something whimsical. What? Guys, there's a fro- What? There's literally a frozen piece of ice in here, like, frozen to the glass. What is- Oh my- 
Yo, look at the coloring on this. This is the coin circus, or I should say side one of a coin. Okay. Wait a second, is this Marx? Yes, this is Marx. Oh, God. This side in particular is the friend of Kirby. <laughs> okay, go on. The friend of Kirby. Five ounces of gin, um, roughly five ounces each of grenadine and blue curacao. Um, it was originally supposed to be topped with tonic water, but I couldn't quite get it to uh, stay the, with the gradation. So there's no tonic water in this. So it's pretty basically a shot. Oh God. All right. How did you do this? Um, so I took uh, water, um, I took saran wrap, uh, Covered the the top of it, flipped it on its side, stuck it in the freezer, and it froze like that. Smart. Wow. All right. Very cool. So the friend of Kirby. Quote unquote friend. Here goes. Like, what's the whole thing called again? The coin circus. Uh, the coin circus. Two sides of a coin. All right. Here goes. <laughs> oh, wow. So it looks very pretty. It looks very whimsical. <laughs> but it is not a friend. <laughs> no. In no, fact, it is not. It, it, Holy. It ha you have yet to experience its true form. Oh, my God. This is side two, the enemy of Kirby. Oh, oh no, God. he's merged with Star Dream. So is this like supposed to be a chaser? Uh, pretty much. Okay, so what's this? So this is. Yeah, go ahead and try that out. <laughs> this is the enemy of Kirby. It is one ounce of blueberry liqueur, Half an ounce of lemon juice, half an ounce of ginger liqueur, five dashes of orange bitters, and garnish with an orange slice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good drink, Amber. Great job. <laughs> it's okay, John. It's not supposed to taste good. It's really no. It's great. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> like you meant for this to be like super strong and just like. In yeah. your face. Honestly, like, it was painful and I liked it. Yes. <laughs> Kinda. Mmm. <laughs> I love how I love how the blue rises to the top. Like yeah. actually though. <sighs> okay. That's something. <sighs> and the enemy of Kirby? Mm-hmm. Do you want to wash out the friend of Kirby first? Wow. Nope. Nope. These two go together. These two go together. <sighs> that is... That is powerful. All right. Let's try phase two here. Give me give me one more here. Okay. Mm. Uh. Oh, but just the smell. Just, right. The that smell is, is like... I'm bringing it to my lips, but, like, the smell is stopping me. <laughs> like, that is tart. That is super strong. That is super tart. Wow. Whew. It, <laughs> it tastes like wrath. A <laughs> you, you, what a, you know what it is? It kind of gives me, like... Okay, I don't like this, but it's like a, but it's like black licorice, but I can actually eat it. What do we have in here again? Uh, this is the uh, side two, yeah. um, or enemy of Kirby. Uh, what is in it? Oh, it is blueberry liqueur, uh -huh. lemon juice, ginger liqueur, orange bitters, and garnish with an orange slice. Okay. Yeah, it, it, it's meant to be a very bitter slash sour slash tart um, beverage. 
I, I like this a lot because I see this as, like, the form that, like, comes and tells you that the sun and the moon are fighting. And then, like, this is Nova at the end of Milky Way Wishes. And then this is the boss. Mm-hmm. All right. I'm going to try something with this. So I'm probably going to regret this, but here goes. Didn't think I'd be retreating into Meta Knight. Go for it. Oh, no. Oscar, this is how Mark splits in half. <laughs> You're gonna split in half and there's gonna be a black hole in the middle. <clears throat> like, as soon as it goes down, it's fine. But when it's in there... <laughs> <sighs> wow. Drinking it at the same time as Mark's soul. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to admit, though, like, having them both at the same time is not that bad, but, like, yeah, dude, you gotta have a tongue of okay, steel. May I? Go for it, go for it. Like, go one, go run right into the other, baby. I'm ready to do some things I regret. Go for it. <laughs> You're among friends here. Whew. As advertised. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It kind of does something neat on my tongue, though. It does, right? Like, yeah. You kind of have, like, a very nice, like, tart aftertaste. Yeah, that th that had phases to it. Uh-huh. Kind of like a boss fight. Gosh yeah. darn it. <laughs> this, th this is art. <laughs> and, you know, art isn't always fun. It's not always there to make you feel good, but it is an experience. It's very yeah. colorful. Yes. Like a fake friend. This is this is an excellent experience. Honestly though, like that's really fucking clever. Like, okay, I'm sorry, the blue and the red with the uh with the friend side, super cool. Super cool. Like I I dig this because I'm just going to say right now, this is not the best drink in the bunch, taste-wise. Like that it, you got to have some strong t taste buds for these. Um I will say though, like it's still palatable. Like, it's still, it still can very, very much be enjoyed, but, like, this is not meant to give you a very, like, nice, tasty experience. This is meant to, this is meant to knock you on your ass. It's a challenge. It's a bit yeah. of a challenge. Uh-huh. I okay. will say it tastes, it's, like, more exciting tasting this than just, like, drinking something that's gonna get alcohol into your body. Really oh, fast. yeah, absolutely. Like, I, if, if I'm- very if, fancy. If I'm going to, if I'm going to, like, inebriate myself, in, in, like, for lack of a better term- I think I'd rather have this than just downing a bunch of beers. Yeah. This was very cool. No, no offense to anyone who likes beers. I like beers too, but <laughs> come on. Like, beers are not the best tasting drinks out there. Sorry. I'm going to have the rest of this. I'm going to drink some water. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Like, this is, like, de again, definitely not, like, up there in terms of taste, but this is definitely one of the cleverest ones you've done so far, hon. Thank like, you. super cool. It's okay, you don't have to keep drinking the friend. <laughs> I can't even drink it. The ice is blocking it. Yeah, the ice has become a bit of an obstacle. Here's the brother Oscar, brother Oscar, brother Oscar. Here's the brother Oscar who's with us today. <laughs> Hang on a sec. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hang on a sec. Are you, oh, you might just be tasting the grenadine now. Yeah. Once you get to just the grenadine. Ooh. Oh, yeah, because all the blue is gone now. Now yeah. it's just the red. That is very, that is very sweet. Holy crap. Taking these oranges off. <laughs> yeah, that's like a whole new, that's like a whole new thing. Two-faced. Like Mark's. Yeah. <laughs> I give this drink top marks. <laughs> I'll drink to that one. I. Let me eat this orange. Oh! Whoo! That was an experience. That was an experience. Thank you so much, honey. That was awesome. Bravo. Yeah. Woo! So that was four and five, right? 
Uh, no, that was six. That was six in total. So what do we have? That was... We had Kirby, the Star Hammer, the... The banana, the, the banana Dana Dana D. D, the Meta Knight. Oh, and then the Marks, but it was two. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the friend of Kirby and the I enemy of see, Kirby. I see. I see now. I see. I see now. <laughs> I can see everything. <laughs> <laughs> Admittedly, though, that actually did, like, that That actually did, like, get to me a little bit. I'm going to need some water myself. Uh, we got a question here for you, Amber. Um, uh, Zabes asks, Amber, what is your favorite fruit juice? Mine is passion fruit, especially when they leave the seeds. What is your favorite fruit juice? Ooh, um, I'd have to say mango juice. Really? Yeah. Huh. Me personally, I'd probably go with pineapple juice. Grapefruit juice is the second. I'm pretty basic. I like my orange juice. I like a good screwdriver. Yeah. Woo! I'm good. I'm good. Um, so yeah, like of the of the drinks we've had tonight or today, I suppose, I definitely say the Starred Hammer is my favorite of the bunch. Uh, we have a Lord Chaos Nightmare redeeming and ask the Green Scorpion for a thousand. What game did you hate at first, but would say is a favorite now? I'm trying to think for you. What things of you? I'm not sure to be honest. The closest I can think is that, like, for a while, a bunch of friends, myself included, were all like, Oscar, play Danganronpa, and play, play Danganronpa. And you were like, okay, but not right now. And, like, I think, if anything, we lowered your opinion of Danganronpa by doing that. But when you did play it, you liked it? Um, yeah, but I wouldn't necessarily call that one, it's like... Not, it's not like you hated the game. Oh, no, not at all. Ooh, here's a question for me. Uh, hey, Amber, coming from someone who doesn't drink, how much work have you done with virgin drinks? Um, I've done a little bit of, like, work with, with like, mocktails here and there. Um, it's, a, it's something I could do. Um, I don't know. I, I, it's, I feel like that's, I feel like it, that is a whole different art form still. Like, I feel like mocktails and cocktails, I mean, they're similar. Um, it's just what, are, it just depends on what you're looking for them. Um, hey, Wave Runner. Um, sorry, we didn't get to your, um, we didn't get to your spontaneous top three. Just, like, remind me what it was, because, like, again, we were in the middle of drinking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, we were drinking. <laughs> no, that was really, really cool. Um, again, definitely the Star Hammer, I think, would be the best of the bunch there. But still, that, the, like, I'm sorry, the Coin Circus marks, that was an adventure. That was really, really cool. <laughs> Whew! I feel good now. Holy crap. Wave Runners asks, which characters would have the most inaccessible drinks made after them? Fresh. Just gonna say right now, I got I, I got effed up from the Chain Warden. Uh, the Great Mighty Pooh from Conquest <laughs> Battle <Saturday laughs> Day would be a pretty bad drink. Yeah. The, okay, I'm just gonna say right now, if we were to make a drink based off the Great Mighty Pooh, it would involve chocolate in some it, it would be a mudslide. And there corn. you go. Oh my god. <laughs> oh man, that would be something. What other characters would make pretty bad? Uh... I feel singed. like... Singed. Yeah. Yeah, you can make, like, a really vile concoction based on Singed. How about a drink? Um... <laughs> I'm trying to think of, like, the most vile characters. This isn't a bad one, but I'd love to see, like, a Falcon Punch. Ooh! Ooh actually, okay. though, actually, that, would be, that actually would sound pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Master Belch from Earthbound says to Nuke Flayer, yep, similar, similar concept. Yep. Kefka's fireball. <laughs> um, uh, while this is going on, I'm going to do this. I think if you were playing Portal, you could do one based on GLaDOS called the Neurotoxin. Ooh, that sounds pretty good. Na -na 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 
You can make a drink based on Kepka that's just an empty glass. <laughs> oh my god, because it's <laughs> because it's freaking nothing. <laughs> that's good. I like that. It's just water. <laughs> um, make a Kingdom Hearts one called the Nort. The Xehanort. Here's a question for you, hun. If you were to make a drink called the Keyblade, how would you do it? The Keyblade? Hmm. Key lime? Ooh. That's not a bad idea, actually. That's Hang a on a sec. I don't know anything about mixing drinks, but I know how to make a pun. The funny thing is, like, that's kind of, that's sometimes the best way to go about it. Yeah. I could see, I could see something with like key lime and stuff. Um, it, depending on like which keyblade holder we're going off of, that would influence the drink a lot too. Oh yeah, that's right. Cause it's like you know you would you would base it differently based on like whether it's Sora mm -hmm. or Riku or Kyrie even. Oh yeah. I imagine Sora's drink would be so vanilla. Like it would be like the easiest shit to drink ever. Oh, what if it's like key lime and like sea salt for for like Roxas? For Roxas? Yeah. Ooh, I like that actually. Yeah, that's a good idea. So, like a like salted that. rim. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you made a drink based on Wario, it would probably have to have garlic in it, so I feel like that oh, would be Oh god, that would yeah, be a that, that sounds that sounds rancid. Uh, Tanuki player says a princess peach drink would just be uh, peach schnapps. Pretty much. Pretty much. Now you could probably make a you could make something really cool out of peach. Yeah, like peach brandy. You could do yeah, like peach schnapps. There's a lot of things, different things you could do. Straight up, I like. Oh yeah, that's right. I forgot they have bombs in this uh, level. Straight up, I think peach schnapps is delicious. Personally. Yeah, I don't know what the liqueur would be, but like a Roxas would be something with like key lime and a salted rim. And it would be on the rocks. Yeah. Yeah. On the Roxas. Um, Axles would definitely involve Fireball in some way. Hmm. It would be called the Got It Memorized. <laughs> <laughs> Burn, baby. It it, it 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 would definitely it would definitely involve Fireball. Maybe uh, maybe some cinnamon. I mean, Fireball is basically cinnamon. That's fair. <laughs> Mega Man would have a lemon drink based shot. Wait, what? Mega Man would have a lemon drink based shot. Because <laughs> lemon. Because he fires lemons. <laughs> Yo, I would not mind it's having the lemon a, shot. <laughs> I, I, actually, I, I'm gonna be honest with you. Like a Mega Man based like uh, set of drinks actually sounds pretty awesome. That I would does. totally be down for that. A green tea shot would be, uh, the, um, oh, uh, Axel Rose. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, for Axel the Red? Yeah. Ooh. Yeah! That Axel sounds awesome! Rose. Yeah, like, dude, you could, you could go so cool. You could do some really, really cool shit based on, like, the Mavericks from the X-Series. Like, imagine, like, a, uh, imagine, like, a flaming cocktail based off of Flame Hyenard. I'm thinking like Sonic drinks with like an Amy Rose. <laughs> That's not bad actually. That's not bad at all. I like that. Um a drink based off of silver would just be like the sweetest drink ever because the dude because is he's such, such a, a nice lake. guy, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> A drink based off of Knuckles would be like hard because like he's like a hard yeah. badass dude. Would it be bad to say I, I would put Jamaican rum in it? <laughs> oh, that sounds awesome, he's, honestly. He's got the dreads, yeah. Like I would totally be down for that. <laughs> the Pumpkin Hill. <laughs> oh, that sounds awesome, actually. <laughs> hey, yo, this is Knuckles. And we're coming in from Pumpkin Hill. <laughs> I don't chuckle. <laughs> man, like, freaking Sonic Adventure was a trip, man. <laughs> Shadow's drink being bitter, yeah. 
Yeah. His, oh yeah. His would have Jägermeister in it. Yeah. Ooh, not a bad choice actually. <laughs> the ultimate life form. Yes, that that would be what the drink is called. The ultimate life form. It's just a college frat boy drink. <laughs> <laughs> Jebo says Shadow's drink needs hot sauce in it. <laughs> Shadow's standing in the corner of the party with his drink, not talking to anybody. Drinks it, tries not to cry. <laughs> <laughs> yes! He can't actually handle alcohol. Rue's just like, Shadow, do you want to come hang out with everybody? No, they're beneath me. <laughs> <laughs> he puts it on everything. Twinkies to milk. No! Here's a question for you, hon. Yes? If you had to pick a... If you happen to pick a game series that we haven't covered yet to make drinks out of, which one would you want to do? Ooh. See, that's a tough one. Um... Let's <clears throat> see. Have we done Hades yet? What? Did, we did Hades yet, right? Or we haven't done Hades. No, that's right. We haven't done Hades. I, I don't think we've established the whole drink thing when we did Hades yet. Mm. Yo, we definitely got to do that if we're, when we stream Hades too. Oh, yep, yep. I'm trying to think of any other game series that would be fun. Oh, The Wolf Among Us. Ooh, oh. that would be interesting. Gonna yeah, make some Big Bad Wolf, some Snow White drinks, mm. some. Yo, this is legit tough. Holy crap. Yeah, you're getting bullied. Uh, somebody asked if, if you've done No Straight Roads. Have we? I don't think we have. No, we no. haven't done a drink set on No Straight Roads, no. How about drinks based on Peach Showtime costumes? Oh, that'd be pretty cool. Someone says. If we, if, like, if I decided to stream Peach, uh, Princess Peach Showtime. Yeah. Oh, there's too many games out. I have too many games I'm playing already, and I want to play I this know, game. right? Dang it. Uh, Ultima, Ultima Greninja wishes you a happy birthday, Oscar. Thank you. I'm just looking through all our comments now. <laughs> Hope and Despair, a drink by Monokuma. That's kind of what this Mark's experience was just It really now. was. It had kind of a hope and despair thing going. Mm -hmm. That also reminds me of that ramen place in Philly we went to that had the, like, the heaven, the heaven oh, bowl the, and the, the hell bowl. The, the, the heroes inch of heaven and the gates of hell. That was uh, Hito Ramen. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, at this point, I'm kind of just, like, trying to beat them all um, on intense difficulty before we move on to the final boss. Uh, Phoenix Wright drinks sound really good. That'd be fun, actually. Yeah, okay. That'd actually be pretty cool, though. I don't, I don't see a, any reasonable way for us to like stream Phoenix Wright, unless I did like a, a Phoenix Wright only, like, uh, like online set of um, like, Marvel yeah, versus Capcom or something. <laughs> you could do like maybe one case of Phoenix Wright in a stream. I don't know how super interesting it would be. Some people were wondering when I said I, like, had got the Apollo Justice Collection, they were asking me if I was going to Let's Play it, but I just, like, don't think that would make a super interesting Let's Play. <laughs> well, we have to add coffee to uh, Godot's drink. Oh, yes. absolutely! His, I, would, his would be an espresso martini. Yeah. Uh, the PA house over in Heller, Hellertown has a really good coffee-based drink that I really like. Um... Ooh. It's like a, it's like an espresso martini. Ooh, I like that. I like this one idea. A uh, darkest dungeon. Ooh, darkest dungeon would be sick. That would be super fun to do. I would totally. You know what? Actually, um, I would totally do that. Streaming darkest dungeon two. Mhm. Mm Cause like I, like I, I've been wanting to get back into that one. <laughs> the man at bar. Which uh, Darkest Dungeon character would have the worst drink? Ooh, that, that's a tough one. Nice. Got it. I'd have to revisit all the uh, characters. Um, Why do I feel like the one that would have that ha would have the worst one would be the Plague Doctor? That's the first one that came to mind for me. Or the Abomination. The Abomination yeah. probably too. Yeah. Probably would too. 
Um, if we were to do Darkest Dungeon fully, like, right out of the gate, like, two characters I know for a fact we would have to do are the Crusader and the Highwayman. Because, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. like, Renald and Dismas, yeah. like, are just so prolific in the uh, Darkest Dungeon Yeah, that's at this how you point. start. Oh, guess my phone died. Uh, do you need to charge it? Uh, let me see. I'm okay right now. Yeah, it's an iPhone charger. Ah. It, it, I have a charger with me. Plug it in, man. Uh, where do you have a spare? Um, we have we have a power strip over there if you want to use it. Okay. Yeah, while I uh, finish up these mini games, as it were. Mini game. I'm gonna go check on top. Go for it. Thank you so much for the drinks, honey. That was awesome. You're welcome. So, fun fact about this mini game, by the way, um, they remade it for uh, Kirby, uh, uh, for Kirby's Return to Dreamland remake. This one was always my favorite. This, this is a cool one. One thing I always found silly about this one is that you can easily, like, kill yourself by, like, doing the thing and then just walking forward a bit. Yeah. This one always reminded me of Bomberman. Checkmate, buddy! Um, I might have missed this one before. Thief guy used 100 bits. Oh. Um, if copyright strikes wasn't an issue on YouTube, I would suggest a video game adaptation top 10 in every media. Oh, oh. like, uh, like, games from different adaptations? Or, like, a top 10, like, movies based on games, top 10, shows based on games, top 10. That would be cool. I mean, I guess we could talk about that now. Yeah. Like, what would be some good candidates? Like, if I wasn't just trying to think of the best ones, like, there are enough there are enough shows that I think are, like, good enough to warrant a spot, like, like Kirby Right Back At Ya, or, um... Yeah, like, someone mentioned Sonic Sad AM, which I think is a great example. Yeah. Like, Sonic Sad AM was actually pretty good. I put, I put the Pokemon anime on there. Oh, definitely. Definitely. I, I would definitely put Steins Gate on there. Yeah, I've never, I've never seen the Steins Gate uh, anime. I'm now, I'm now interested because like Steins Gate is a trip and a half. Yeah, I actually never played the original visual novel, but I kind of want to now. Um, funny enough, like, um, I know Blazing Knight is a fan of uh, Steins Gate. Uh, we were actually talking about it a the bit man, when we were doing the uh, Fire yeah. Emblem Let's Play or nice. Fire Emblem uh, Countdown. I've never seen it, but there was a Fire Emblem anime way back in the day. I saw a little bit of it, and I'm just going to say right now, it is, um... A relic of its time. It, it's something! <laughs> that is the nicest way I can put it. Adeline! Dang. That was cold. Well, oh, the Cuphead show. That's a good one. Oh, actually, yeah. Kind of... Uh, I, I'll admit, like, the uh, humor and the writing of the Cuphead show is not really for me, but I'm not going to deny that it's actually pretty good. They had this weird, like, storyline involving, um, the, uh, pirate wanting to, like, get in, like, wanting to date the mermaid, Calam uh, Calamaria. Okay. That was an interesting story bit. I feel like that's just a really good idea, because you just had all these bosses that were, like, neat character designs, but it wasn't a game where you, like, got to know those characters really well. That's true. So then just kind of, like, using Looney Tunes setups to, like, give them all... To put them all in crazy situations. Oh, yeah, like, the the, the entire show is Writes very itself. much, like... Yeah. Like, cartoon logic at its finest. Oh, you asshole. Um, a very interesting example, uh, Danganronpa had an anime adaptation of Danganronpa 1, which is, which is alright. It's not as good as the game. Yeah. Um, 
Then it had um, two concurrent anime series, one of which was a prequel to both Danganronpa, the first two Danganronpa games. And then the other one was Danganronpa 3, which there is no game with, and is actually the anime is like the canning e ending to a lot of the characters from the first two Danganronpa games. Got it. Got Very it. interesting. Um, I'm just going to say right now, oh my effing god, um, Conception? Uh, the less we talk about Conception, the better. What? Conception is a trip and a half. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm not sure I want to. Um, how do I put this? So you know how Fire Emblem Fates and Fire Emblem Awakening had that whole, oh, you can bring people together to, like, uh, have that children mechanic? Yes. Imagine that, but ten times worse. And the game is called Conception? Yes. I've never heard of this. It's in the name. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that pretty much, that's pretty much all you need to know. Somebody put uh, the Donkey Kong show. No! 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 Absolutely the hell no! We will not be showering anybody in coconut cream pie. Not today. That is not an adaptation I'm interested in getting myself involved in any more than I need to. Uh, there was a beautiful Joe anime. Oh yeah, that's right! There was also an F-Zero anime. The F-Zero anime actually wasn't that bad from what I have to understand. Yeah, it was, it, it was a neat take on the property. The Super Mario Brothers Super Show. Absolutely the hell no. Um, I, I, I am embarrassed to admit that I used to like that show, but then I grew up and I'm like, what, what the heck was I thinking? Man, I don't want a Legend of Zelda movie. I don't want it. I don't want them to make it. Don't make it. Guys, don't make a Legend of Zelda movie. I know some people think they want it. They don't. Yeah. What could they possibly do in a Zelda movie that will feel better than playing a Zelda game? If somebody can pitch that for me, then I will allow them to make the movie. <laughs> ah! God damn it! Guy started out of line. <laughs> Jeppa says, "Well, excuse me, princess. You are excused, princess." Yeah. No. Goodness gracious! That the mark the mark string kind of effed me up, bro. We're, we're tilting up here. <laughs> now that was that was awesome. It's just it's very hard for me to get excited for a video game movie because I can't think of many things that would be like better. That's why I think the Danganronpa three anime is such a good example because it's a story that they wouldn't be able to tell in a Danganronpa game. It's too fast paced and wouldn't work with Danganronpa's. Um, uh, game system. Yeah. So it made sense to make it an anime instead of just the third game. Um, and unfortunately I don't think there's a lot of examples like that. Like, I know, like, S S Sly Cooper seems like it would make a great animated movie because it's basically already a Saturday morning cartoon. But that's the thing. It's, like, cool because it's a video game that feels like a Saturday morning cartoon. So why would you want to abstract that again and actually make a cartoon? Then it's a cartoon that's like a video game that's like a cartoon. Yeah. The, the fun part of it was that it was also Gosh, a video darn. game. Yeah, th this was definitely the hardest of the three. Which difficulty is this hard? Uh, this is hard mode. <laughs> we haven't even gotten to intense mode yet. In my true adventure to get 100% completion, I must complete the minigames. <laughs> well, if that's the case, I mean, you need to get all the cards. We are we are not getting them <laughs> all the cards. You don't need to get all the cards. I am not doing I, I am not doing that to myself. <laughs> okay, here's a question. Since Digimon was originally a uh, digital pet, um, is Digimon Tamers technically an anime adaptation of a video game? <laughs> That's a good question, honestly. I do think Metroid would make a great anime. Honestly, like, Metroid lucky. sounds like it would be awesome. Oh, no! 
Okay, you're in the lead. So just keep calm, play defensive. Oh, oh, please have mercy. Nice. <laughs> Checkmate, baby. Um, I think the same people who made the Castlevania anime would excel at making a Metroid anime. I don't see I why not. I agree. They I were, totally they agree. They were very good. Like, they, they did the Castlevania anime justice, and considering the way they handled Trevor, Saipa, and um, Richter in terms of, like, their background, I can only imagine what they could do with Samus. Yeah. Because, like, we kind of, like, see Samus as like this badass hero and she absolutely is like samus is a very strong character very very like strong very like you know strong willed very like you know mature like obviously of one of the greatest heroes of our time she's a bit fucked up i, I remember being really excited for other M because I was like, oh man, we're gonna have like a narrative driven Metroid story. Like that's great. Like here's a character with a story really worth telling, and it mm -hmm. doesn't really do that. Yeah, no, Me Metroid Other M doesn't really do it justice, unfortunately. But there's a lot of potential there. Like we're talking about a character who basically has the trauma of a giant alien dragon pirate killing her parents right in front of her. I mean, that's raw potential for some yeah. really really cool writing. Lost her parents. Got inducted into the Chozo, lost all of them, um, got drafted into the space military, kind of used by them, lost her new, like, father-older brother figure. There's a lot going on there. Yep. Like, I feel like what other M had to do was, like answer the question why is Samus a bounty hunter slash why does Samus work alone so like I guess it does answer that but it's just not I don't think it like fully takes advantage of the story that it could tell with that character and also Ooh, it's just not done well I agree Nice. Boom, baby. And that's the game. Um, I think there was a time when an Overwatch anime could have been really great, and I think they've missed the boat on that. Yeah, yeah, really. Uh, that's pretty much all the minigames, right? Yep. Yep, that's all three. All right, nice so job. shall we start getting into the end of this? Yeah, let's face uh, our favorite 20-sided die. Yeah, do we want to just go into this as, like, base Kirby? Yeah, I think so. All right. I let's... think that is the best way to fight him. Let's do this. Miracle Matter. So Miracle Matter um, has basically seven forms. Bad start. Uh, based on all the different, um, based on the seven main copy abilities. Oh, that's right. I got away from them to, to debubble. I usually just spit the things right back at him. I like the idea of using the copy Yeah, I do, I do like seeing all of these double abilities you're doing, though. That's pretty cool. Yeah, unfortunately, the stone ability isn't as invulnerable in this game as it is in some others. No, it is not.
Yes, missiles. Nice! And it's gonna go down onto the ground now. Nice! Didn't even get a chance to. Okay, you gotta wait for them to. Oh, yeah, that's down. right! Yeah, I'm kind of giving myself a bit of a challenge here and like doing it with the copy abilities themselves. Ah, mm, good try. Yeah, I'm willing. I'm willing to go this like little challenge to myself. <laughs> no earth shattering kaboom. <laughs> that reminds me, multiverses is. I mean, we got a big update on multiverses. Oh yeah. Happy for them. Yeah, I think that's the best you're gonna get with that. There's also a really good remix of this song by uh, DJ DS. Oh, dude, I love DJ DS. Yeah, he does amazing work. And he also works it into his uh, Disciples of Darkness mix. Yep. This is cool to see you do it this way. I usually just like eat the projectiles and spit them back at him. Get over here! Oh, we got a. Uh, hey, uh, thank you, Simic Star. And Shika has uh, gifted a sub to to. Oh no, Shika Arts did a bunch of gift subs. Sharp to sharp. Get to over here! Something. Thank you, Shika. Aw, oh, thank you so much. Absolute king shit. There we go. Get over here! Thank you so much. I appreciate it. He can't be stopped. Get over here! Uh, Tanuki player said, just realized this is the same Kirby voice from Smash 64. Yeah, I think they just sampled it for that game. Get over here! Oh, North also is gifting subs. Thank you, North. Thank you, North. Ragnarok is also Get gifting subs. Thank oh you, Ragnarok. Oh my goodness, guys! Y'all are so nice to me! You guys have gone mad with kindness. There we go, got it. What I really like Get about a here. double needle ability is that they um, kind of referenced it in Kirby and the Forgotten Land with some of the uh, needle upgrades. Yeah, they the, did. Like, the Swiss Army Kirby, as I like to call it. Get over here! Alright, you got three more ticks of health. Get over here! Oh, one more shot. Uh, Wave Runners gifting subs. Thank you, Wave Oh my Wave god, Runners. guys! Half Crooked Grin, thank you for the gifted Get over subs. Here. <laughs> Stage 5JD, thank you for the subs. Bro. Get over here! And there it is, the last crystal shard. And there's the uh, shine to indicate 100%. Yeah, so Get we're not even here. we're not even gonna see the bad ending. Yeah, no, we're not we're not gonna see the bad ending at all. Get over here! And look at that. Yeah, so normally you get an ending of that happening, but then the cliffhanger is you see that... Get um, over here! That lady with the glasses, like, her, like, glasses glint, and you can tell she's still possessed. Also, Kirby has a cell phone, apparently. They're like, what are we gonna do? Kirby's like, I'll call my car. <laughs> get over here! Uh, 
apparently, according to the chat, we're go we're about to beat our last record of hype trains. So, wow. <laughs> holy crap! She got arts get get over more, here. more tears, like a bat out of hell. Thank you guys so much. By the way, this is the only time you would ever. So, this theme right here, right? Yeah. Fun fact: I used to love listening to the um, get over soundtrack here. when I was like, you know, just playing through this game. I remember hearing this track and I never knew. Oh, where sorry. It was hold from. that thought. Make us old man has tipped you three hundred dollars, my what? dude. Thank you for the three hundred, Nick. You crazy bastard. Okay, it, the message is gonna come up. I'm just gonna enjoy this music for a moment and let these gift subs run. But like, oh my god, guys! Y'all are y'all are driving me nuts here. Get over here! It is a cornucopia of love. Oh my god. Get says, you think you can here. take my power? Oh my goodness gracious, great balls of fire. Demasiada gente me está, me está soportando y me está volviendo loco. Get over here! I live in th fear of the gift subs. <laughs> they outnumber us. We'd never survive oh my an all-out we're fight. So, we're at 93% before defeat, like, from beating our previous record. Can we do Get it? Over here. Oh my god, you guys are far too nice to me. Holy Dobler shit. with the 200 bits. <laughs> Thank you for the 200 bits, Prince Dobler. <laughs> oh my god. Get over here! Yeah, we're, they, they're still coming. <laughs> oh my god. Mechasol, man, I am intimidated. Hey, You're a terrifying and imposing figure. Bro, did you see what he did last Get over year here. During, my, during my freaking... Uh, high fi rush stream. Oh, North with another wave of, of gift subs. Oh my god! Thank you got... so much, North. Oh my lord, guys. Get over here. North with more gift subs. <laughs> We're over here, Scorpion. We're over the here. Hype train. <laughs> uh, Ragnarok's asking you to pick a number between 1 and 10. Uh, Ragnarok? Get uh, over here! 6. Or I, I, I'm gonna go with six. You guys are crazy. Get over you here. guys are nuts. Oh my god. Oh my god, is it gonna do six gift subs? God damn it! Get over here! No, I get two gift subs. Oh my god, you guys are nuts. Man, I'm in the wrong game. Get I need over to here! Start doing some Twitch birthday streams. <laughs> God damn. Uh, Josh and Night Fury with another gift sub. Get over here! Ragnarok with two more gifts. Sub. You guys are crazy! Record broken, apparently. Oh my God! Oh, hi. Kishki has come to see the breaking Kishki. of the record. Get over here! Kishki, get over here! <laughs> you guys are insane. Oh my god. Get over here! Yeah. Oh my god, hi yeah. Kishki! Yeah, Kucha! A whole dog. <laughs> get over here! You're so pretty. <laughs> oh, Oscar, she has your eyes. Get over here! Oh my god, the get over here's are not gonna stop. Alright, I'm gonna put you down now. Oscar, drink! Oh, stay hydrated, kid. Get Thank you. Get over here! Oscar, do you feel loved yet? I honestly do. I really do. Get over here! Oh, oh, North redeemed a thousand bits to ask you if you feel loved yet. Oh my god. <laughs> Stage, thank you for the 16 months, man. Get over here! Oh my god, you guys are just keeping the hype train going. Holy crap. <laughs> Go over there! <laughs> Go over there! <laughs> Thank you.
Ah, oh, there it is. Mega Salt with the 300. It's oh a competition my now. My throne can't be taken. Make sure to share the money, kids. You got it, man. Thank you so much. Th thank you, Mac. Get over here! It's still going! <laughs> uh, Team Skull Elite Cross <laughs> says, ask the green scorpion. What do you want to ask me, bro? Get over here! Holy shit. Mech says 100 for each person in the room. Nice. Ah. Nice. Nice. I'm going to go buy, buy uh, Princess Peach Showtime. Hell yeah. yeah. Get over here! Um, Have either of you tried CrossCode on New Game Plus? Ask him. I haven't started New Game Plus yet. I haven't found the time. Uh, I, I want to at some point, but there's just too many. Get over here! Uh, cue a boss theme because this train keeps going. <laughs> We're fighting the phantom train. Fighting the phantom train. Get over here! Suplex the train. Oh my god. Thank you, Wave Runner! Get over here! Way ahead of you, Western Echidna. Oh my god. There is no train we won't suplex. Guys, thank you so much. Like, Thank this you. seriously means a lot. Oh my god. Get over here! I I'm just waiting for these get over here to be done so I can get on with this goddamn final level. <laughs> Mech Assault's 300 bomb is, a, is the suplex. Get <laughs> over here! Um, Whoa! Problem though, the hype train is at level 9. It is. I don't know what that means. I don't know how Twitter so, works. So, like, I mean, High I Train mean, is uh, kind of like a on Twitter or on Twitch where it just, like, keeps track of, like, how many things, like, how much support comes in all at once. Okay. That's why it's called the Hype Train. Yeah. Get over here! Holy smoke. You guys are insane. <laughs> Get so it up much. to level 10! <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Get over here! Uh, cool Kermit, any thoughts on Rise of the Ronin? It looks cool. I haven't, I haven't gotten into it yet. God damn Get it, Ragnarok! Here. Ten gift subs? Jesus Christ! They want that level ten. Oh my God! Hey, you're in there. Oh, thank you for the gift sub. <laughs> Get over here! <laughs> Hey! <laughs> oh man, I'm gonna start throwing some emotes at you. I gotta get more emotes on Twitch. Get over here! Freaking Sheikah with the dancing pine, <laughs> with the dancing Sheikah. Oh, that is Sheikah's guy. Yep, and they're, and they're mine. Get <laughs> over here! Austin's getting him in there. Wait, comic wasn't subbed to Oscar before. Wait, what? I really. Never watch Twitch. Is I know the you. Thing. <laughs> Dude, you're barely on Discord. I do here. not expect you to be on Twitch. I only follow two people on Twitch, and it's you and Chica. Oh, and uh, and Yumi. I follow you. I on mean, Twitch. I can make you a dancey mode. I'll be down Get for that, here. Gage. Honestly, like that sounds awesome. What kind of dance do you want, Oscar? I mean, basically what they're yeah. doing. My God, you guys Get are nuts! Over here. Oh my God, I'm I'm a little overwhelmed, honestly. Are you feeling the love? Yeah, a lot. Can you feel it, Mr. Krabs? Yeah. Get over here! <laughs> the dance I am is not the feeling like a total barnacle head. <laughs> the scorpion rave. Uh, question to comic: How much North! fun did you have writing the puns for Frost Skull during Oscar's Skull video? To tell you the truth, and I know I wrote some. Oscar told me to write puns for that one. He was like, "For this section, I think we need a lot of ice puns." Yeah. So I was like, "Okay, Get let's go." Here. Yeah. I always have fun. Art thou feeling it now, Oscar? <laughs> That's the level ten. Oh my god, you guys got me to level 10 hype train. What the hell? Get over here! People, show some restraint! Whew. Wow. 
How many viewers do we have right now? Get over here! Oh no, where does it show that? Hang on, I can actually see that right now. 46. Y'all are getting this going with only 46 viewers. You guys are insane. Get over here! Yeah, I'm trying to fix this here. There we go. Wow. <laughs> Magazandrus. Define restraint. <laughs> get over here! Enough restraint for these get over here's to cease and desist. I, I need some popcorn, man. <laughs> Would you settle for another slice of pizza? Can I actually have one? Yes. Get over I here! Your money so much. I'm good Thank right you. now. Thank you. I'd, I'd be down for a slice of pizza. I know I can turn the alert off, but it's the principle of the thing at this point. Get over here! I mean, if I donated and I didn't hear a get over here, I'd be upset. <laughs> I'd be mad at you for turning the alert off. Get over here! Kirby's just like, oh, I'm just waiting here. <laughs> Kirby's like, I'm in hell. Get over here! Oh, no, they're still going. This reminds me of a clip I once saw that went, Did you know that the chat is generally for words and not money? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. It's a good problem to have. It is a good problem to have. Thank you guys so much. Like, I definitely feel it. I'm, I'm really, I'm really happy about setting this up. But, like, I, Kirby 64 is like an amazing game. One of my favorites from the N64, so I'm glad I was able to share it with you guys. I just can't believe we got through it so quickly. Like, that's shocking. Have any of you seen Terminal Montage's Kirby animation? Yeah, I was yeah. talking about it before, actually. Oh yeah. my god, they're so good. I'm a big fan. I am never gonna get over Jesus Kirby. I am never gonna get over yeah. Jesus Kirby. Like, that is that shit is hilarious. Christian Kerbo. Thank you. Christian Kerbo is the best. Yeah. Yeah. Get over here! Lord of the Ten th Lord of the Thousand Faces, thank you for the four months, man. I'm gonna eat this pizza, and we're gonna go beat the hit beat the shit out of Zero Two. I've been like half off frame for most of this stream. I don't know why I just keep kind of like naturally wandering this way. <laughs> Yeah, we needed pizza on standby because we consumed many different alcoholics. Yeah. Uh, no real talk. Happy birthday, my dude. Uh, this is from Sheikah. I'm happy to be a part of the team and hope you're having a bomb time. I am. I'm having a bomb time. This has been a great day. This has been a fantastic day. So, seriously, everyone, thank you so much for making this a wonderful time. And thank you for coming, dude. Like, this was nice. Yeah, um... Yeah, I'd do it again. I had a great time. Well, the next time we, the next time you and I are streaming together, we're I know doing you have Vernal a game Edge. In mind. Yeah, we are totally doing Vernal Edge. Yeah, because I think we might be two of the only people on Earth who care about that game. Dude, Ver <laughs> Vernal Edge, like this guy introduced me to Vernal Edge, and my first playthrough of it, I 100% completed it. Cool Metroidvania. Very, very cool. Dev definitely would like to stream it. Uh, Mech says, what Chica said, I'm glad to be a part of this group in some way, shape, and form. In fact, I'm in a group in the first place, which makes me feel special. Dude. Aw, oh, we love you, Mech. Give yourself some credit, Mech. Like, you're a credit to team. Seriously. Thank you so much, dude. You are credit to team. Uh, so, fun fact, um, this boss that we're about to see, uh, Zero Two, um, is a follow-up to so so i said early on how this is the third kirby game directed by shuichi shimamura so some people call it the dark matter trilogy because dark matter that grainy black stuff is the antagonist of all of these um so the final secret boss of kirby's dreamland 2 was dark matter and then final secret boss of kirby's dreamland 3 was the boss of all the dark matter which was uh zero which was a big white eyeball. And the final boss we're about to see here is Zero Two, who might not be the same entity as Zero. I don't know if it's that it like evolved after it was killed or if another one grew and took its place. But basically we gotta put down the dark matter again. It is going to be very creepy. 
Uh, there's some official artwork made for the series for the anniversary that showed a bunch of the bosses and both Zero and Zero Two were on it, which suggests that they are different beings. But yep. it's hard to say. Well, before I get into this, I'm going to take a quick sip of water. Hydrate. Or dihydrate. Also got to do it because, again, wisdom teeth problems, man. I got to rinse out my mouth, like, just to make sure that nothing gets back there. <laughs> she it's could annoying. Just, she could just redeem for a stay hydrated anyway. So Drink, damn you. All right, let's this do this. Let's see you, Sheikah. Yeah, so we don't have any copy abilities right now, but that's not really a problem in this last phase. Uh, we, we won't need any. Yeah, and we're going to get a little bit of help from all of our friends here. Actually, great timing there. Hey, I just realized I only have one life. Oh, yeah, because I reset the game. Oh, right. That's fine. We'll do it in one. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, meet Zero Two. Zero Two is a weird angel. And um, now that we have all the crystal sh shards, Ribbon has combined it into a crazy crystal gun. And uh, this boss is a shooter for some reason. Can I just say, though, this guy looks fantastic in this uh, version in this version like yeah. i know they basically just reuse the assets from the n64 but this looks very clean yeah it's just an emulation but it looks great also this theme is amazing that's right we gotta take down his halo and Go for the eye again. Yeah, he he bleeds out of his eye. There is red mist coming out of his eye, which is something he has in common with Zero from Dreamland 3. In some ways, I'd say the Dreamland 3 one is even more disturbing when you first see it. Yep. Though the angel wings, I think, add a lot to this guy. Nah, th this guy, like, looks insanely cool. Dude, like, um, whenever I had to, like, talk about this guy in, like, in countdowns and stuff, or, like, whenever I had to just look him up for whatever reason, some of the art that I see on Google of this guy, like, some of the fan art is yeah. super insanely cool. Like, this guy, like, is creepy as hell, and people know how to make that come forward. Yeah, I kind of just have to go in a circle against this guy. Uh, Zero Two from from Darling in the Franks is an Evangelion reference anyway. Really? Huh. You know, I never actually put that two put that together. Huh. Um, I still wonder how this boss, including Blood, got past Nintendo's censors back in the day. Well, funny thing, um... Back in the day, it was rated E for everyone, but then when this was put in the collection for um, the Kirby collection that was on the Wii, um, it got them up to an E10, which did not exist back in the year 2000. When oh, I remember released. that. So it wasn't bad enough to be teen, but it was bad enough that once there was another rating, it bumped them up to E10. <laughs> yeah, there's some uh, Kid Icarus Uprising strats going on. Yep, definitely. Will you ever do a top 10 Kirby bosses? Um, not anytime soon. Not to spoil anything, but another Countdown artist is going to be covering that very soon. Oh, nice. So, look forward to that. I think uh, they got it covered. Uh, I think they got that topic covered for now. Yeah, I really like this theme a lot. I'm not going to say who it is. 
But yeah, just look forward to that soon. I think that. Oh yeah, that's right. If I go after the wings, uh, that'll make the fight a little bit easier. Yeah, yeah, that'll. I forgot that it'll you take can do more that. time to rotate now. I also really like the version of this song that's in uh, Smash Brothers. Oh yeah, no, dude, there are remixes of this uh, song that like sound really, really sick. Yeah, now his high is way easier to hit. You and him are both at half health now. Yeah, I think the way they get away with it is that the red mist isn't, like, explicitly blood. Like, there's, like, plausible deniability. Yeah, it's one of those things is, like, as a kid, you don't put it together, but as an adult, you're like, oh, yeah, that's totally what's going on here. Very nice. We just 100%ed Kirby 64, the Crystal Shards, in six hours. And that was with breaks. Yeah, not a long game. Not bad at all, man. Woo! Although you did use save states a couple times. Oh, shut it, you! <laughs> Needs to get a little crystal shard. So, who ships it? <laughs> and the story ends with Kirby breaking his spine on the stairs. Does Kirby have a spine? Uh, yes, he's eaten several. <laughs> so, yeah, everyone, that was Kirby 64, the Crystal Shards. Um, we 100%ed this game in six hours. Google lied to me. <laughs> <laughs> what, what did Google tell you? Nine hours! Yeah, no, no. No! No! <laughs> I guess if you don't know what you're doing. Yeah, yeah, but still, like, come on. That was actually... I, I can't believe we got through this game so quickly. Like, I, I... Okay, six hours, that's not that long, but damn, bro! Damn! Is that what those things are? I thought they were frogs. That was like a big lizard thing coming out of the wall. You got me on that one. Here's a more cursed thought. Does Kirby have teeth? No, actually. The Kirby anime literally points out that Kirby does not have teeth. And yet, for some reason, he brushes anyway. I remember way back... You still gotta brush your gums. You still Fair gotta enough. prevent Fair plaque. Enough. Um, I remember way back when MatPat did a theory about, like, what is Kirby. And basically said that, like, Kirby is some type of, like, large amoeba, amoeba kind of thing. Yeah. I remember that. But yeah, um this was definitely one of the one of my favorite games uh back in back during my childhood and even now I still enjoy going through this game. Like okay, look at that image. Yeah. You can't tell me that's not blood. Yeah, that is blood. But yeah, Kirby 64 the Crystal Shards everybody. <laughs> game AW says get good Google. <laughs> like damn, bro. And yeah, that's that's it. That is literally yeah. all it is. Uh, technically, there is blood in the Metroid Prime games. I'm sure there is. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I wouldn't doubt it. You got older today. Um, not today specifically. March 27th. That is my actual birthday. But I'm not going to be streaming on a day that I have to work. What's what's today? The 23rd. 23rd. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So yeah, there you have it, everybody. 100%ed Kirby 64, the Crystal Shards. What a day. What a great day. There's blood in Ocarina of Time? Is there? Um, I guess... I, I wouldn't... I guess I wouldn't doubt it. I wouldn't doubt it. Like, if someone pointed, like, a very specific moment for me, maybe. Does oh, yeah. I guess there's, like, stuff that comes out of Ganon when you're hitting him that looks kind of... Liquidy, I mean, you could say that. You could say green. that about like some of the like bosses too. Oh, and he's covered in red spots. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's like Banjo Kazooie. There's definitely like, like Clinker is like just a lot of like body. Yeah, yeah <laughs> it's just true. a lot of a lot of flesh and meat. But yeah, um, 
I'm, now I'm trying to think of other Nintendo games that have blood. I mean, it's one thing to see, like, blood on somebody or blood, like, sprayed over an environment or something, like, next to a body. It's another thing to see it coming out of O2's eyes. Yeah, definitely. Like, if you're, like, you bleed from cutting your arm, that's one thing. Bleeding out of your eyes? Ugh. Nightmare fuel right there, man. I am astonished that we got through this game this quickly. But honestly, that just makes for a better stream, in my opinion. Yeah. Like, I think you get six, in, you six get and out. a half hours, great length for a stream. That, that is a res respectable stream size. So, yeah. Um, on that note, everybody, we're going to go ahead and call it a day here. I just want to say right now, thank you guys so much for the support. This was fantastic. Um, I feel so much love. I feel such appreciation. And, of course, it was awesome to have John with me uh, to for here. today's stream. The next time he's here, we're definitely going to do uh, Vernal Edge. So, look forward to that. We'll schedule that sometime later. Definitely. Um, maybe a little help with... Maybe a little guidance with that as well. Because that just made... Your guidance just made this so much easier. Yeah, I'll try and look ahead to, like, what we actually have to do. Yeah, because Vernal that Edge. is a very open-ended game. That That's one that definitely we could get lost for hours if we don't yeah, know what definitely. we're doing. Um, as for other streams that I have planned, I definitely want to do a stream of... Like, do maybe a casual stream of Monster Hunter Generations Ultimate. Because, like, I've been streaming Monster Hunter for, like, a couple of times. And I've been playing through that game in preparations for a while. So, I'm looking forward to that. Um, but, uh, yeah. Um, once again, thank you guys so much. And I want to give a special thank you to Gino. Dude, love the support. Thank you so much. Mech Assault Man, obviously. Uh, Sheikah Arts, thank you so much for the support as well. Uh, Ragnarok. Uh, Stage. Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, Zafer, thank you so much. Josh and Wambu, thank you for, uh, hopping in. Uh, you Quarter guys guy. are amazing. What's that? Quarter guy. Quarter guy, yeah, he popped in as well. Um, so, yeah. Um, you guys have been amazing, and I thank you so much for everything. Um, one more announcement before I end the stream today. Look forward to tomorrow evening. <gasps> Because my next countdown premieres tomorrow. Oh, dang. So, look forward to that. I and knew that, that already, but it's still exciting. <laughs> you know what it is. You work on, you work on it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you what it is. But I'll let you find out. I'm, I'm sure some people who some have people already attention know what it is. Some people know what it is. Thank you guys so much, guys. Like, seriously, this was amazing. On that note... Have a good night, everybody. Thank you. Bye.